So there we have it, uh, the CCC winning a toss and deciding to bat first here, but there was a sense that that uh, was in the, would have happened anyway if Guyana had won the toss. Guyana were doing a lot more work on their polling earlier today and with weather conditions as they are in Trinidad and Tobago, that would have been uh, a, a good decision indeed. Well, Sean Devers, who's a former Guyana youth player, has trekked across the ground and he's beside me once again. Sean, uh, you're not surprised by that decision at all, are you? No, I'm not really surprised. Good morning to you and good morning to everyone. Um, the umpires are already on the field, umpire Leslie Reefer from Barbados and umpire Carl Tuckett um, from Nevis, um, former West Indies all-rounder, and the third umpire Lalman Colossar. So we've got sun so far. Yeah, Kelman Colossar, sorry about that, mixing up your name, sir. Uh, we've got um, good sunshine so far, but I understand there's rain on the forecast for the weekend. Uh, yeah, there certainly is some rain coming up, so obviously Ghana factored that into their tactics, and uh, obviously we know colloquially that Ghana, uh, with the amount of rain, you all know, if there's anything that knows how to play around it, it's Ghana. And, of course, um, this pitch... If a team gets in on this, they can get stuck in, as we saw last week here uh, with uh, Amir Janguk scoring a double hundred, Jason Mohammed 157 here, TNT uh, pulling up a big total of over 500. So uh, it's good. I think it's good. Uh, both teams have got would have done exactly what uh, this toss would have happened. This decision would have happened no matter what. If you're listening to us in Guyana, we greet you with the news that. Uh CCC winning the toss and deciding to bat and of course Guyana making one change from the 11 they played with in Jamaica they've left out Ronaldo Ali Mohammed and also Silas Tindall well he didn't play in Jamaica so those are the two out they've brought in Ashkeer Posad so lovely conditions as it is so far you can see Nice cotton wool clouds floating lazily over the UWI sward here in St. Augustine, Trinidad, and patches of blue in the sky. And we hope that the forecast is wrong. Yeah, we certainly do hope so, but uh, little chance of that. The meteorologists have been on their game recently here in Trinidad very well, so I think we uh, would assume that if there is some weather coming our way on Saturday, that both teams will try to finish this one off in three, three days. Yes, and this is the weakest team on paper. They've not won a single match. They're in the seller position. And, of course, the other matches today, um, the key matches, Leewards versus the Windwards, that's the first and fourth teams in the tournament. And, of course, that's going to be played in Antigua at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium and at Coolidge, Barbados, um, playing a relatively weak team also, the West Indies Cricket Academy, and here in Trinidad, Ghana, playing CCC. So those are the four teams still in with a chance of winning this title. So first delivery. Nile Smith. Windward Islands on top of the table, eighty nine point six points. Barbados second on eighty seven point eight. Guyana third, 87.2. Conditions beginning to get just a bit overcast. Smith hails from the county of Borbis in Guyana. Leeward Islands on fourth, 82.6. But it's interesting that Guyana has 51 match points from the matches but the bonus points taking all the teams ahead of Guyana 
Yeah, that's right. Uh, they, they would have needed to get a couple more in terms of the bowling points and the batting points to do that. Uh, but those two first, the first two matches, the draw against Trinidad and Tobago and the Leeward Islands match, which they lost, that really has hit them. Yes, that was a fantastic performance in that match by Mikel Louis. Became the 11th batter in the West Indies to score centuries in both innings. And that really um, spearheaded the Leewards to a victory in that match. That's Ghana only lost though. They've bounced back for wins on the trot. McCarthy yet to score. Elvin who's been among the runs so far in this tournament, but none of the CCC batsmen have gone on to get big scores. Very disappointed with the captain, Shamar Brooks. Yeah, has, yeah. has a hundred, a test hundred and a one day hundred. And now he's come down to this level. I was so impressed with him when I saw him as an under 19 player. Reminded me of Sir Carl Hooper. Mm. It's very easy on the eye, isn't he? Yes, yeah. yeah, just like uh, Carl Hooper, and you'd, you'd always get disappointed when both of them got out. But he, he was known in Barbados as the boy who was born to bat, but he hasn't really uh, done his best in this tournament. Uh, in fact, the CCC, as you mentioned, the global picture, only 100 for them. Uh, Jonathan Carter's 135. 62 in his last match, Brooks. So, McCarthy off the mark. No, it's not off the mark. The team is off the mark. <laughs> he didn't get any bat on it. Umpire took it. Goes up like a ballet dancer to signal the leg by as he taps the leg. So, one extra taking Trinda, um, CCC off the mark. Well, the ball Troy might be calling him very soon, um, umpire. <laughs> the umpire looked very uh, good in, in terms of doing that. But uh, if anything, from the start here by Niall Smith, several of these deliveries have gone down the leg side, so he's uh, failing to cope here with this strong cross breeze at the moment. Again, on the line of the leg stump, back of a length, pushed into the onside and picked up by the forward short leg. So one over is gone. It's two without loss. Well, we are talking about the weather conditions and how uh, how things have gone in terms of the weather conditions here. But uh, it's been very, very... Uh, the weather conditions have uh, been very good so far. Yeah, so the second over. Will be bowled by another Barbitian. Isaiah Torn, two times World Cup on the 19 player, just back from the last World Cup. He's only 19, and he's arguably the fastest bowler in this tournament so far. Yeah, he has been very, very impressive, hasn't he, Isaiah Torn? And Babis just seems to be the new center, really, of uh, cricket in Ghana, doesn't it? Yeah, because there's also Shamar Joseph. And... Um, Romario Shepard still to come into the Ghana team. So Ghana, if they come into the side, will have a four-prong pace attack. Very potent indeed. Yeah, certainly. And I'm very excited to see him especially because, uh, I mean, I've seen him on television. I've seen him uh, on television several times, and he's looked pretty quick. But uh, you really get the full picture when you see him in the flesh, so to speak, here. Yeah. And I saw him warming up earlier. He does look an impressive unit indeed. What are you feeding those guys in Bavis? <laughs> they eat the natural food. <laughs> That's right. So a straw colored looking track. Don't expect any real venom for the bowlers. Your length delivery playing slightly around the ball. And appeal going up. But that ball was 
maybe heading down the leg side more enthusiasm than anything else but good first ball bang on target for turn yeah that's right uh, certainly uh, i thought initially that it looked to be going down leg side uh, just from the way the batsman just pulled his legs away yeah. trying to uh to play that one uh that's uh, makati but uh seems to be okay uh, he seems to be okay i don't think he took it full on the foot if anything it just pitched in front of his legs and maybe just hitting the inside of the, of the pads so it could have been very painful uh, that first ball turn as we lose the sunshine once more goes behind some clouds turn loses his rhythm although also and has to walk all the way back and it's so frustrating when a fast bowler loses his rhythm of boss the run has to go all the way back especially if you're a michael holden running from the boundary well, uh, Michael Holding had a fairly even temperament, but uh, your countryman, Crofty, might have had a few words to say with the bats, so wouldn't he? Our good friend, uh, Colin Croft. Yes, Croft lived a lot of his life here in Trinidad. Good delivery, pitched and left. Good movement. Yeah, and uh, Crofty also spent some time here at the University of the West Indies. In fact, the project... Uh, uh, renovate uh, this particular venue uh, which made it uh, accessible for the World Cup in 2007. It hosted several warm-up games here. Colin, uh, Colin had a big part to play in that. Yes, I remember those days. Um, Colin Croft used to work at the Tameri International Airport. It was then called. Now it's Chedi Jagan International Airport. And he said he used to run around after shift 10 times mm -hmm. around the airport tarmac. Wow, that takes some doing. Yeah, it was very, very fit, Colin Croft. And when he smiled, you knew it's trouble. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't want to see those pearly whites of uh, Colin Croft. It was like watching the pearly whites of a great white shark coming at you. Turn. And that's a ball that leaves the right hander plays it with that outward movement opens the face of the bat down towards backward point and he's yet to score one is elvin and two without loss well, Thorn was actually sent back a second time after getting halfway through his run so that's not going to improve his mood anyway but he's a young man and uh, tell you what he's w such an exciting prospect uh, a possible uh, given the attack that Guyana has, they could be a real handful next year. Yeah, full of energy, Isaiah Thorne. One of the many fast bowlers, as we said, coming out from Burbies. The 12th man, he's also from Burbies, Silas Tindall. Who played last year is also from Burbies. Going a little back, Keon Joseph also from Burbies. So is Leslie Lambert and Ray Joseph. Mm -hmm. Burbies has produced uh, a lot of fast bowlers for Guyana. Outside the leg stump. Considering this is not the fastest pitch you'll see in the Caribbean, he's still uh, just he's still getting a fair amount of pace here in his, his first over. But uh, it's great to see these young fast bowlers coming through, um, and certainly Shamar Joseph is at the top of the charts in terms of the West Indies fast bowling. And uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about that uh, that particular pace. Uh, workshop that was done by Kirtley Ambrose yeah. a couple of years back and how much influence that would have had on what's happening in Ghana. Yeah, that's where he first saw that's edged between the slip and the gully and down to the third man boundary for the first boundary of the morning. So Makati off the mark with a fortuitous boundary for nevertheless and the total going up to six without loss, two of us gone. Would have been a comfortable catch if there had been someone in there, but uh, that was uh, squarely in between Chanderpaul and uh, Sinclair, who were in third slip and gully, uh, respectively. And uh, that was, uh, it was a catchable height, if I saw it correctly. And that uh, early chance here, and just shows you what Thorne can do with that uh, 
that bit of height that he has is able to get a bit more bounce onto the, his, the, his deliveries. Well, when we were in Antigua, Guyana played uh, the Windwards and Barbados there. Um, Andy Roberts, Randy Roberts, who is the godfather of the West Indies pace attack, um, he had some words of advice for Torn, and he he came especially to see Torn bowl. Of course, Torn, the Coolridge Cricket Club, the ground there, the West Indies cricket board at CWI owns it now and so the academies and the camps were all there so Torn very familiar with that surface Smith starts the new over and Andy Roberts said Sir Andy Roberts told said that it's not the pitch that is fast it's the bowler has to make the pitch fast that's right. That's a statement that he's made a, a lot of times, and uh, in, in the past he's put it differently. He said, it's how fast the ball comes through the air. You have to generate the pace. Yes. Because contrary to what many people feel, the ball gets less space when it hits the ground. That's right. <laughs> Some people feel the ball generates space <laughs> when it hits the pitch. Yep, it's no uh, ball. in physics they call it friction. Yeah. Yeah, that it it slows up no matter what surface you're on, whether it's Perth, whether you're playing on a concrete surface, it is going to slow down. So Nile Smith had no ball problems throughout this tournament. Came back for the second round, the third round in fact in Antigua. Missed the two in Saint Kitts, had a hamstring injury. So one would have thought that that was the reason, um, but that injury has been fully healed. Bold really fast as has torn. Saw him knock down Craig Braffitt in uh, Antigua with a beautiful ball, short. Buffett couldn't do anything. Got hit on his shoulder. Luckily for him, it missed the helmet. Yeah, he, he does have that ability to turn on the pace. We've seen him here in Trinidad and Tobago play some club cricket, uh, Niall Smith, and uh, very well respected in terms of his work rate. Yes, one of the many Guineas who have played in Trinidad. There's several of them even now. Oh, that's a ball that kept a bit low. That seems to have hurt him a little bit. When yeah. did that hit? Maybe as he turned a little bit uh, uh, on that unprotected part of the leg, just above the pad, I think. <laughs> yeah. Not sure. But that, yeah, that is where he's rubbing right now. So he, he may have been bending also. Yeah. And took that one on the leg. Now, Evelyn's a big guy. His, his thighs look like tree trunks out there. I would expect that ball to have rebounded off it, but he is human. <laughs> that so one, yeah, it's, it's, he's still rubbing it, and maybe it's that unprotected area just above the knee. That's where he got it. So, good morning to you once again, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Beautiful venue here. Uh, Smith Bowls outside the yard stump. Not close enough to challenge the off stump or to force the batsman to play though. You don't want to waste the new ball. That's right. So he's falling to one of the batters from the CCC that has done fairly well this year. Evelyn has just averaged above 32, 258 runs. And he's spent a lot of time out there. In fact, outside of Otley, who has faced 680 balls. Evelyn, as coming into this match at least, has faced 622. He's the only other person outside of uh, Yannick Otley that has faced more than 600 balls for the CCC. Well, the last round we saw six entries being scored. Boy, and there were some big ones, weren't there? Yeah. Two of them right here. Yeah. Jangu, a double century. It's actually his first first century of his first class career and he carried mm. it on 
to get a huge double. And then uh, also, uh, Jason Mohammed scored 157, his second 100 of the season. Yes, he scored 100 in the only day possible against <laughs> Guyana. Yeah. Just 101. Right. If he'd bat a bit slower, he would have not had the 100 because the three other days were completely washed out. Good running. Good return in the end, but we was on, caught him on the back foot there as he went to pick up the ball. Looks like Moti. And they hustled through for singles. So good running in the end. At the end of the over, it's now eight without loss. Good against Moti there. Starting a little bit late. I, I think you were right. He was caught uh, just a bit on his back foot and then suddenly realized they were going for the single and picked it up well. But that's good running between Evelyn and McCatty. And another opening partnership change here for the CCC. Uh, they did have Kamil Puran uh, from Trinidad and Tobago opening in the last match. He is not opening today. So they brought in McCatty, who has been in and out of the team uh, for his, what I believe will be uh, his fourth game of the season. He hasn't had a very good uh, series though. 43 matches. In the 43 runs in the three matches he's played so far. Yeah, we've had 50s from the wicket keeper. Domingo Richards. We've had a 62 in the last match from Brooks. That's his only substantial score. Good delivery again from Torn. A nice breeze blowing across the ground. Still the sun out in all its glory. A lot of cloud though. Uh, Crofty, who was fond of, uh, who, who was a pilot, uh, of course, um, would say that it's maybe about seven, eight octaves in terms of the amount of cloud coverage. Yeah, and he would call the clouds by its name, Columbus clouds and different types of clouds. Bought his pilot days in this cricket commentary. Part of the West Indies team that didn't lose a single test series from 1980 when they lost to New Zealand. Controversially. Yeah, and Croft hit down umpire Godal. But he's adamant that it was not deliberate. He did come in close to the umpire before jagging out towards the left uh, and then he produced an always an awkward angle into the batsman, uh, Crofty. Fred Goodall, of course, uh, passed away a couple of years ago. Fifteen years of dominance, they call that the glory days, 1980 to 1995, when Australia ended the West Indies dominance. Thorn from the far end. Bowled him, clean bowled. Went back and played a nothing shot really. Just pushed the bat at it tentatively. Elvin is bowled by Thorn. Good yeah. breakthrough for Guyana. It certainly is a very good uh, breakthrough. He played all round that, beaten for pace more than anything else. And that one clipped the top of the off stump, and he has gone back here. So Evelyn out uh, for two of uh, 11 deliveries. Didn't know too much about that there. So a good start here for Guyana. And this is going exactly to the plan here for Guyana. Their, their intentions would have been obvious here, Sean. They want to bowl out the CCC cheaply, bat once, and then knock them over a second time and, and pull off an innings defeat. That's uh, what they want, and it's a great start here. And they've gotten rid of Evelyn, a batsman who has done well for the CCC uh, this season. And uh, that will bring Sadiq Henry uh, to the crease at this time. And Henry is another one of those batters who hasn't had a lot to write home about in this tournament. So he'll be hoping he can make things good here for the CCC in this match. I think only Jonathan Carter got a hundred for the CCC, so and somebody got 88. But 
nobody else. Puran, that's Camel yeah, Puran. That's yeah. Puran got 88, but no one converted except um, Jonathan yeah. uh, into 100. Well, I was just hearing from our co commentator, Mr. Dinner Idea, who's coming in shortly, mm -hmm. that uh, Camel Puran is not well. So that's why he's out of the team mm. today. And uh, he has an illness. We wish him well in his recovery. Uh, that's the reason why he's not in the team today. 164 runs, averaging 27.3 for the season. Kamil Puran, uh, in basically his first full season for uh, any team, first class season. He played a couple of matches last year for TNT, but getting the opportunity to play for the CCC this year. Technically, the home ground, and yes. they play in Barbados at Cave Hill, it's their home ground in Jamaica, Mona, their home ground. <laughs> they have so they've grounds. got a lot of home <laughs> grounds. In the past, there was a guy called Guilford Moore from the University of Guyana in the team. That's a short lifting delivery, not a lot of pace on it, though. Yeah, I don't think he was entirely. of feet away from where he intended and uh, you can see that Thorne uh, he's a, a man of some ambition here he wants to put the batsman under pressure very upset with himself that he got the radar wrong that time big strong lad looks like a 22 year old in a 19 year old body very aggressive well put very well yeah. put indeed it does look that way You can tell the batsmen aren't really getting a, they're not really attuned to the pace. The sound that's coming off yeah. the bat is a, a horrible, woody sort of sound. Well, it is going to be woody. It's a wooden bat, of course. Yeah, cracking song yeah, as the leather sound. kissed willow there. It's not like a, a, a nice tom, tomping song. That's right. Yeah, it's a cracking song. You get that song when the ball hit close to the splice of the bat, but that hit the middle of the bat. Yeah. Or it's his butt is the problem. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> well, let's put it down to timing. We'll be kind to him here at the moment. He's just come in. Henry leaves it alone. And the over has completed a successful one for turn. Eight for one. The CCC winning the toss and batting here at the UWI campus in St. Augustine, Trinidad and Tobago. And that's uh, how it looks here at the moment. Uh, that's uh, a little bit of blue, but more of those cumulus clouds that uh, uh, Colin Croft would have been talking about. Colin Croft's, uh, and you can see, it's a heavy cloud cover here. And uh, there is a prediction that there would be some rain on Saturday. But uh, we hope that doesn't happen today. In fact, I was getting a report from Port of Spain that it's uh, looking very likely to fall in Port of Spain. So good luck to you all in Port of Spain, but uh, we're just hoping it doesn't fall here. Talking about Colin Croft, good afternoon to you. If you're listening in America, well, it's still morning there. And um, he played in the over 60 West Indies Masters team and almost walked up the ball. sure the batsman would have been happy <laughs> that he did that yeah <laughs> not that that's gonna do much he's still a fearsome character on the cricket field actually i did see him a couple of years uh well a few more than a couple of years back he played in uh the weeper 2020 tournament back in 2008 he and kudley ambrose actually opened the bowling for the uh west indies masters uh, team back then what a fearsome pair today in the other matches leewards playing the windwards in what would be the match of the rung. Who wins that? Probably win the tournament. Barbados playing the West Indies Academy. Beautiful delivery and an appeal for caught behind. He's gone. Caught behind. That must have hit the glove. So, Torn striking and now Smith striking. So, both bowlers with two wic one wicket each. Let's look at the replay. And the short ball does the trick. Couldn't get out of the way of that one. A very, very good uh, short ball there from Smith. He hasn't bowled a lot of short deliveries so far. So that one came in as a bit of surprise there uh, to uh, McCatty, and he has uh, he has to go. 
Good delivery. Took his eye completely off that ball, almost turned his back on the delivery. That's what pace does, though. Yeah, squared him up a lot there and uh, just couldn't get out the hands out of the way. Took the glove and uh, was taken nicely by uh, Tevin Imlach. So, very good start here for Guyana. Eight for two. And it's all going to plan here for Guyana. Yes, um, that's what Guyana would have wanted. Had a long meeting before the match and would have loved to bowl first. And um, the CCC won the toss and obliged. Well, after seeing what Trinidad and Tobago did last week here, uh, rattling up over 500 runs on this pitch, they would have been thinking, well, uh, let's get the best use of the pitch here. But uh, so far, it hasn't worked out for them. Shamar Brooks, the captain of the CCC, now out there. He's averaging 23 for the season. Uh, his uh, best is 72, but he's only had 277 runs. And now, he stayed out there for a long time. Um, Brooks, he's uh, 589 balls. So he's, he's been in for a while. Just has not been able to convert a lot of good starts into, into, tang into significant runs. A bit on the older side now. But still the best batsman in the CCC team. First delivery goes past the edge. A little lateral way, away movement from the right-hander. And good ball to welcome Shamar Brooks. Well, it's a perfect delivery in so many ways uh, to the new batsman. The only thing it didn't do was to take the edge there, but it wasn't far away from that. Maybe we'll give a little bit of credit to Brooks just playing slightly inside the line of it. He's such a picture. He's, so, he's, he's such a beautiful batsman to watch. Uh, but he'll be hoping that he can convert, get a start here, and push on to get some runs for his team. In terms of his personal um, battle to get back into the West Indies team, he needs some big runs. Nicely played, good soft hands, kept it down. Picked up one bounce at forward short leg. Ashke Pasad under the helmet. In the previous matches, the, that job went to Machu Nandu. Didn't score many runs in the first match or the second match, but had some unfortunate dismissals. Missed the ball clearly against Barbados when he was a judge caught behind and was run out by the length of the pitch when Chandrapal just stood his ground. Good delivery again. Nice bonks, nice carry to the keeper. But um, got an injury, shoulder injury, and uh, was replaced by Perez for the Jamaica match. Didn't capitalize on his opportunity. One would hope from a Guyana point of view that he'll bat in a more positive fashion. Plays a lot of shots when he plays for DCC. That's his local club. Yeah, Perez, uh, the four matches, six innings, 81 runs so far. So, yeah, he'll be hoping for his personal account that he gets some uh, runs in this one. delivery again to end the over five overs gone it's eight for two well that'll end off uh, my stint with you sean uh, dinner ideal is going to join you in a moment Yeah, good morning to you, Mr. Dial, and good morning again to wherever you are, whatever you're doing across the world. This is on YouTube, so you can look at this in Japan and China, everywhere. Once you've got a tablet, a phone, technology is so important now. It exposes not only the events, but the players. 
but some of the players don't capitalize on this exposure. So correct. Oh. And, the and the game is a scientific game now, so technology is, is, mo is a must. Mosseto is bowling really some quick deliveries here. Last game we saw Anderson Phillips bowl real quickly too on both games. He has so far picked up 29 wickets in this tournament, Anderson Phillips. Yeah, a lot of young fast bowlers are not a short ball. That goes, that's a pong, they didn't too short and didn't trouble the batter, went over his head. I must say Guyana and Barbados are the two best teams to win this title, providing both teams score over 400 runs and win outright. So I, I, I will give them, the Guyana and Barbados, the, the two outside chance of winning this CWI 4 day tournament. But if the windwards beat the leewards, they win the tournament. So Gan would hope that they win this match with maximum batting and bowling points and the other two matches end in draws. But you can only do what you can do. First of all, you've got to win and win emphatically and then hope for the next uh, scenario to work in your advantage. CCC haven't won any game this, this season. They're all the points they have accumulated was only bonus points so far in the 2024. Yeah, so good morning to Red Sporera in the island of St. Lucia. Gen as gen I'm a real gentleman when I made my debut for Trinidad and Tobago against Guyana. He was the first man came to the uh, when he was in the hotel and congratulated me and told me he looked forward to see him making my debut. Yes, you were quite a good batter also. It's in three slipper gully at cover point. Four short leg mid on and a fine leg for Ton who is working on a mid off who is working on some pace here this morning at the you and Augustine Grung. She looks a very strong man, young, uh, young guy. Very nice facility here though. Built initially for the World Cup, another short testing delivery. And goes under it like a box in the middle of a ring, evading a straight right. You know it's funny that CCC have played this whole tournament. A short ball there, but uh, easily on it. Over but four, yeah, over four games have gone over 300 runs. The last time Ghana played um, this team, it was right here in a day-night match in 2014. That was the first time Leon Johnson captain the side. And the CCC won. In those days, CCC were a strong unit with the likes of Rifa and all of those guys playing for them. In fact, in the last five matches, dating back from 2010 to 2014, CCC has beaten Ghana three times in five matches. But they're more now playing in the Super 50 back in the regional 4 day for the first time in a long time. That's a shot looking to play it a lot straighter. In the end it peeled off the inner half of the bat and went down towards backward square for a single. So 9 for 2, 6 overs gone. Last game I saw that Shamara Brooks was batting really, really well and you saw, saw the class in him again. One kept low and he was bowled for 61. CCC will look for him today again to give them a good start and lead the team into a good position. Yes, I keep saying when I first saw him, I figured that he would be a great. But he is really disappointed, not only me, but all of his fans around the region. So I figured that he played like Sir Carl Hooper. In fact, Hooper was his favorite batter when he was a young man at the under-19 level. The 
First time I saw him, when he came to Trinidad, he played for us, Wanderers Cricket Club. Mm -hmm. Scored a magnificent 177 against Shannon Gabriel. Yes, and Gabriel at that time was quick. Yeah. Smith is quick. And bowls to Henry. Last T10 tournament we had in Trinidad, Smith tied for um, the most wicked in the tournament last year. He and one off spinner called Mark Dial tied for 11 wickets. Yes, a lot of Guyanese come to Trinidad to play. In fact, the are Guyanese who was in this first class season for Guyana was dropped. And um, he is now playing in Trinidad, Richie Luknot. Good morning to you, Richie, if you're looking at the YouTuber listening to it. Good off spinner. And he's bold him. Clean bold. Seem to move away a little bit from him. Yeah, so Shidik Henry. Shidik Henry is now gone for one. And more trouble for CCC. They are now nine for three. Smith 2 for 3 from 3.2. CCC after winning draws and deciding to bat may feel they have done something wrong. John? Yeah, I, I don't know if they would have done something wrong because if it was the normal circumstances, I figured Guyana would have also batted. But time and the expectation of adverse weather uh, maybe influenced Guyana to want to bowl first. Um, but usually, a team winning the toss on a track like this, it's no grass on it, it's straw colored, would want to bat and pile up the runs. But for Guyana now, with the rain forecasted, they would want to bowl and then bowl out the CCC for a small total, knowing what they have to get to declare and then bowl them out again and, and win the match in three days and don't go into the weekend which is forecast with rain but that's all conjecture conjecture what is fact is that the ccc have not doing their cause any good after winning the toss they've lost already three wickets and have not get gotten a double figure score as yet i like that and uh, how you analyze that sean to finish this game in three days for guyana last the last game between trinidad and ccc over 1100 was, was scored on this ground the game went down to the last three overs in the, in the mandatory 15 overs. Brooks is the barrier between Ghana bowling them out chiefly and they're making a big score. He's got the ability. I don't know why he doesn't have the consistent big scores to match that ability. Even though he's got a hundred, a test hundred, and a test one day international hundred three slip a gully cover point cover mid off short mid wicket and a fine leg for Smith bowling to Richards he had a 72 in the last game against Trinidad yeah. all batters with good talent the CCC batters but they seem not to have the concentration level or the temperament to go on to make big hundreds. In fact, just one of them, Jonathan Carter, has reached a three-figure score in this whole tournament, which we've seen a lot of centuries scored. In fact, Barbados um, scored three, three batsmen for Barbados scored hundreds in the same innings. In the last game. Yeah, Rafit. Chase. Profit. McCaskey. Yeah, Profit, McCaskey and Chase. And and you don't usually see those things happening now in modern day West Indies tournaments. No ball. Signal by the umpire. So his no ball problem continues here in Trinidad. 
started in Antigua. That takes CCC to double figures. Ten for three. We're in the seventh over of the morning. West Indies team leads to Nepal Monday or Tuesday. They should announce the team at any time. Talking about 300s in one game, the first time that happened in sponsored cricket from Shell Shield, 1966, when all the teams played in a regional tournament, was the just after independence of Guyana, gained their independence uh, on May 26, 1966, and in 1967, first time playing on the, the Guyana flag, Three batters at border against Barbados, scored hundreds, got delivery again. This one came back, so showing both ways, movement. Both bowlers moving the ball this morning. Rohan Kanai, 144, Basil Butcher, 183, and uh, Roy Fredericks, 127, scored hundreds in which is still Ghana's highest score, 641 for five declared. And then also Fredericks became the first batter to score centuries in both innings. Scored 100 in the second innings of that match. Of course, Barbados scored 552 with Sobers making 165 and Peter Lashley 204. So in those days, quality batting matches went the full four days, centuries galore. But this season, I was very impressed about the competitiveness of the fourth rung. And of course, the last rung had six centuries, which shows that is either the bowlers are not so good or the batting has improved. I think the batting has improved. Good I must say they are looking more patient. They have been more patient. Cricket is a patient game, batting or bowling. And I think we are seeing now about the batsmen in this CWI tournament a little more patient this year. All the way, dangerously close to the keeper, but it was a no ball. So you may feel that hit the glove and gone into the gloves of the keeper. He would not have been out because, again, for four. So, second boundary of the day. Yeah, he's just brushing his gloves and to the right of the wicket keeper. Not too far from him. Running into the boundary for four. But two no balls already in this over. Smith has got to work on his no ball problem. I remember last year in the T10 tournament, he played for Paul Jenny. He had a quite few no ball in the T20 tournament also too. The son of the present manager of the Ghana team, Albert Clements. Well, I know him as Coach Smith. Most successful Ghana coach at the under-19 level. Won seven titles in a row from 1992. Last year was in New York, I met a, a stroll out from Guyana, Milton Paidama, coaching. Played uppishly over the head of the short cover. And looking back, uh, looking for a suicidal, what would have been a suicidal second run, turn, sends the return. And it's 16 for three, so not in control there as the over comes to an end. At the end of it, it's 16 for three. Five to Richards and Brooks yet to score. Yes, Milton Paidana. They had a, a reunion recently in Guyana where the 1983 team that won the first ever double on the Clive Lloyd in regional cricket, um, most of the players came. Well, all of the players who were alive, um, three members of that team had died. Um, Clyde Butts, most recently. And of course, um, Roy Fredericks, who holds the distinction up to now as being the first ever and the only ever 
sitting minister in parliament to score a first class double century 217 against Jamaica with the player manager and the, the, the batters failed I think Tyrone at Waru wasn't getting runs and Frederick decided to come out of retirement got a hundred against Trinidad and got a double century against Jamaica at Boda and the other person that would have died in from that team would have been Andrew Light one of the unfortunate ones that didn't play test cricket but at that time you had Gordon Greenidge, Desmond Haynes and then Richardson came into four when Light made a hundred Richardson made a hundred and eighty Timur Mohammed too yeah and the Jackman Siram yeah. when I played for Trinidad my first game the, all these guys was on Guyana team Andrew Jackman made 75 and 78 against us in the Oval he could have played spin well, used his feet nicely. Last time I saw him in Guyana, he had put on some serious weight. Well, that was his problem. The ball stared away down towards the. So, 20 now for three. The eight over of the morning, ready, three wicket down. Torn, one for nine in his fourth over. The weather is cool and nice here compared to last week. All four days was hot and humid. Today's cool and strong breeze blowing across the ground. Three slipper gully cover point, mid off, mid on, deep fine leg. Richard got 72 not out in the last game for CCC against Trinidad and Tobago here. He batted well right through the inning. Well, what Guyana wouldn't want to do is take the CCC batting lineup for granted and become complacent. They have ripped across, they ripped out the first three batters, but Brooks is still there, to my mind, the best batter in the, in the, in the CCC side. And, of course... Um, the thing with Guyana though is when they get like eight wickets, a frustrating partnership begins to build up and they sometimes lose that momentum, drop their shoulders and uh, wait for something to happen. That's been the pattern throughout the series and, and throughout the last few years. Guyana the defending champions this is the first time they're playing without their captain, Leon Johnson, leading the team. Is he the coach of Guyana right now? No. <laughs> Ryan Hercules is the coach and oh, yeah, Gavin Ed is the assistant coach. He was the manager of the CPL team. Yeah. CCC have a lot of work to do here this morning. 20 for 3 and we're in the 8 over. Both pacers bo working up some pace here this morning. Sh striking 3 blows here for this morning. Good to see the sun is back. Turn in swelter and heat balls and that ball lands just in front of Imlak whose finger has recovered. Didn't keep in Antigua in the two matches there. Got to see him behind the stumps. He got, a, he got a century last game. Yes, he's got 200 so far in this tournament. Got to see him behind the stumps. It was the West Indies reserve keeper in the test series in Australia to the silver. Savory who got a century also in the last game did the wicket keeping in that uh, in those matches I think Guyana was 106 for 5 yeah so the over is completed 8 overs gone 20 for the loss of 3 wickets 
Richards on nine and Shamar Brooks who's only faced four deliveries yet to score Nile Smith though two for ten from See. four overs seeing the big roller down there yeah just relaxing waiting and there's also a small one I can pull that <laughs> I think last <laughs> the last game against Trinidad a similar thing happened to Shamara Brooks he remained on the he about 20 minutes he had facing two deliveries and then finally one kept low and bowled him yes and that's always a disadvantage for a batter he wants to be on strike and that's why rotation with strike is so important in any type of cricket not only it has the bowler bowling different lines if a left hand right hand combination is batting but it gives the bowler a little chance of settling in and setting up a batsman bowlers want to bowl most balls at one batsman and then set them up and get them out and if you have to bowl every ball to a different batsman then it's hard work the fielder will have to the fielders will have to change over if it's a left hand right hand combination the umpires will also have to change over so it's more problems for everyone not in the first we are yes still to have the first hour play on ccc middle deep middle is out of the wicket already Yannick Otley to come number six. The, the Guyana is on top of the game and exactly what they, they needed this morning to pick up some early wickets and they have done that. It's 20 for three. We're in the ninth over. Shamara Brooks not yet off the mark. Five, deli fi five deliveries. And Richards is on nine from 12. Smith is still bowling with a good head of speed. Strong man, Nile Smith. And even stronger, Stern. He's younger. He's only 19. I think he has bowled some quick deliveries yeah. here this morning, Tone. Yeah, arguably the quickest bowler in this tournament. Strong breeze continuing. Yes, he's coming from Jamaica. Navin Bidesi will make it. Will be making his debut for Trinidad and Tobago. Back and across is Brooks. Still yet to score. This is the first time I've seen Torn, and yeah, he has some pace. I think the other fast bowler who have impressed me is Anderson Phillip. Twenty-nine wickets, but in the last game he bowled both in here. Every spell he bowled last week was quick yeah, there are lots of good fast bowlers McCarthy from Barbados bowls with good speed Sean coming out of Guyana I mean do you think Courtney Ambrose is doing a good job with the, with the fast bowling clinic yes he came twice and um, that's where he saw Shamar Joseph and uh, Isaiah Thorne Impressed too with the guy who is not in this team. He's on the bench, Silas Tindall. He's also from Burbies. That camp was held in Burbies. It was for Burbies fast bowlers, but that's where most of the Guyana fast bowlers in recent times come from. That's, that's really good for cricket for West Indies. So something last week again he's in Guyana doing a, cl a clinic. Yeah. I think the CWI could take another step and you know utilize these men to throughout the Caribbean. Yes, I'm sure Sir Andy Roberts and company would love to play a part. He's unofficially playing a part. Mentoring turn. I remember in 1986 when I was in Trinidad, I selected 22 players. I was young, young at the time, 21 years. Andy Roberts conducted that clinic for two, three weeks in Trinidad and Tobago, and it was a, at a young age I had learned so much from him. Another no ball there from Smith continues with his no ball problem. Brian Lara, Ian Bishop was in that, in that 22. We were the Queen's back over. And the robots took a new ball and bowled over. Still had some juice in it. 
Brian Lara, he, he was a wonderful batter since when he played at school cricket. Garfield Sobers loved him. First of um, at the Garfield Sobers International Schools Tournament and said that he batted like him. Didn't use his pad to bat. His pad was there to protect his foot if he missed. Some batsmen use their pad more than their bat. One of the great to pass through the, to, to pass, to pass through the world of cricket. Yeah. Brian Charles Lara, if not the greatest. Well, I, I, I still think, um, and people would be um, angry with me, but I still think so. Vivian Richards is the greatest West Indian batsman and Brian Lara the second greatest. So that's just my view. I have a lot of respect for Vivian Richards. I think he, he took cricket to another level. He never showed intimidation. He never was intimidated. Dominated from the time he walked out with that maroon cap, chewing the chewing gum, with that swagger. So another over has been completed. At the end of it, nine overs gone, 21 for the loss of three. You could see the leaves on that coconut tree blowing in the wind. That's how strong the breeze is here. Blowing from east to west. Yeah, in St. Augustine. 21 for three after nine over. Richard on nine. Shamara Brooks still to get off his mark. Tom to continue. One for nine after four overs. They gotta be careful not to over bowl. Um, Torn in in Antigua bowled the entire first session when he got four wickets but as a young man how could you take away the ball from someone who's got four wickets and steaming in and bowling fast well at this age where you have all the energy yeah what's it the wicket play the wicket doesn't have any big a lot of grass on this area, and I, I think it's just class bowling by these two young fast bowlers from Guyana here. Yeah, a straw colored track in Antigua. The pitch had some grass, but it fooled everybody because it wasn't fast as one would have expected. Turn. Not a short lift in delivery, but wayward. Didn't put no pressure on the batsman on that occasion. Went to buy to be taken by Imlak. Oh, Savory is keeping. Three slip. Yeah, Imlak is at four slip. Three slip at gully, cover point, fine leg, four short leg, and a mid off. So it, it seems as if um, Imlak's injury is not totally healed or he doesn't want to put on the gloves to aggravate that injury because he was telling me in Antigua that every time he goes reverse cup it has an injury to his right index finger and the ball would hit the glove and it would hurt excruciating pain he would be feeling coming up on the f close to the first um, blue waters water drink on the first hours play it's 21 for three we end the 10th over brooks still yet to score he's faced 11 balls and uh, richards not so vivian richards but the mario richards the wicket keeper for ccc he's on nine from 15 balls and a lovely drive that's a glorious shot on the front foot was pitched up half volley and put it away down towards the bung for so the, the three extra cover for four yeah the shot of the day so far we've had four boundaries scored so far and this is easily the best of them struck very powerful by this by riches Midoff had no chance just to run and retrieve it 
King Gaina continue to attack. Three slipper Galia forward short leg in place. Man comes a short extra cover now. Loses the rhythm and eventually aborts the run. We'll have to go way back to his mark. Wanna say good morning to Mali Richards, the son of Sir Vivian Richards, former Leeward Islands opener. Did commentary with me in Antigua. He's turned a commentator now. Yes, I remember he played a season in Trinidad in Central Zone Cricket, Exchange Sports Club. And he opened the button for the win for the Lee words with a guy named Austin Richards. No relation to him though. Mm. He scored a lot of runs when he came to Trinidad and at Central Zone Cricket. Played for Exchange United. That could be somewhere around 2004-2005. I, I played youth cricket with a guy called Mukesh Prasad, plays for Clark Road. Yeah. I understand he's still playing cricket. He still play? Yeah, Mukesh Prasad. Well, I played last year against him in our 50 game. Oh, and he still has a suspect action? Well, I, know, I, I can't <laughs> say that one. <laughs> when we were playing on the 19 cricket, Guyana played Trinidad. And um, there was no Sunil Narayan at that time. So, as the drinks card comes onto the field, we take a little break here. 25 for 3, the latest score at the UWI St. Augustus. Welcome back at the first uh, drink breaks. The combined campuses and colleges are 25 for three. 
which represents a very significant uh, improvement. They were eight without loss, then lapsed to nine for three, now 25 for three at the first drinks break, and uh, still in a huge amount of trouble. I'm Vidya Ramphal alongside Dean Ryan Dial, and certainly that first hour belonged to Ghana. Of course, three wickets, they'll be very happy with that. Any captain will be happy with that. After the, the opposition winning draws on the side into bat, I must say I'm very impressed with the two opening bowlers, especially Torn. Good pace, and the thing about the both opening bowlers, they are moving the ball. Yeah, Thorn certainly started the ball rolling for Ghana, bowling Damel Evelyn for two. Then uh, it was Smith that got rid of OJ Nwakati for four, caught uh, behind by Savary. And then Sadie Henry ball, it was bowled by Smith for one. Wickets falling at eight, eight, and nine. Certainly good reading if you're a Guyana fan. Not so if you're supporting the CCC. Here's Smith to continue. Well, that's played well. Behind square, that's going to run away for four. That's a good start to the second hour of play here. And that was the elegant uh, Shamar Brooks. Maybe not 100% in control of that, but put it away very well. Lovely shot. Just backward at point, racing into the fence. CCC will need him here today again. As the leader of the team and to anchor their ship here. He got a good knock in the second inning against Trinidad and Tobago, 61. So I think the, the coach Reefer and the youngsters will need him to guide them. Certainly, he will need to do some uh, work here. Big amount of spade work here for Shamar Brooks. Well, that one kept a little bit low. And he would have some bad memories from that last game when uh, one that really kept low and knocked over his thumbs. Yeah, he's off stop. Dinah still attacking here with three slip on a gully. Cover point, forward short leg. Mid on, and a fine leg. been a very windy morning it's been hot it's sunny it's been cloudy at times but basically very hot and uh, in addition to that very windy uh, if you're hearing a few noises around it's here because the uh, the plastic chairs behind us have been flying everywhere with the wind uh, coming across us uh, so that's uh, another aspect of the wind here dealing uh, dealing with it at the ccc it comes from right to left as you're looking at it now Oh, that was a good bouncer indeed. Now, Brooks, his natural trigger movement seems to take him towards the offside, and that took him directly in line with that delivery. Good short ball here by Smith. Generated some pace here, well lined up. Shamara had to get, just move his head out of the way. It was quick also. And considering this is not one of the fastest pitches in the Caribbean, uh, they're really waking it up, uh, Smith and Thorne, in their uh, bit uh, bowling spells so far. In the other game on right now, Leeward Islands are in some trouble. 36 for 3 against the Windward Islands. And West Indies Academy have uh, just started batting against Barbados Pride. No ball, turned on the onside. There will be a couple of runs here. Brooks will get back for two. So there will be three more runs added to the total here. And not for the first time today. It's been another no ball here for Niall Smith. Uh, we've come to see this in his career. Yes, I think this could be his fourth no ball for the morning. 20, 32 for three. We're in the 11th over. Again, Guyana keeping the attacking field here. Three slip on a gully, a forward short leg. Cover point, cover, mid off, and a fine leg. No, this, the skipper will continue with this because three wicket has already do, is, a do, is down, and we, Smith is from the northern end. Not close enough to interest uh, Brooks, who lets that one go outside the off stump. But uh, just a discussion on a wider angle here. The CCC brought back. Uh, into play along with the West Indies Academy, uh, CCC back since uh, for the first time since 2014. Uh, that's uh, it's been quite a gap in there, but uh, this has added a couple more teams, a couple more rounds. Uh, has this worked out the experiment uh, because they are at the bottom of the table? Well, the CCC and the academy team is really is is, is, the, uh, is these are the this is the team. West Indies will be looking at the player the, the, to groom them. 
And this is the future of Sinhalese cricket. So, winning, winning may not be the, the top priority here for them, but it's to guide them and groom them, and they always use a senior player, and Shamara Brooks is leading them, and I think he's the man to really guide them. La the last game I was surprised that Shamara Brooks didn't bowl, but then probably Shamara Brooks will look at, to these youngsters and them to look to, in this position to keep, you know, look, to get some experience from it. Yeah, a lot of uh, accent on the development part yeah. of it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah so... And if you go, the CC team, a couple of these guys have been playing for the last two, three seasons. And we, we've seen this in the past. Uh, the Cricket West Indies has brought in uh, teams from uh, from the uh, United States. So we've seen the Canadian team a couple of times. Uh, we've seen also teams from England. Young England also played here for a while. Nicely Sorry. played. And uh, that's through the covers. Not going to go to the boundary, but he will get a couple of runs here. And when you see Brooks play shots like that, you think he's going to bat for the entire day. He's such a, uh, it's such a picturesque uh, batsman in, in so many ways. Last week he scored 61, and you wouldn't believe I, I enjoyed it. It's class, you saw class in him. I think CW, CWI, I don't know, could look at, a, look at an option and play two rounds of cricket. You know, the more cricket you play with it at this level, it will augur well for these youngsters and them. And West Indies cricket. Yeah, it certainly will. And... Uh, but I was making the point, though, that uh, instead of giving the opportunity for development to teams outside of the Caribbean, uh, developing uh, the cricket by using two more teams from inside the Caribbean can only be augur well for the competition. Of course, there's a lot more encouragement for teams in this tournament. There's the financial aspect, a quarter million dollars for the winner. I was speaking to a guy about a week ago, and he had a good point. He told me, Instead of, you know, the CWA could ask the Caribbean teams to, when they select their team, to nominate a photo of four players from their country and make, get another team from it. It may augur well for, for cricket in the Caribbean. Well, uh, just to go back to the field here for a moment, the first sign of spin for the day, Kevin Sinclair, has been introduced, the off spinner, and he will try to deal with the threat of Demario Richards, who's been one of the better batsmen for the CCC through the series, and obviously a left-hander, as you can see here. So bringing the off-spinner on at this point is not a bad uh, shot at all. Especially to the left-hander. Slip, leg, gully, forward, short leg, cover point, cover, mid-off, mid-on, and a deep backward square for the left-hander. Sinclair takes it up from the Sports and Physical Education Center. In. Certainly will, and uh, certainly will help him uh, in some way of course he'll be spinning that ball viciously it'll be turning anti-clockwise and we'll get a little he will bit, get a bit, little bit more curve in the air falling from this southern side of the ground guess gets down the track and that was a bit full and hits that well has that gone all the way yes it has On top of this ice screen here huge six coming down and he's in this over the ball ahead. Sinclair, and that one uh, hits the top. There was a nice thud as that one hits the top of the side screen. Umpire says the ball is okay, and he is cleared to continue here. So they, they know that Kevin Sinclair is going to be a huge threat. So attacking him early is not a bad option here at all. We'll get, a, get a, we'll get another run as that one runs down to third man, and they'll get a couple of runs here. So that one, not quite as convincing as the previous one, but a couple of runs here for Demario Richards. Surprised they bring him from the southern end. The, the, the breeze is blowing from east or west. Or have you sent clear from the top end here with the breeze going east or west? He's coming into the breeze here from the southern side. Richards has been the most successful batter for the CCC in the series, 331 runs, uh, averaging 33.1 so far. Uh, but also he's shown the capacity to stay in there for a long time. He's the only batter in this team to face over 700 balls for the season. Yeah. Batted really well last, last game for um, CCC against Trey Andover. Both ends, he got, he, got, he got a good start. 66 was it he, he got? 72 uh, not out. 72 not out. And so he is uh, Demario Richards. Um, a couple of games ago, Yannick Otley got 99 here. 
Yeah, it was a huge, huge miss there for Yannick. Mm. Uh, just on the verge of getting that 100, but missing out. Always a very, very hurtful the score. Second first class 100. Missed out by one. Last week, Army Jangu was dropped on 99 and first by Shamara Brooks. Well, I'm sure he'll have uh, Shamar Brooks in his good books <laughs> for the rest of his life there for that drop catch. And it'll be over. Brooks on the eight, and uh, there are the bowling figures. Smith, two for 20, Torn, one for 13. Nine runs off the first over ball by Kevin Sinclair. And uh, that's how it looks at the moment there. It's quite yeah. windy, as you can see there. There was uh, coconut trees dancing in the wind, almost like a kite in a hurricane at the moment. And uh, it is that sort of day today. Uh, Change from the, uh, the northern end now. It looks like Pumal. But pick it up from the northern end. Yeah, Pumal has had uh, another great series here for Guyana. And uh, Pumal, as he usually is, is usually at uh, the top of the charts when it comes to uh, bowling. Pumal, 24 wickets so far. And he's been averaging 18.83, so that's pretty good. And he's been quite economical also. That's Canada Hall, by the way, and uh, it's that windy. And uh, somebody's kite has gotten caught up there. I don't yeah. think they're going to get that back. I think last week we saw one IO and six, hooked up on the, the TNT line. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Pumal is about to start here. And if you're wondering what IO is, I'll explain that in a minute. Or maybe I'll get dinner right to explain what IO means. It's a Trinidad term that we use. That's when the kite thread is burst and it's, it's left on its own to, to, to find its way somewhere. Yeah, so, ever, so when the kite is hung up on something, whether it's an electricity line or a tree or something, in Trinidad they said it's IO. I don't know if there's a Guyanese version to that. Sean? Went off the pad. Went to um, Everest Cricket Ground for a Easter um, cricket tour, and it was a lovely sight with kite flying at the Everest Cricket Ground. Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's the time of the year for it, uh, very popular at this time of the year. And the CCC are in, in danger of being IO themselves, to <laughs> use your verb here, and with a score as it is 43 for 3. I think Pomol could be close to 550 first class wicket if he haven't gone past it as yet. 634 first class wicket. Yeah, here is Sammy Pomol. He's been around for a long time. Down the leg side. And. So, Firasami Pumal, his overall figures are quite impressive, 631. It was hit there in that uh, little sequence. Now, look, his hand, as you might be seeing here, his right hand, he's just flexing it at the moment. He was going through for a single, uh, trying to get off the strike here to Pumal, and the throw came in and struck him on the hand. That's why he's getting some treatment at the moment. And that is his right hand, of course. Uh, that's the bottom hand for him as he's uh, facing up. So that's the hand that uh, that really where all the power comes from. So let's see how Brooks will adapt to that. Well, he didn't take off the glove, so that's a good sign. So he's okay. But uh, that Pumal stat, 631 wickets in 143 first-class matches. But you were saying 500-plus in first-class cricket. Doesn't affect him much as he plays off the back foot in the other matches on at this time. With Leeward Islands are 49 for 3. West Indies Academy are 13 for 2 against Barbados. That's a very good start for Barbados there because they are looking also to clinch another title for themselves. Barbados has a very good chance of clinching this 4 day title also. Swept around but straight to the fielder, so there's not going to be a run. As for the Trinidad and Tobago game, that one started at 11. As you know, the Jamaica uh, overcomes an end here. Uh, Jamaica are uh, an hour behind TNT. TNT 13 without loss in that one. As Sean mentioned earlier, if, if Winwood Islands win the game outright, they will take the title. And uh, Winwood Islands, I mean, they're, they're 
they have rivalries with all the other teams in the region. However, that Winwoods Leewoods fixture, don't underestimate how fierce that particular rivalry is. It will be. Yeah, they've never won the title before, the Windward Islands. And uh, on this very windy day and a windy weekend, they're hoping to blow away the competition uh, in against uh, the Leeward Islands this week. It's nicely driven oh. through the covers for four runs. That's Beautiful shot. Absolutely magnificent there from Shamar Brooks and puts that away for a boundary. Lovely shot. Through the gap, it risks to the cover boundary for four. That takes the total of 47 for three, and we're in the 14th over. Hitting against the turn, but it was so wide and so full from uh, Kevin Sinclair that uh, just gave him a nice uh, the opportunity to put that uh, left foot of his forward and stroke it through the covers. That was an absolutely beautiful stroke there from Brooks, who's on 12 of 20. That could be the shot for the morning. On the pads this time, turned away nicely and will get a couple of runs. It could go into the boundary, but the fielder just gets there in time to make the stop. So a couple more runs here for Brooks. Yeah, it's, and for the spinners on, with this crosswind, with the faster bowlers on, the crosswind is not much of a factor. But with the spinners on now, uh, if you're not very careful of uh, where you start off the ball, you could end up with the ball maybe a, at least a half a foot away from <clears throat> where you intend. That's what I said earlier, the, the breeze is from east to west, so if I, uh, St. Clair would have been better done at the northern end, where the breeze is going down. Pulling from the southern end at the moment. And again, turned uh, down the leg side. So that's one of the reasons why he's been a little bit off in terms of his line here. He's still trying to figure out where he needs to start this delivery, what line he needs to start on. Because with the first delivery, he started it outside the off stump, ended up maybe a half a foot away, nice drive. This time he's overcompensating down the leg side. Yes. Brooks just turned it nicely off his legs to the deep backward square and they pick up a single. It's 50 for three. So the sun starting to shine a bit at the St. Augustine campus. Yeah, the 50 up of 13.3 uh, overs. The There's tractor the tractor. Moving. Tractor's coming across to move the side screen. What a job that is. So you the get to sit down in that tractor mm. and drive around. The uh, last the game we had day. this problem here from both sides. Almost every delivery, the boat side screen have to be moved. And the left-handed uh, Demario Richards uh, wants to make sure it's in the exact position as Sinclair switches back to round the wicket here on this very windy day here at uh, the Safran Quarrel Memorial Field. I think they will, they will have to do a little bit, um, you know, there's a couple of World Cup practice to be taking place at this ground here. Uh, the ICC T20, which runs from the 1st to the 29th of June, that's coming up. Fans will certainly be flocking to come here, see that. That one stayed a little bit low, but he played it with a vertical bat, and that's why it got off the bottom part of the bat. Still managed to pick up one. Of course, you would have been here when the. I'm sure you would have been here for the World Cup matches that were played here in 2007. Yeah, I saw Cameron Akmal clear the boundary with ease here. Hit a few into the rugby field, which is uh, just to the uh, left of where you're looking at at the moment. Right of where you're looking at at the moment. He was the one he hit. Yeah, he is quite a unit, uh, Cameron Akmal. And if I right. recall at that time, the, the side stream was m much larger than this one they have right now. Yeah, that's right. It certainly was. Brooks uh, does well to keep that out of his stumps, and that brings an end to the over. 51 for three after 14 overs, and uh, the venue certainly was used. Uh, South Africa played here. Uh, we also had uh, Canada. Uh, play here. A uh, uh, 40-year-old Anderson Cummings played for Canada here. Uh, and that uh, Pakistan team was led by uh, Inzam Amul Haq was uh, the captain there. Bob Wilmer actually was here for that. Uh, that was coach. Yeah, the Pakistan coach. And he gave a couple of press conferences at the UE Spec uh, facility just behind us. Tragically, he would uh, die uh, just about a week later. I mean, that was so tragic indeed. It was a huge shock for all of us who came here to see those matches. Yes, Pumal to continue. 
Rochez again batting well for CC in this game. He, he played well against Trinidad and Tobago in the last grounds. Remake came not out on 72, almost held Trinidad to a draw. Yeah, Sydney, we batted very well, but that uh, and that was really a, a big heartbreak there for the CCC. They were within three overs, was it, of uh, drawing that game. After batting so well, they, 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 they lost the last three wicket in 18 deliveries. Yeah, that was the slide that came on in the end. Uh, Brian Charles doing the trick for Trinidad and Tobago here in that last game. The spinners really, uh, they play a big part later on in the matches. Takes it, but I don't think that came off the gloves. That was close to the uh, bat and pad, very close together. I think it more came off the glove. Well, I think everyone, including the fielders, knew that wasn't a catch. Top ball this time. First saw Virasami Pumal back in. 2008 Guyana versus Trinidad and Tobago at the Queen's Park Oval. Sean was there doing commentary with us, I remember. That was the last game that Brian Lara scored 100 in. I'm sure Sean remembers that. Nagamoto played in that game. Yeah. And uh, Pumal actually got him out. He's actually the last person to dismiss Brian Lara in a first class match. That's how long Virasami Pumal has been around. So 51 for three, and uh, Shamar Brooks in 15, and Damari Richards is on 23, and uh, Dan Ryan Dial is going to leave us, and Sean Devers is back in. And I'm sh Sean is too modest to tell, tell us this, but Sean actually dismissed Brian Lara in a, uh, in a youth match, a regional youth match. Tell us how did that happen. Yes, in 1988 in Barbados, I got three for 73. And my prize wicket was Brian Lara. I also got um, Richard Smith. Mm -hmm. and the uh, TNT captain. The left-hander, a slimly built left-hander. I can't remember his name. He, he played. You remember the other left-hander, though. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember doing commentary in that same match you were talking about. And Lara and Bravo was batting. Yes. And I got confused who was Bravo and who was Lara. Believe me, you weren't the only one. <laughs> I, I did also. In fact, uh, Brian Lara had an injury in that game. Now, there's another change here. Good Akesh Moti is going to come in. And he outscored um, Bravo, Bravo, outscored Lara, outscored Bravo in that match. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the thing was, Lara had an injury in that game, an injury to his shoulder. So, in fact, Bravo was looking more like Lara than Lara. <laughs> Good ball to start off from Moti, as, as typical of Moti, is very attacking and gets that one online and immediately unsettles uh, Brooks with a little bit of bounce. Yes, I was just talking about Brooks and, and comparing him to, to Carl Hooper, not in his um, stats and so on, but in his mannerism and so And I, I also thought that Darren Bravo... They called him Little Lara. But he could have, at one stage in his career, he had the exact stats of Brian Lara. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was after four matches they had this exact, the identical stats. The problem was, in Lara's fifth match, he scored 277. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo could match that up. That's where the stats started to diverge a, a huge, in a huge way. Bit of a change in the field here. The uh, field has been push to backward square leg and that's Perez very unusual a uh, 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 Spanish name yeah uh, in a Guyana team that's very unusual he um, was a cyclist for Guyana in the um, Panam games I think on the a youth cyclist Pan American youth championships yeah. I believe yeah, yeah. It's long forward to it again. He's setting himself up for a big uh, innings here. But just going back to Perez, youth cyclist, and how did that happen? Cyclist uh, cricket. Because his father was a cyclist, I believe. Yes, I know. Um, but he always liked cricket. Plays at the DCC, the Mara Cricket Club, which produced Lloyd and Fredericks and Lance Gibbs, Roger Harper.
Well, we've seen so many sportsmen in the Caribbean. Uh, they've played in two different sports, but cycling and cricket is not one I've seen often. Yeah, that's, there's that's a young man who unusual. will soon be in the Ghana on the 19 team. Um, he plays table tennis. He went to the Commonwealth Games, and the money he got, he bought a bat. That's how he loved cricket. Didn't he? Didn't he co? Didn't he uh, captain Ghana on the 17 team last yes, year? Yes, Jonathan Van Lange. Jonathan Van Lange. Yeah. Yes, actually, I saw him playing table tennis in a local. He led uh, the Arima team to the Champions League mm. title here in Trinidad. He's quite an exceptional yeah. player, Jonathan Van Lange. And he's going away next week, I think, to play a tennis tournament and then come back to play for that Guyana. Might, that might actually be 90. this week. I think the, yeah. the Trinidad and Tobago team left the uh, day before yesterday, so I think he would already be there. Van Lange. Well, you often see that, that nexus between table tennis and uh, cricket uh, so many times. Here's Pomal to continue. Oh, he's gone straight through him and hit the stumps. And Brooks is gone. Where did that pass? He's looking down the track. But that was a beautiful delivery from Vera Sammy Pomal. Pitched it on about off stump. Turned and clipped the top of off stump. And a bemused Brooks is heading back to the pavilion. Yeah, big. And puts his hand to his skimbo and then walks away dejectedly. So a big break for Guyana. Brooks uh, was just beginning to look ominous. 23. And he's gone off the bowling of Pomal. 53 now for four. And Guyana right back in the game now. Well, Not that they were ever out of it. No, they weren't. They certainly weren't by any means. Uh, last year, during the Super 50 tournament, Pomal produced a similar delivery to dismiss Shea Hope last year. Uh, it, it, he was bowling around the wicket, touched down just about middle and off, turned just enough and with a, a lot of pace on it to hit the off stump. And Hope, who was in exceptional form at the time, uh, went first ball and that was the it. Guyana went on to, to win that game. So the new batsman is Yannick Otley, who was, uh, as we talked about earlier, missed out on 100 a couple of weeks ago. He made 99 here at the... Sir Frank Worrell Memorial Field and he will come in at a point where his team is in all sorts of disarray 54 52 for four and uh, the batsman to go Evelyn for two McCatty for four Sadiq Henry for one and Brooks the last to go just a few moments ago uh, out for 18 54 for four that partnership uh, was uh, 43 runs so it was uh, it looked like the green shoots of rec recovery for a moment but an exceptional delivery by Pomal. He does have that capacity, doesn't he, to produce those types of deliveries? Yes, he was straight and consistent line and length. Always makes the batsman play. Well, here he is in again. Tries that one straight out to uh, is that uh, Chanderpaul there, and uh, there's no run. Confident uh, shot to start off here from Otley. Off the pad, stifled appeal. That's uh, going to be a leg by. And I remember when I first saw him in 2008 in that match against Trinidad and Tobago at the Oval. Uh, there seemed to be a he seemed to be moving everywhere, arms and legs twisting at contrasting angles before the ball flew out of his hand. And now it just seems that he's, he's, he's shaved off a few of those rough edges as he's coming down to the tail end of his career. Yes, he'll soon be replaced. Um, well, he is replaced by Moti in the West Indies team, but still bowling in tandem with Moti in the Guyana team. Albion has produced a lot of quality spinners, Bishu, Moti, and Pomal being the last three. What a trio that is. Yeah. yeah. And Nagamutu from Port Morant. Nicely played. And uh, that po Port Morant area certainly has been uh, occupied a lot of uh, history of in cricket history in Guyana. 
social history also. That's uh, where uh, in the 1950s it was. Going for the sweep shot. I think the story goes back to uh, the former West Indies uh, player, uh, Sir Sir Clyde, uh, Sir Clyde Walcott, Walcott yeah. uh, who would have been uh, he was part in the of bo a bookers a industry. They yeah. were working with now with Guy Suko, so he was there. He actually played for Guyana and Jamaica. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and he, it was alleged that he discovered Basil Butcher, Joe Solomon, and uh, Rohan Kanai. Yeah. But um, there's a dispute about that. Well, actually, I think where the work that he would have done to, to clear out some of those cane fields and build cricket fields, that eventually led to the rise of the, that trio, yeah. that fabulous batting trio out of Guyana. And, uh, of course, for the West Indies, uh, part of that 1960-61 uh, team that went to Australia. So uh, either directly or indirectly, he did have an effect, a yeah. huge effect on producing cricket in that Port Morant area. 53 for 4, Otley on 1, Demario Richards on 23. And Richards hasn't uh, has had the best uh, outings for the CCC in this series. As for Otley, 259 runs coming into this one. Uh, he averages 51, actually, just uh, the three matches he's played. Uh, that best of 99, that was an agonizing miss for him. Yeah, th this, this team, the names on paper, suggest that there should have been doing much better than they are doing now, ending at the bottom of the table. Unlikely to win any match because I don't see them beating Guyana here. And uh, you look down there, what, what they've done for the season. A lot of them have occupied the crease in a huge way. There are at least five, six batsmen have batted, uh, faced over 500 deliveries uh, for the series so far but the runs just aren't uh, coming for them. So they've been able to occupy the crease fairly well, but they haven't been able to produce, to tune out the runs consistently. That's been the problem with uh, Tejan Chandrapal of recent. He's occupied the crease, but hasn't scored any big runs. Of course, he got his first 100 in a long time in this tournament. And then the very next game in Jamaica, didn't get any. Or many? Yeah, not many. Chandapal 101 in that game, but uh, averaging just under 30 for the series as the over from Moti comes to an end. Chandapal has faced over 800 deliveries for the tournament so far. So occupation of the crease isn't a problem for him. It's just converting those, uh, getting in to, to scoring runs. Yes, he, he's not like his father. His father occupied the crease and then changed gear and scored runs. Batted for 500 hours three times without being dismissed. <laughs> That's right. In test cricket. Yeah, that, that was the year. One of those was the year he was named uh, Wisden Cricketer yeah. of the Year, of course. Missed out on uh, two centuries at Lords that year. Playing off the back foot Richards, getting one down to Thorne. As the big man Thorne started the ball rolling for Guyana earlier today with a wicket. And uh, so far it's been steady progress here for Guyana. Uh, they've picked up four wickets uh, for 52 runs now. And there's Pomal's figures. Look at that. Just one run conceded off his three overs so far. So 3.1 overs that is. He's always at you making you play. You miss, I hit. Lots of wickets. Um, like before, bowl down. So really went for that one there, Otley outside the off stump. And uh, rarely you see one outside the off stump from Pomol, so his eyes lit up there. Didn't get any contact, trying to spear that one over the cover region. Uh, and one of the flaws with most young West Indian batters, once you bowl a succession of dot balls to them, even in test cricket, they try to play a release shot, maximum risk, and they get out. They don't have the temperament and the patience to bat long. And those who bat long, like Craig Buffett and uh, Chandra Paul, 
take too much of time in this modern day test matches to, to, to make runs. Yeah, they're very much troll back players, yeah. if you want to uh, put it that way. They they bat like uh, the way that cricket would have been played yeah. in this. 50s, Even England, 60s, 70s who or used so. to bat long with boycott and those guys, they've now changed their whole approach to test cricket. Well, he's edged it and is caught at first slip. That was outside the off stump. He went for a big drive earlier in the over and this time gets a touch on it. And that is the end of Otley. Demise, and here's how it happened. Got the touch, and Otley has to go. So, So from 54 for three, they're now 54 for five. So two wickets going down for two runs. And this is something we've seen often here from the CCC team throughout the season. Wickets have fallen in bunches all the way for them. And another little bunch here. And it's up to uh, Romario Graves and Demario Richards. These two have to do something about that and uh, make a change in the conversation here. Well, it was eight for one, eight for two. Nine for three, and then a four to three run partnership, and then 54 for th three, and 50 53 for four. Yeah, so there you have it there. That's been the story of the morning. Guyana well and truly on top after being, uh, well, they, they, were, they lost a the toss, and CCC decided to bat first, and it hasn't been a very good story for them here. Richards again asking for the sight screen to be changed and uh, the green tractor is heading off to, to do that uh, once again. So 54 for the loss of 5 now, 19 overs, Ghana would be large and in charge in this game. Certainly will be and uh, 15 minutes away from lunchtime here at the moment and uh, of course there's the we're seeing the caterers moving around the field passing on lunch to everyone. And the two most experienced batters in this side, at Otley and uh, Brooks, are back in the pavilion. Yes, yeah, not a good sign. Everything going the way of Ghana here. Now, Ghana pretty much have to play the perfect game uh, to get to those uh, full points. Uh, their chances, really, of winning this title are a bit r more remote, uh, if that's the right is, is that the Unlikely. right word? <laughs> Unlikely at yeah. the moment, improbable at the moment for them. But... If something goes wrong, if there's, uh, there's, uh, there's rain in, in the other matches, and if they can produce the perfect game here, who knows, they could go up from third to first place. That one's glanced away. Will be a couple of runs here. Thorne is after it and just pushes it back. Does well there, Thorne, the big man. Takes a huge effort to get down for that, but he did well and made the stop. Uh, and another thing that has impressed me with modern-day West Indies cricket... The, the fielding has improved. Uh, in the, back in the days, fast bowlers were not known to be brilliant fielders, except a few like Garnet, Gully, and so on. But now, most of the fast bowlers, if not all of them, are good fielders, excellent fielders. Yeah, that's and that's right. what T20 has done. Also made the batsmen score quicker in one day and in test cricket. Single here for Richards. It's whipping that one from outside the off stump to get one. And some might even trace it a bit further back to the Kerry Packer days, uh, the one-day cricket coming in, faster scoring rates. But really, with the introduction of T20 cricket around the early part of this century, that's where the scoring rates have absolutely gone up. But I'm not really a big fan of T20 cricket because I like to see a battles of attrition I like to see the classy shots. Most T20 batters, well, there are a few who play classy shots like Jayasura and those guys, but most of the T20 batters are cultured sluggers. <laughs> cultured sluggers, I love that. 
That's really well put there indeed. And 57.45 at the end of 20 overs here. We're into the last uh, 12 minutes or so of the morning session here. Vera Sami Pumal has uh, taken out a couple of wickets here. He's gotten two really good wickets, a, a peach of a delivery to get rid of Brooks. And then uh, he had uh, Otley, who was uh, caught at first slip, and he was gone for one. Uh, we've seen a lot of high scores in this year's tournament. Even CCC has managed to get 300 runs. Yeah, that was a pretty good chase they put on. They, 300, they were chasing 449. Now that would have been an extraordinary effort to get that. But they did well. Almost, they were th within three overs, really, of uh, drawing the game here last week. Two 500 plus totals also this season. Mm -hmm. 591 for nine made by Trinidad against CCC. That's the game you were talking about. And 549 made by Barbados um, where the three batters scored hundreds, Braffitt, McCaskey and Chase. So the batting has looked reasonably good in this tournament. That's uh, played down. Of course, there's a, there, there are other ways of interpreting it. One, uh, one way that I've seen uh, some commentators talk about it is that when you look at the four matches that ended last week, uh, all four matches ended in results. And the other part of that, as Pumal bowls again, uh, one commentator was comparing it to the English county season where mm. all matches there mm -hmm. ended in draws. So they were making the point that perhaps West Indian batsmen are not capable as yet, of taking a game into a fifth day. Yeah. And you bat well in one innings, and then you collapse in the second innings. You've got to be consistent. When you look at the West Indian batters, all the top West Indian batters of recent times are talented. But the, the, the stats does not suggest that because of the inconsistency to convert good scores into big scores, not by the bowlers bowling you up, by you giving away a wicket. That's right. And the over comes to an end here from Pumal. His five overs, he's taken uh, two for three runs so far. Exceptional stuff again from Vera Sami Pumal. Demario Richards is on 28, not out. Romario Graves, uh, who is also uh, an accomplished saxophonist, I'm told. He is yet to score off his six runs. And so far, the weather has played nicely with us here, Sean. It's been hot, it's been cloudy, but uh, certainly better conditions than they were last year. Last week, in fact, for that match, as uh, our colleague, uh, Mr. Uh, Dial, was saying, it was like a furnace here last week. Yes, it's like a foreigner's throughout the Caribbean in recent times. And that's maybe because of climate change, global warming. The sun has gotten closer to the earth. <laughs> yeah, it does feel that way, doesn't it? So, Gudakesh Moti, uh, the left-hander, le another left-hander, very different from Pomol, who's slower through the air. Moti, a lot more like a modern left-arm spinner. Oh, that's uh, off the glove, but away from the fielder at that leg gully position. They're not going to get the single, but that's why he's there, Chanderpaul, for that sort of situation. Moti's a bit taller. He turns the ball a little bit more, well, a lot more than Pumal. But Pomal has immaculate control. Yeah, certainly. That's, that's his uh, strength. That is it. Indeed. And that's turned away for one. And we'll get there too. And uh, just to uh, tell you a little bit about Romario Graves, uh, there was a very famous, uh, I'm not sure how much you're into soca, Sean. There was a very famous soca song called Big People Party, which is very big here in Trinidad. I'm sure Mr. Dion knows about Big People Party. Uh, the saxophone on that was played by Romario Graves. 
Is yeah, that so? Yeah, he, he did in wow. fact play that uh, uh, Farmer Nappy is the name of the artist yeah. here from Trinidad. He played and I uh, know that song well. <laughs> I'm it's sure you've been in, in Guyana. Yeah. yeah. You're not a stranger to parties, are you sure? No. No. But I go less and less the older I get. Yes, well I think we could all agree with that. Fifty nine for five, Imlac just making sure he's gotten the angles uh, correct here for the right handed uh, graves. And uh, they're now going to bring another fielder close in, this time on the offside. So two fielders close in on the offside in addition uh, to the slip in place. A big enough uh, sheet on your hotel room could cover all of them at the moment. That's how close they are. So on does the fielding. So good situation here for Guyana, but uh, you made a very important point about taking the batting order of the CCC team for granted. They have fired, especially in the last game. Yeah. And with the likes of Graves and uh, Richards still out there, it's it's not a foregone, it's not a fait accompli at the moment that they will be bowled out cheaply here. We'll get some runs here, maybe a couple. That's a nice tumbling stop in the outfield. And the end of the over again here. So it's just six minutes away, but I think we could have possibly two overs here, given the speed at which Pomal and, and, and uh, of course, and get through the overs, and Moti get through the overs. So the players look very comfortable, the CCC. Nice little dressing rooms, UWI Sports and Physical Foundation Center, Education Center. I'm very impressed with this facility. I went to the washroom just now and I saw a basketball court Oh, yeah. With lots of seating. Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, it hosts multiple sports at, in that particular facility just behind us. And uh, in addition to basketball, volleyball. Mm. It's pretty much like the national home for volleyball now. And uh, it also hosts the UWI graduation, the University of the mm. West Indies, uh, St. Augustine campus. The graduation ceremony is held right here. So there was a, a new um, campus, Five Nations, built in Antigua. Mm -hmm. Are there any players in this team from that campus? I don't think so. It's uh, heavily dominated by players from Barbados at the moment. Uh, more Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago and a few Jamaican players in there. Well, that's from the three big UV campuses, yes. Mona, Keyville, and St. Augustine. Well, I'm sure that's going to happen in the future, though. Well fielded by Imlac, who's still, and you can see there, that's the injury Sean Devers was talking about. Uh, that big yellow plaster yeah. on his index finger. Occupational hazard for wicket keepers. Was in some trouble with that one, but well played in the end. Should have gone on to the front foot. Yes, that's right. But for all space, if he bowls a little short, it's forcing the batsman on the back foot. And he's also got a nice flight to delivery. He bowls slow. That's the one. That's the one you encourage to take yeah. a drive at, but he resisted the temptation and the over end. 60 for 5, 23 overs, and I think we're just an over away from lunch here, Sean. Well, maybe because lunch is approaching, he's gone into defensive mode. But I remember Brian Lara was telling me at um, even at youth cricket level, if you get the first ball is a bad ball, you hit it for four. And the last ball, if it's a bad ball, you hit it for four. Because the next day, you could end on 96. <laughs> and you would have wasted your opportunity of getting a four to get your 100. Yeah, that's right. Just uh, play the ball on merit. If it's a bad ball, put it away. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what time of the day it is. <clears throat> uh, and since from youth days, Brian would come and knock at the best batter's door in each team. 
and tell them how many runs he has in the first rung, how many runs he has more than them in the second rung, and so on and so <laughs> forth. Yeah, that's Richards there in a little bit of trouble to Moti. And Moti has a little bit of a smile on his face as he gets back to the top of his mark. Yeah, it's all part of the, the mental side of the game. As he edged that, ooh, that may have been an edge, but it stayed very low. I don't think it carried to first slip. And uh, in any case, let's see if that did in fact carry. Takes the edge. There it is. Oh, no, it just, just, just in dropped front. in front on the half volley. Yeah, never heard that story before, but uh, I'm not surprised because that's that's all part of the game. Yeah. Uh, the great Fred Truman, the England fast bowler, would walk in into the opposition dressing room and said, and remind batsmen who he'd gotten out in the past. He said, "Well, I got you for so and so, and I'm going to do it again today, and you're not going to get any runs." And he would he would pretty much psych out everyone. Yeah, psychological <laughs> warfare. I remember fast bowlers used to do that, but in Guyana, there's a guy called Andrew Light. Right. And he used to come at 4 o'clock in the morning and rap on the doors of the fa uh, fast bowlers and say, get ready for me. And from <laughs> 4 o'clock they woke, they couldn't sleep back. <laughs> That's the other side of it, sleep deprivation. Yeah. <laughs> um, he may have sold that idea to the U.S. Army, who knows. That one gets between keeper and slip and they will get a couple of runs here. But and that's loose work there from Anderson. Yeah. Just trotted after the ball. A giveaway, a, an easy single. And there will be a time when you would want to get a batsman out or a team out for a single less. And that'll be it. Yeah. Now, we did say that these two go through their overs so fast. They've gotten through their overs so quickly that two overs is now turned into three because it's still a minute to 12 and uh, they will have another over here at uh, the Sir Frank Worrell Memorial Field in Trinidad. Thanks so much for joining us wherever you are. I hope you've enjoyed the entertainment here this morning. It's been chock full of wickets. Well, a huge amount of runs, but we've had, uh, let's see, five boundaries and a six so far. So Pomol starts the first over just before lunch here. And this rally has been an outstanding session for Ghana. Yes, they've really dominated. Apart from that brief little period of resistance between uh, Richards and Brooks for the three runs, wickets have tumbled, as you said, in bunches. The first three, nine for three. And then when they got to 50, 53 for four, 53 for five. Now it's 62 for 5. Another period of token resistance. And at this point, Richards decides to have a little talk with Graves. And a good uh, old pro idea to go and make sure this is, in fact, the last over before lunch. I don't think there was any doubt, but no. just, uh, just for good measure. Just go and have a talk with him and waste uh, just about a minute. We'll get a couple of runs here played well behind square. It may go all the way, though. Fielder just gets uh, in front of it and uh, makes the stop. That's uh, Moti who does the fielding. And a couple of runs remaining there for uh, Graves. He's up to three off 19. Richards has been, again, uh, the mainstay of the CCC innings. 31 off 59 deliveries. And Ghana will know he's the one they have to target again in the second innings. Get him out early, and it could be an early early game for them. So just uh, one ball remaining in the morning session here, and what a session it's been for Vera Sammy Pomal. Two for five. This will be the end of his sixth over, seventh over. He's been absolutely brilliant. Can this come the opening fast bowling pair? Of course. Smith and uh, 
Well, that's lunch. Uh, last ball before lunch, and here we've ended. 25 overs ball. Good effort from Guyana to get in 25 overs in the morning session. And the CCC have closed at 64 for 5. Demario Richards is the top scorer so far. And uh, it's been all Guyana in this first session. Yes, two for Smith, two for Pomal, one for Turn. All Guyana. Guyana dominate, and will they continue this period of domination, or will the CCC find us some inspiration during the lunch period? Join us in just about 40 minutes for the after-lunch session here on day one of this round seven match in the West Indies Championship between CCC and Guyana Harpy Eagles.
Yes, well, good afternoon once again, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And we greet you the news if you've just joined us that Guyana lost the toss and CCC opted to bat. Um, they at lunch, they're 64 for the loss of five wickets. Richards is on 31 and Greaves is on three. Um, they lost wickets in bunches. Eight for one, then eight for two, then nine for three. And then there was a little partnership between Richards and Brooks. And then Brooks fell for 23. He was bowled by Pomal at 53 for four and then 54 for five when Otley was dismissed. Um, caught that slip, well, ball that spun, and uh, Pomal got that wicket. Otley made one. And now we're back. It's a bit overcast, but no immediate threat of rain. High wind still um, in effect, as we say. Good afternoon to Dial. Yeah, bless afternoon again to everyone as we resume play after lunch. She's seen some trouble here, 64 for 5 from 25 overs. Richards and Greaves are the wicked. And the weather has been cool and nice after lunch. Breeze blowing from the eastern to the western direction on the ground. So, Moti will start the bowling from the southern end. Devlin was bowled by turn for two, it was eight for one. McCarthy caught off the bowling of Smith for four, eight for two. Henry was bowled by Smith for one, nine for three. Brooks bowled for Mall, 23, 53 for four. And the uh, last wicket to fall, Otley. Caught that slip off Pumal for one, 54 for five. Richards still there, showing good fight. He is on 31, and with him is Greaves on three. Yes, I think um, Richards have been doing well for CCC in the last couple of games. The last game against Trinidad, he batted well, almost drew the, drew the game for them. Again, he's showing patience and with his batting to the 31 from 60 deliveries, and I think CCC will need him to go on as long as possible again today. Yes, this is an important partnership. The first hour after lunch would be very important for both sides. CCC would want to build a, a solid partnership. Gan would want to get a couple of wickets. There's a threat of rain over for the weekend. And that would be in the minds of especially the Guyanese who have a good chance, well, a, a, a chance of retaining their title. Four teams still in the chance as Richards gets off the mark after lunch with a single dunk towards long on. Score now 65 for five. Canada. Trinidad and Tobago 50 for one in J at Sabina Park. So Guyana would keep an eye on the leewards windwards match. That will probably be the match of the rung in Antigua. Also in Antigua, Barbados played the West Indies Cricket Academy. That's Edge. Good knockdown there by Sinclair. That's uh, Anderson that slip. We see a Caribbean Airlines plane heading into Piaco International Airport. Oh dear, that one was a, got a little bit of bunks and yes. it came forward and it fell between the <laughs> ceiling it off and the backward point running in. Uh, all is well, that ends well though. It's 65 for 5. The Trinidad game also during the four day period, couple ball, ball bunks and turn a bit. Not much, so so very often you'll see one bounce and turn. We saw Brian Charles got some to bounce, Carrie Pierre got some to bounce. So let's remind you, this round started with the windwards on top, 89.6 points. Barbados in second place, 87.8. Guyana, 87.3. And fourth position, the Leeward Islands on 82.6. So any one of the 
top four teams can win this tournament. As you mentioned earlier, Sean, if Winwood wins out right, they could take the title. Yes, and if Barbados win and uh, get more points, bonus points than the Winwards, they could take the title. And if Ghana wins and the Leewards and Winwards draw, and Barbados and Academy draw, then Ghana will take the title. But first of all, they've got to win and then leave the rest to what might be. I think if you look at the, the, the results of the couple of rounds, you know, they are, they, almost each game has been, been f uh, finished. Yeah. Victory has gone either way. The first match Ghana played just one day possible. That's the game when Jason Mohammed got his first of two centuries. And that really set back the Guyanese. And then the loss to the Leewards when Mikel Louis got centuries in both innings. That's their only loss so far. From then they've won their four matches on a trot. Loose shot there played by Greaves. Still remains on three. As Pomal works away. He's got two for six so far. Halfway through his eight over. And Greaves is back. Sun breaks out again. The sun has been playing a cat and mouse game with the clouds in the sky. Still blue, evident. Patches of blue. I think the wicket had the wicket uh, just prior to launch and now it's flattening out. Very nice for batting. Yeah, that that's the problem for Guyana. They'd want to get rid of these last five batters as quickly as possible. Back goes Greaves and smashes it out towards cover, but straight to the fielder. And the over is completed. So 27, 27 overs gone. It's 66 for the loss of five. I think CCC has to start to rebuild here. No one, they, will, they, will, they will be looking for this period to carry them in to the first over first and then look at the team interval if it's possible. Guyana, on the other hand, will look to get wickets and bowl out CCC as soon as possible and bat today. Yeah, that's what Guyana would want, but the CCC would have other ideas. They have not played in a first class tournament since 2014, and that's the last time they beat Guyana when Guyana played them right here in a day night match. Leon Johnson was captain in Guyana for the very first time. And they beat Guyana. But in those days, the teams were a lot stronger because they came from more universities across the Caribbean. And players like Austin and Rifo and all of those guys were actually going to university in Cave Hill, Barbados. Good delivery again from Moti. Outer half of the bat, down to its slip. The, the last two game played at this, uh, this ground here, 300 was scored on a day's play, and the, the 90 was wasn't bold. Lots of runs have been scored in the last round, especially. Mm. I think six centuries were scored. The last game with Trinidad here, over 1100 runs scored between CCC and Trinidad and Tobago Red Force. Yeah, so the the batting has been improving slightly. But I want to see more of the top order test batsmen come down and dominate. Back in the Shell Shield days when you play test cricket and you come down to Shell Shield cricket, you dominate. And when you come down from Shell Shield to club cricket, you dominate. At least when you come back to your club, you know, younger players will look at it and yeah. learn something. I remember when <laughs> Andy Jackman, Rupert Gomes and those guys come back to Ghana. Club cricket, they scored hundreds almost every weekend. Fouled backers also, end of the over, 65, 66 for five. Yes, CCC will have to, um, to continue with this with the both batsmen. 
This could well be the last to recognize Barcelona at the crease here with two all rounders to come. Greaves himself is an all rounder, but Bart's very good. He got uh, forty. He got forty eight against Trinidad and Tobago last week in the second inning. I, so I'm very impressed though with the the keeper, Richards. Yes, he got seventy two not out last last week against Trinidad and Tobago. So CCC will will need this player to carry him as long as possible. Continue to be disappointed with the work of Brooks. That's a ball that spins past the edge. Appeal. On the other hand, Guyana will look, Guyana will be looking to bowl out CCC and bat to himself. Start their innings today. Yes, and they would like to possibly bowl out CCC before T and give them enough time to make a big score and then bowl out CCC again. Uh, swept away, down towards the fine neck position. Good work on the boundary there. And with a, with a possibility of rain on Saturday. Yeah, that's a nice sweep shot, fine. And uh, who is chasing? Good effort by the fielder. Looks like Anderson. This is um, Guyana will have behind them back Saturday's forecast rain. Yes, it wouldn't so much matter to CCC. CCC would want to play party pooper. But Guyana in with a chance of winning this tournament. They're the defending champions. They've won six titles in the last eight years. The other two going to Barbados, who's got the most titles. Barbados, 24 titles. Guyana looking for their 13th. They've won the double on two occasions, 1993 and the first time in 1983. But they've not won a one-day title since 2005 at Borda when they beat Barbados on the duckworth Lewis system. That was the last time Ghana's won a 50-over title. Good delivery, more enthusiasm than anything else, the appeal. And totals kept on 69 for 5. But the same can be said of Trinidad and Tobago. The last time Trinidad and Tobago won a four-day title was in 2017 on the Ganga. I think that's almost 17, 17 years now. Yeah. Trinidad won the 50-over tournament last year, which yeah. was played in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes, they dominate in, in one-day cricket. Ghana dominates in four-day cricket. Defeated in Leeward Islands at the Brian Lara Stadium last year. Back in the days, teams dominated in both forms of the game. 70 for 5. You see the trees leave just blowing here from the eastern to the western direction all around the ground. So you see 70 for 5 and we're in the 29 over being completed. Yeah, so that indicates a strong breeze. I see a Ghana flag has been put up there. I saw somebody put it up. I don't know if it's the official Ghana flag or it's a fan. Moti screams the appeal. Turned on by Moti very accurate yesterday. Umpire Reefer. He's in his 8 over, none for 9. Yeah, he's yet to take a wicket. But he's been on the money. Good lines, good lengths. This one is slightly overpitched and pushed away. More pushed on a drive by the left handed Richards. He goes now to 35. And the total going up to 71 for 5. Greaves back in strike. Good rotation in the strike though. See a slip golf, silly point, cover point, cover, short cover, mid off. A backward square from for Moti. From position of 64 for 5 at launch. They've progressed to 71 for the same 5. Richards has progressed from 31 to 35. And Greaves has added three to his three at lunchtime. So a ring of fields around the bat, a slip, a gully, a silly mid-off. And this is swept 
bad line there from Moti on the line of the leg stump. But uh, Smith is, is asking Posada on the boundary there. She's so just striking just over 2.39. Two yeah, it's been a, a big struggle here for the CCC batters. Yeah, that's Shiv Narayan's Chandra Paul's son. He looks similar to Ashkeya Posad. Same complexion, same height, same physical stature. Ashkeya Posad being brought into this game to replace. Ronaldo Ali Mohammed for the Guyanese. One change. This is played away. Nice shot. Would it reach the boundary? Yes, it's got the legs to get to the boundary and it goes into the boundary for four. The feeler will lose the battle as the first boundary. The second boundary after lunch is um, ball that's pitched up. Nice spanking drive. It's coming on his front foot and stroking it through the cover for four. Fieldsman just chasing it to, to retrieve it. Lovely shot from Richards. Takes him to 39 from 77 delivery, and the total is 76 for five. We end the 30 at over. So Richards beginning to look more and more ominous from a Guyanese point of view. Last delivery defense looking more and more confident as his innings progressing. 39 years, and after 30 overs, it's 76 for five. That's the first boundary from Moti's bowling after eight overs. Sun starting to cover the ground again. Lovely day for cricket. The wicket seem to be very easy pace now. Supporter in that stand there with the flag. Nice picturesque view there. Nice trees around the gong. Very agricultural setting, this university compound. And uh, focusing on both academics and sports. So a lovely sports venue inside there. Video was telling me they play volleyball, they play netball, and they play basketball. And the, stan the stands are more than some of the basketball courts that play club basketball in Guyana. That's a nice shot. Good stop there, good half stop in the end. And they hustle through for a single. Annoyed, grieves that he didn't find the gap. But he goes now with that single to eight. 39 is Richards back in strike. And this is very good rotation of the strike. Yes, after lunch, they have picked it up well. Both batsmen rotating the strike perfectly after lunch. And this will be in a right hand, left hand. The bowler will have to change his attack of his line. New some Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, 84 for three at Sabina Park. Just a moment, just going LBW. Uh, he had scored two centuries so far in this tournament. That's a nice shot. Deliberately up and over and over the extra cover boundary and into the ropes now for four. So deliberately going over the top and uh, Richards goes into the forties with that boundary. 43 and the total is 81 for five. So as you said, more positivity shown by both batters after lunch. Yes, you can see that Floyd Reefemers must have, have let them know something in the, for the lunch and the interval because right after lunch they started to pick up the rotation very good and they are scoring pretty a uh, slightly little quicker than the, the opening two overs. Pomal moves in and that's a nice shot played off the back foot in total control but can't get a single and so the over comes to an end at the end of it it's 85 for the loss of 81 for the loss of five. Yes, both batsmen looking pretty well set after lunch and the CCC will need them to at least start going to the first hour with the water break and then look at the tea interval. Could so, 
Good guy, we just got to about 135 at the T interval. Well, I was talking about the last time Ghana played here on the lights when they played CCC. And CCC beat them. Those are some of the lights. Those are newer lights. I remember that the lights that was here in 2014 were not such... Um, uh, the amount of the lights were a lot less. This is back and he punches it into the offside. Brilliant piece of feeling yes. by Tone. Reason on his back foot and stroking it hard in the covers. Tone throwing himself to the right and stopping it. Both Tone and Smith, fast bowlers that could feel well. Most of the fast bowlers nowadays can feel. Back in the old days, you don't expect the fast bowler to be a good fielder. Well, with the, with the multitude of franchise to 20 cricket, you, if you need to be here, you have to be a good fieldsman too. Yes, you have to have more than one bows, more than one arrows to your bow. That's a good stop again by turn, going across his left to backward point. And they get a single. So tumbling save there by Isaiah Thorne. The 19 year old who looks like a 28, 22 year old in a 19 year old body. Yes, that's good for him, you know, energetic young man. Yeah, he's big and strong. Talented and has far to go, in, has far to reach. And he gives the ball quite a whack. He actually plays for a team called um, 4R Lions. A second division team in Georgetown because he's under 19 the under 19 players could play in any tournament that's a good delivery he's gone leg before playing across the line just when he was looking good 43 seven away from what would have been a second 50 and he goes across the line to promote to um, Moti and is dropped in front leg before so a big blow now for Guyana 82 now for six. A quicker delivery from Pomol. Trying to go across the line. Struck him very quickly. And I just held leg before wicked. That takes the total to 82 for six. We in the 32nd over. Moti picks up his first wicket. One for 16 in his ninth over. Again, when CCC looked to be weather in the storm, the uh, lose on a wicket against Trinidad and Tobago last week was the same thing. As this looked good with a partnership, the, a wicket fell. Well, this is the same thing when Brooks, who looked quite good, played some classical elegant shots in his 23. Well, when he was bowled by Pomal, who was 53 for 4, and uh, immediately after, Otley was out for 1. 54 for 5 and now Richard's gone Sean you see this looking like under 150 for CCC I'm not sure but it's likely I don't I've not seen the, the strength of the lower order batting this is the first time I'm seeing this CCC I it's saw the CCC in one day cricket which they're more prevalent in the Super 50. We've seen Avinash Mahabi sing on debut for CCC. Off spinner coming out from Trinidad and Tobago from Victoria Sports Cricket Club. Pretty, pretty decent little batsman. Got a lot of got a lot of wicket for Victoria in the National One League this year in Trinidad and Tobago. And CCC will need him here to, to, to carry on with the batting for them. So, Abhibar Singh, that's correct. Avinash Mahabir Singh. Mahabir Singh. So, Mahabir Singh survives the last ball for Moti as the over comes to an end. Successful one for Moti, picking up his first wicket, brings Pomal back into action. Pomal has got two for 15. Smith has got two. So happy birthday to Avinash. Today is his birthday, I'm told, by Vidya. His 23rd birthday? Yeah, he's, he's 23. I'm told also he comes from Naparima College. 
He was on the West Indies on a 19 team to World Cup in the World Cup in South Africa. Did not play a game, unfortunately. That's the same World Cup by Zayton. He was in. No, it's no. 23. I it can't be in that World Cup because Isaiah Thorne was in the last World Cup and he was in the previous one. Still, if he's 23. He didn't play any game though. But he have done well for Victoria Sports Club this year in the National League, which is bowling. Nice. See Pomol full to Grace Shook in the short extra cover. No run. The total remain on 82 for 6. We're in the 33rd over. JC Grease get looking to get aggressive, hitting it to mid on. One bong to turn. No runs. Well, that's sometimes an indication that the low order would not support him so he has to step on the gas and score his runs as quick as possible then he turns it nice delicate deflection down towards fine leg and they come back for three excellent run in between the pair so three runs to greaves he goes now <laughs> to 12 and the total going up now to 85 for six brings Avinash Mohabir Singh into back into strike. Yes, yeah, Sean, so you say one, 150 and on there is on the car for CCC here? Yeah? Maybe likely, depending on, on Greaves. And as you said, this young man can bat Mohabir Singh. Maybe a little inside edge onto that. We we'll look yes. at it on the replay. From the reaction of the fieldsman, it looks he got an inside edge onto the pad. No inside edge. Just drama. Some of the feelers appeal vociferously and look confident. If the umpire is weak, he might take that <laughs> into account and put the man out. But these two are competent umpires. Umpire Leslie Reefer and umpire Carl Tuckett. That brings to the end of the over. 85 for 6 after 33 overs. Pumal 2 for 18 from 11. Avinash Mahabri Singh yet to get off his mark. And Greece is on 12 from 41 deliveries. Well, these two are very competent umpires. Umpire. Carl Tuckett. I, I felt in my mind he should have played a lot more than he did at the West Indies ODI level. And well, the young Reefer, one of the younger umpires in West Indies cricket. I think he played a um, couple of club games. But he comes from a family of four or five Reefers who played first class cricket and he is also umpiring first class cricket even though he didn't play I think you mean Trinidad here we have seen a lot of cricketers turn into umpire when they finish play which is good for the game prior to this prior to some years back in the 80s and 90s had a lot of teachers who turned to umpire yeah. And the umpires who finish play cricket get fast tracked because of their playing experience. Yes. The two top umpires in Guyana, umpire Nigel Duguid. See, Des um, Den Denzel James, who played for Trinidad, is umpiring in Trinidad now. This is a nice shot, convincing shot. Lots of power, lots of bottom hand, and down to the boundary for four. So Good shot by Grease. Yes. Just coming on his front foot and hoisting it over mid off. Yeah, let's mid look at the replay. Yeah, convincing shot. He didn't even bother to move. He knew it was going to the boundary. There was no long off. And the long the and, and that's what I don't like to see. Morty pushes back the long off 
immediately after Greaves has hit the boundary, you encourage him to do that again. Yes, I think I um, would have let him go, go at it again. Yeah. Immedi immediately push back the long off. These modern day cricketers are so defensive minded, especially the bowlers and the captains. And maybe that's because West Indies are not winning, and if you draw a match, it's like a win. It, it could be possible, but it, it, it is more in the mindset of the batsman. Probably just getting an inside edge here onto his pad. And by looking at that replay, no inside edge, but maybe the ball going down the leg side. Um, but that replay shows some frustration beginning to creep into the Guyana team. Well, I think the Pomol, Moti, are experienced men, they are West, one, former West Indian player and a present West Indian player. Cricket is a patient game, batting and bowling. Especially spin bowling. Yeah. It's a patient game, and I think you know these guys. They are exper they are experienced. Pomol looks more relaxed in his bowling. Continues to bowl with impeccable accuracy. Pomol, one of the very few left-arm orthodox bowler with a correct action. Nice rhythm runs. He runs to the stumps with. Yeah, and he's been reaping a lot of rewards at the regional level. He's got 18 test wickets also. Honestly, I believe he was given a... Yeah, some a, feel a that he was a bit unlucky. Lucky, yeah. yeah to, to not play more test matches. But he has a clean, nice left arm action. Correct action. To the, when he runs to the wicket... Hands come from a high action. And he has served Guyana cricket well over the over the years. Yeah, very well. One of the senior statesmen in the Guyana side, the young Guyana side. He is the oldest in the side and that's played away over the long off position and uh, over the boundary for six. Striking one of the pool and coming back into the, the field. It's a good shot. Through mid wicket for over mid wicket for six. Yeah, taking on for Mall. So he's come out. CCC and strike rate has started to rise a bit. They have gone to 2.77. Well, soon as Avinash has come out, Greaves has stepped on the accelerator, he's hit a 4, he's hit a 6, he's gone to 22 from 50 balls, for Mario Greaves, 96, 4 away from 100. And that's back and slashed away, out towards the backward point boundary, consecutive boundaries in the over, 6 over mid wicket, and a classical back punch through backward point for four so that brings up the CCC 100 100 for six in the 35th over and takes Greaves at 26 from 51 deliveries and he's got 10 from two yeah <laughs> As rightly said with the six wicket down he has stepped onto the, ex the accelerator for more the sun breaks out in all its glory here in Trinidad well in St. Augustus in Trinidad. I don't know if it's all over Trinidad. The over is coming to an end. At the end of it, 100 for 6. CCC batting first after winning the toss. As we bring our st senior statesman commentator, Mr. Vidya, back to the, f back to the mic. So, Avinash Mahabir Singh, he's on one, and uh, Mario Greaves on 26. He's looking to be more attacking now. Mahabir Singh goes to 
two, as we come back for his third run as he steers it down towards the right third man position. So he's gone now to three. And the partnership is um, getting to a, a, a reasonably useful position. Yeah, hello there, Sean. Hello to everyone. Yeah, it's getting up to 20 now, which in the context of what we've seen so far is actually a pretty good one. Second best uh, so far. Third best, in fact, now. Clouds block the sun again as this is a nice shot there from Mahabir Singh. Have you ever seen him bat in local cricket? Not a huge amount. I've seen him play in a lot of limited overs, uh, the white wall stuff. He's quite good with uh, as, as a bowler. That uh, In those games, of course, you wouldn't get too much of a chance to bat, especially if you're very, very young as he is. Uh, just 23 now. Yes, he's celebrating his birthday. He would love to get a 50 on his birthday. Yeah, take a real big effort here. And uh, he and uh, Graves very much, they have to put on a big partnership here if that is to happen. Get into the offside again, down towards Thorne, who is quick on the field, but not quick enough to prevent a single. I'm very impressed with the running of the last couple of pairs of the CCC batters. Yeah, they're obviously the memo has been sent out at lunchtime that they have to pick up, uh, put some more pressure on the fielding side. And uh, we did see a couple of instances where singles that could have been taken were not done so early in the morning. That has all changed uh, this afternoon. Moti. Forward comes Mahabir Singh. Compact, stylish and correct. Very much so. And uh, TNT 84 for three at lunch in their game, just to bring you up to date with that one. And remember Jamaica, our behind the Eastern Caribbean and Guyana, which is in South America. So another over has been completed here. At the end of the over, it's 106 for the loss of six. 36 overs have been completed, so a lot more overs still left in the day. Yes, certainly it is. And in the other games, Leeward Islands uh, are 114 for four against Windward Islands. That's a winner-take-all uh, sort of match there. Barbados, who will still have a, a chance of winning the title, they are 87 for three against the West Indies Academy. Only 20 overs in that game bowled so far. I imagine there would have been some sort of a stoppage there, perhaps for rain. Yes, that's played in Antigua at the Coolidge Wang or the, yeah, It is at Coolidge, yes, it yeah. is. Yeah, there's been some rain recently there in Antigua. So that's a key game. Barbados would want to think that the West Indies Academy would be an easy game for them, a pushover. But from a cricketing point of view, you never know. Yeah, the West Indies Academy second to last, I believe, in the standings. So, but uh, they can turn it around. The pace back on action here. Swish and a miss. Too close for him to cut and too fast. When he played the shot, the ball was already almost in the keeper's gloves. Savory took it. And Smith starts with a quick ball. You may have seen a little bit of Smith from uh, his time playing local cricket here. But uh, I don't think uh, he's uh, seen too much pace like that. Uh, in some news here, Sean, uh, coming up from around the world, Courtney Walsh has uh, gotten a stint with Zimbabwe. Uh, he's been appointed as a consultant for the Zimbabwe women's team ahead of the World Cup. Zimbabwe's never played in the World Cup, and they're hoping that Walsh, with his experience at West Indies, women's coach, can help them to push them into a first-ever World Cup qualification. Have CWI named a replacement for the women for Walsh? Shane Dietz is uh, with the team in uh, in in uh, Pakistan at the moment, in Karachi to be exact. Who? Shane Dietz, uh, former... Uh, South Australia uh, player, I think he is. Mm. So, this is normal nowadays. Uh, coaches from 
not your part of the world coaching your team evidence of that is with Walsh going to coach a foreign team and Shane Dietz coaching the West Indies team there's also franchise cricket now and this is a franchise tournament but Ghana's gotten every single player and the Ghana team is Guyanese used to be the days when Rifa played for Guyana that's how we made the West Indies <laughs> yes, team that's right <laughs> if he'd stayed in Barbados he wouldn't have probably made the West Indies team started out at this same team that's why I said back in the days before 2014 the CCC was relatively strong had more options uh, then of course it's a little bit different now but uh, hopefully, as you mentioned, uh, with the Five Islands uh, University uh, set up there being opened, that they could provide a couple of players for the CCC. From the Leeward Islands. Um, yeah, from mainly. Leeward Islands. Yeah. And, uh, and really, the franchise cricket has benefited teams like Windward Islands and Leeward Islands, who are traditionally weaker. Now they've gotten in players from some of the bigger teams, and it's been able to help them in no small way. Lots of players playing for different teams that they're not native of, like uh, Ashmi Ned playing for the West Indies Academies. Solazano actually playing for the Windwards. And a lot of players use it as a stepping stone to get back into the territorial teams. Amir Jangu, after he was out of the Trinidad and Tobago team, played for the Leeward Islands for a couple of seasons. I uh, didn't do a, a huge amount uh, there with them. He played well in, in spurts, but he's come back into the Trinidad and Tobago team now. And you can see the benefit of him playing those two seasons with the with Leeward Islands. Smith. And that's a loose shot. No movement of the left foot across. Just stood there and had a swat at it. Gotta stay focused, gotta keep his concentration. Even if he wants to press on, allow Greaves to be the more aggressive batter. At least for now, play the supporting role. And when you get in, analyze the pace, the bounce of the pitch, the condition of the light and everything, then you can go. Cricket is in partnerships. I had my... Um, North Coast, which is second division in Guyana. When I was a young boy, my captain, Mr. Dotson, good afternoon to you in America, Mr. Dotson. He told me that cricket is partnerships. One person plays the piano, the other person carries it. The overs completed, it's 105 for six. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, in concert, you have to be, and that's what they need to do at the moment. In fact, Graves might be reminding. Mahabir is saying about that at the moment. Still very new to his first class career, only half an hour old in terms of his batting career. Nice shot there of the UE Spec uh, Pavilion. That's where the two teams are housed. As you can see, the CCC away to our left, looking pretty relaxed. And uh, there's Mr. Is that Mr. Hercules there in uh, Ghana? No, that's Ghana section. Ned. That's Ned, in fact. Yeah, the assistant coach. Assistant coach Garvin Ned and. Uh, Mr. Hercules, I'm sure, is somewhere in yeah, the background. Hercules is a lot taller than that. Yeah, you can't miss him. And uh, yeah. perfectly named Hercules. <laughs> so the sun is back. And Moti is back. Nice on drive from Greaves. Gets a single. Gives back the strike to the shorter slimmer. Mahabir Singh. Number five on his back. That's the number that Chandra Paul wears. And uh, Shiv with his number five has scored a huge amount of runs. It's a lucky number for him. And another single for Mahabir Singh. He's up to six now. And uh, he is pushing on. Last wicket falling at 82, so the partnership up to 25 at the moment between these two. They'd love to tack on at least 50 runs here. 
Earlier today, the CCC won the toss and they decided to bat first. Last week, uh, they were absolutely pounded by Trinidad and Tobago. A uh, big score over 500 runs here at this venue. But uh, the C Harpy Eagles wanted, it seemed that they, they themselves wanted to bat for, to bowl first. Uh, they felt that they could have controlled the game a lot better if they were to bowl first and uh, try to bat only once in this match. Using the pace of Moti once again to pick up the single. That's one of the key differences between Moti and uh, Virasami for Maul. He's a lot quicker through the air. Moti turns it a little bit less. And, uh, but he's always there. That's, I think that's one of the reasons why Sean that he's been more successful in the limited overs games. Moti continues and that's a good stop again by Torn. And another over is completed. 38 overs finished. 108 for 6. Greaves looking better and better. He's on 29. And will want Mahabir Singh to lend good support. He's on 6. And they would want to build a good partnership. Again, would want to see the box of both of these batters, particularly the Greaves, who is not only beginning to look better, he's now opening up and being more aggressive. Yeah, he certainly is at the moment. And I'm not, I know he, that he attends university, maybe not this one. That's the University of uh, uh, West Indies, St. Augustine campus here in Trinidad. And that's the, the student recreation areas. Uh, it wasn't there when I was there. That was an open space that we used to play football. But uh, it certainly is uh, a lot more. A lot more development in that area. This Canada Hall to the left there. A lot of Jamaicans stay there. A couple of Guyanese also there, Sean. Yes, well, uh, I was telling you um, off air that um, Luke Latif's daughter, um, she's now at the University of Guyana. But she's not staying on campus. And she plays cricket. She gotten into the Demerara on the 19 team. And she's gotten into the senior Demerara team. Yeah, Luke Latif playing for Pole 9 here in uh, Aranguez, uh, Trinidad. Recently got 100. She got 100. And uh, another single there opens the face of the bat. Well, it goes for four, actually. It went through that gap between the keeper and, and uh, the slip. There's no one at third man, and that ran away for four. Yes. Open the face of the bat, as you said. And man boundary. Educated edge, we would call that. Yeah, so he's gone into the 30s now. He's 33. Uh, I want to say educated. Sprung up here. Yeah, it's uh, very, very powerful indeed. Actually, at a uh, previous time, I was here under a tent, and the tent actually was lifted off the ground with us under it. Lucky thing for you guys in Trinidad, there's no hurricane in Trinidad. Thankfully so. Yes, in the Eastern Caribbean, there are hurricanes. I narrowly missed a hurricane on my first on a 19 trip to Jamaica, 1987. When we came back, Hurricane Gilbert oh my. struck. That would have been something, because uh, Gilbert was one of the most destructive hurricanes to ever come through the Caribbean. Yeah. Actually, uh, just a couple of years ago, um, within a, a, a couple of weeks of me being in Orlando, I got myself in the middle of a Category 1 hurricane wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but then I was in a nice sheltered area, so I was pretty lucky for that. I was saying just before that, as an innocent 16-year-old, maybe stupid, that I wanted to see a hurricane. Oh. My friend said, nah, man, you don't want to see a hurricane. <laughs> and when I saw it on the TV, I knew I wouldn't want to see a hurricane. No, I think uh, nobody would want to see that. It, it is... 
one of the most destructive forces of, na of Mother Nature showing her ugly side. When the West Indies won the Champions Trophy in 2004, um, a hurricane struck and I went to Grenada in 2005 and there was the containers, big containers scattered all over the road. When you went with a plane just after the hurricane, you wondered if everybody had swimming pools on their houses. It was covered with blue tarpaulin. The roofs were gone. Yeah, it certainly was a, a shock. I remember that hurricane in particular. I remember working, I was pretty early in my media career here, and a gentleman called me from Grenada uh, to talk about how, and he was crying on the air talking about how uh, the hurricane had destroyed his country, and he was crying uh, to, to for his country and, and uh, what had been done, the destruction that had been wrought by the hurricane. And the West Indies won that tournament and dedicated it to the people of Grenada. Here in the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Smith comes in, bows a short lifting delivery, still generating some pace, N Niall Smith. Strong man. <coughs> yeah, he produced a really good uh, short one earlier today that got rid of Odwin McCatty. Uh, it was uh, caught by uh, the keeper Savory. Uh, one that McCatty just couldn't get out, out of the way of. He was surprised by not only the pace of it, but the fact that he hadn't bowled a short delivery for the day before that and caught him with one. He couldn't get out of the way, hit the gloves, and he was on his way. End up turning his back or his head on the ball took his eyes off the ball and that's a cardinal thing if you're a batsman but it's easier said than done if you were bowling at 150 kilometers per hour it's easy to take your eye off the ball when it's short nice shot glorious shot through the offside and would it have enough legs to take it to the boundary Pomal might just win the battle he does and his left-handed return comes to the bowler's end and backed up in the onside. So a good shot there to end the over. And the total going up to 160 now for the loss of six. As we see the Ghana flag there fluttering away in the breeze. A very strong breeze. But it's gotten less because the trees there, the leaves on those trees were blowing profusely. Um, of minutes ago, so it's got to be less and a nice uh, building there. W what's the name of that building? You seem to know all these buildings. That bu that's a private residence, I believe. Yeah, so it's nicely colored though. So, so this is outside of that's the outside campus. of the UE campus. Yeah, okay. that's the uh, area called Page here in Trinidad. Fisham, who is, travels widely, he knows that very, uh, very well. Our, yeah. our producer today, uh, but yeah, it's I, a private I residence. I thought you were talking about Visham Rang Sewak who works in the um, education ministry, was once a prominent journalist in Guyana. Ah. Good afternoon to you, Visham, if you're listening. So many Vishams around. Well, this one is special, our producer, Visham Lalmant. He's a very special guy. And and he's the second person I've known with the name Lalmant. Lalmant, that's right. Yeah. Nice shot, back in away, and four runs. Bisection of the field to perfection and uh, through the gap and down to the boundary for four. So a good shot there that would do his confidence the world of good. He goes into double figures, Mahabir Singh. It's 13, 120 for six. And this is slowly but surely getting out of Guyana's hand. It is at the moment here, 120 for six. Of course, that we know uh, there's a little frailty built into the CCC lineup here. When the wickets come, they do tend to come in groups. So you could very well see that happen. It happened last week. It could happen again here. But Ghana would want to break this partnership. CCC would love for it to continue. CCC has nothing to lose. But they would still want to end with a draw at least. So they wouldn't lose their six matches. They've already lost six matches. This is their seventh match. Seventh match, and uh, they've lost seven in a row going back to 2014. 
oh my dear, that's a, a in a special shot, reckless, but inside edge found, and it's going into the boundary for four. So that will do the world of good to their score, <laughs> but that wouldn't do the world of good to the batter. It would do the world of good to Moti. He'd want him to play a shot like that again. But four runs anyhow, 124 now for six. Well, it won't be any doing any good to his coach, who might be pulling out what remains of his hair at the moment after seeing that shot. But he was pretty lucky to get that inside edge there. Fortune favors the brave and all that. And picked up a second boundary in the over. Maybe because of the previous shot, he felt that he wanted to attack again. And you get... Field down the leg side, it's going as a bat, as a bowler, as he overcomes to an end 124 for six. As a bowler, you would love to think you're a, an accomplished batsman, and when you play a shot like that, you want to go again. That's right, but he's still very early in his career, he will get over such illusions as his career progresses. Clearly yeah, yeah, heading down the leg side the leg there. Side. A quicker one from Moti. The left arm just whipping through the air a little bit faster. Yeah, probably but couldn't the get arm it right. all coming in instead of spinning away. As the breeze picks up again. Well, Smith's uh, taking some refreshment as he gets back to the top of his mark. And uh, that's very much in order here today. We've, we are under a tent about 50 meters away and it's still blazing hot here. And uh, yourself, Sean, you're a little bit, little bit fairer than I. You look like a little bit of a, 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 a boiled lobster at the moment <laughs> <laughs> with that. I got to try and look in the mirror as soon as I possibly can. <laughs> yeah, you're looking a little redder than normal, Sean. Yeah, it's really We might have hot. to call you reds from now on. <laughs> the breeze picks up as Smith picks up. In and bowls and uh, back of a length. Reds from Guyana. Where's that ever happened before? <laughs> <laughs> well, the original Reds is from Guyana. And lives in the came from the Pomeroon area. Was from 1981, I think, to 1994. He was the director of the sports desk of the OECS, and he was recently. Um, Honored for that achievement. He now lives in the island of St. Lucia with his wife Sandra. That's a nice shot. Confident. Maybe look to hit it squarer. But in the end the ball got slightly big on him and it ended up back past the bowler. But looking to play more shots now, that means he's either more confident or he's a bit irresponsible. Yeah, he is a confident player. I have seen him bat before Romario Graves and he does back himself. He's very, very confident indeed. And uh, that was more like that uh, trademark Tendulkar shot, which he hits almost like a forehand in tennis. But that time, I don't think Graves was aiming for that direction. You're, you're right. I think he was aiming to pull that onto the onside. So he's gone up to 17. Marbury is saying he's on the non striker's end. He watches as Greaves top edges it and he's taken caught. Getting overly ambitious. Wants to repeat that shot. It was a bit quicker, a bit faster, a bit higher. And he top edged it and he's gone. So Greaves is now dismissed for 36. And that's a big break too for Guyana. That's he was now looking ominous, and that's the thing with the, the batters that I've seen, especially the CCC. When you get starts, you don't convert into fifties and hundreds. One twenty-six now for seven. Guyana yeah. back in charge. Yeah, they certainly are. Just three wickets now, and as we saw last week, the three wickets for the CCC went within eighteen balls. Will we see another repeat of that? Uh, uh, today, Ghana supporters uh, will certainly be hoping for that. I mean, we, we have probed in, in uh, during this morning session as the, well, we'll, we will take a break for ourselves. We come back with more with that, Sean, in a few moments as the drinks break, 126.47.
Yeah, welcome back to a sunlit West Indies, University of the West Indies in St. Augustine, Trinidad, where we greet you with the news. If you have just joined us, that CCC won the toss and elected to bat on a day of fluctuating weather conditions, but generally the rain has stayed away. Forecast though for, for rain this weekend. This is the first delivery to the new batter and he's forward and just flirts with it, makes, makes no contact. That's Amari Goodrich. He's in partnership with Avinash Mahabir Singh. Mahabir Singh now is taking over the role of senior batter. He's on 17 on his 23rd birthday in his debut first class match. And uh, Guyana having the CCC at 64 for 5 at lunch, which is, was then 31, Greaves 33, Greaves on 3, Greaves eventually. Oh, that's a lovely delivery, fast, but bobbing and weaving like a box in the middle of a ring, going back. And pulling the head away to evade a straight right. Yeah, he looked like a prime time uh, Floyd Mayweather there in uh, terms of how he got through that. Of course, he's a little bit bigger than Floyd Mayweather. I think if he were to put a hand on Floyd May Mayweather, he'd floor him. Yeah. Uh, Amari Goodridge, uh, who had a really good time with the ball in the first innings uh, of the last game against Trinidad and Tobago, one of those six bowlers to take five wicket hauls in the last round, took five for 92 for the CCC in the last game. Well, only two batters so far for the CCC. Well, three. Mahabir Singh is on 17. I've gotten into double figures. Brooks with 23. Greaves with 36. And he's very batsman-like on that occasion. Going back and uh, playing it with the full face of the bat. His bat looking as broad as the side screen behind him. <laughs> yes, that's right. Of course, with the number of changes to the side screen for the day, that may not be as such a phrase as it would be <laughs> ordinarily <laughs> on 26 for 7. Yes, and it's, it's gotten narrow and narrow. Yeah, it has. And uh, I mentioned five bowlers, uh, six bowlers taking five wicket hauls last week. Cornwall had five for 134. Anderson Phillip uh, had five for 71 here. Pumal himself had 5 for 55 for Ghana in that massive win over Jamaica. Gilson Tyson, a name we don't see much of, he took 5 for 50 for the Windwards, but the best figures belong to Roston Chase for Barbados, 7 for 62. Brilliant stuff from him. And he's already gotten 100 in yeah. this tournament. 100 so in the match also. Yes, in the same match. Yeah, yeah. so that was a brilliant uh, game for Roston Chase. I was telling Sinclair when he got that 165 not out and he got six wickets with his off spin that if he'd made a double century, I asked him, first of all, why Guyana declared without him being able to reach a double century and they had so, many, so much time left. He said that Guyana was looking at dismissing the opposition um, but if he had done that, he would have joined Roger Harper as the only West Indian off spin in regional cricket to score a double century and get six wickets in a match. He did that in 1996 against the Windwards, Roger Harper. Not as a prodigious turn of the ball as Butts, but certainly a very good all rounder, excellent fielder. Brilliant, uh, he was. I mean,. Roger Harper's run out of Graham Gooch. I'm sure you remember that. Mm. That piece of fielding and uh, running out Graham Gooch. Is, it's on YouTube. You can look at it if you haven't seen it. It is one of the best pieces of fielding you'll ever see. Torn from the southern end. Loose shot. No movement of the feet across. Mahabir Singh. Yeah, two former West Indies uh, under-19 players battling here. Thorne, as you mentioned, 2022 and 2024 World Cup. And Mahabir Singh played uh, in a couple of the warm-up games uh, in South Africa, but didn't make it into the final 11. Uh, but he was part of that team, Avinash Mahabir Singh. You spoke about Mayweather a few minutes ago. 
Well, there's a boxing match in Guyana this Saturday at the Everest Ground, Elton Dari, the US-based Guyanese, is fighting Dexter Marks for the gold title. That's one level below the WBC world title. And the winner of that game, that match, would likely get a crack at the WBC title. And um, Ghana's Olympian, Kevin Alicock, he's making his professional debut. All right, that's great. But he's still eyeing going to the next Olympics because the law that, that come out last year is that if you fight less than 10 matches, games, bouts, whatever you call it, um, you're still eligible to go to the Olympics. Yeah, so he still has a chance there. Of course, uh, I think outside of Cuba, Guyana is the only country in the West Indies, in the Caribbean, yeah, to yeah. have English a, a, a yeah. English-speaking yeah, Caribbean, Caribbean, to have a boxing Olympic medal. Yes, in 1980, yeah. but that's Eight. our only medal. That's the only medal. <laughs> 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 and it came from a boxer, yeah. yes. Mike Paris, 1980 in Mexico. Moscow. Yeah, Moscow, Russia, yeah. And that was when there was controversy and the, most of the teams boycotted the 1980 Olympics. Yeah, Guyana was there, of course. There were close links between the countries back then. And uh, Trinidad and Tobago also competed at uh, those Olympic Games. And uh, Michael Paris won bronze. He said that when the place was so cold, that he decided to turn up his AC to the maximum level and work out in his room. And they wanted to know why he wasn't in the gym training and so on. And then he won the medal. He lost in the semifinals. And that was Ghana's only medal since 1980. That's a long, long time ago in any sport. But I tell you, I, I, I really do believe, and uh, as the over comes to an end here, 126 for 7, I do believe that the next medal is not that far off because given the amount of money that has come into Guyana and into sports, uh, we're already seeing Guyana starting to perform well at Carifta. This uh, medal hall at Carifta a yes, couple four, of weeks ago. Four medals. Th th that was the most best ever, yes. gold Guyana ever won. And they won eight medals in all. Yeah. Two silvers and two bronze. And once you start goals. converting those at Carifta level, that's a good starter to go on to, and, to bigger and things. And they won those medals in the sprints, which Jamaica at all levels usually dominate. Tiana Springer won two medals. She won the 400 sprint, and then she won in the mixed 400 by 4x4 four four relay. So back here in Trinidad, which used to be an uh, oil producing country, big oil still producing is, country. Still is. Well, we're, we're no longer the Arabs of the Caribbean. I think that, 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 that mantle is fast to Guyana now. Yeah, which is the fastest growing economy far into the powers that be. Yeah, and that. And the, the money, once it's re uh, channeled properly into sport, once they are the right coaching structures, I really don't think that second uh, Olympic medal for Ghana is that far off. It will come at some point. And it may, come, it may not come in these Olympic Games, but certainly the next one, I think we might see Guyana up there for it. Last year in Bahamas, Guyana finished fifth. This year they finished fourth. So that means they're improving. Bahamas, Jamaica. And that's another no ball. Continuing his no ball problem. Plagued by a, a no ball problem all tournament. Nile Smith. The no ball takes the score to 127 for the loss of seven. Well, it would have been even more frustrating if one of those no balls had turned out to, to get a wicket. That hasn't happened, though. That's yeah, been good. Yeah, he got a wicket in Barbados. I think he got... Uh, Hold, I think, with a no ball. Caught at slip. Mm -hmm. 
Nice tight defensive shot by Goodrich. I saw in the IPL Shamar Joseph who bowled erratically, but that's his debut match and you've got to can't expect him to live up to those high expectations which his fans would want him to do um, but he got a catch dropped off a no ball also right two catches were dropped off him but that one wouldn't make any difference if the catch was taken because it was still a no ball but if the other catch had been taken you never know yeah I think certainly would have been different for him he's hugely popular already yeah. with the fans in the IPL Everywhere. Uh, his, his antics uh, yeah. and his celebration, his enthusiastic celebration in Australia has really caught on. This is a good delivery, almost a lazy shot. Just putting the bat and the ball hitting the bat more than the bat hitting the ball on that occasion. Yeah. And yes. of course, uh, fans here in Trinidad were celebrating Sunil Narayan's maiden IPL 100 yesterday. And Sunil, when he gets off, he gets off in a big way, and that yeah, was a and, magnificent and he, hundred. He made eight to two in a previous match, yeah. but uh, on Facebook, social media, people were calling for his inclusion in the West Indies 2020 team. But my opinion is that he wouldn't want to play ICC cricket because he's afraid that if he's called again, he will be banned from all levels of cricket, including the lucrative IPL. Oh my, that's a quick short ball. And good batting though, pull the head back. Look at this. Yeah, that's uh, kicking off some dust as he gets in there. Really put a lot of effort into that, but that was well played by Goodridge. Yeah. Kept his eyes on it, just pulled the head back and allowed it to go through. Very good cricket all round. That's what you've got to do, keep your eyes on the ball. Narayan announced his uh, retirement last year, a week before the final of the 50-over competition, said he wanted to leave Trinidad and Tobago and regional cricket with a win, and he certainly did that. He performed well in the finals last year. Well, Trinidad and Tobago known for winning white ball tournaments, Super 50, T, um, T20s. But in the last CPL, who won? Guyana. I, I can't remember. It was Guyana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's this year is our last year. We've got it the finals and semi finals for three years. I'm sure the president who loves cricket will try to get it again. I'm sure at some point it will. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago had hosted it for three consecutive years. It's all about attracting the investment. Uh, the CPL estimated that it was over 111 million US dollars came into the Ghana economy as a result of the hosting. And uh, places like Trinidad, which is a multicultural, multiracial society, and Guyana similar, um, attract all kinds of people to the grounds. And those are the two venues that always attract capacity crowds whenever CPL is being played. I know we've got some. Well, I wouldn't say Minos matches in the World Cup. The best match in the World Cup would be New Zealand versus Afghanistan. And of course, like Trinidad, we've got one of the semi-finals with the final being played at Kensington Oval. So that would be the best match. Hopefully, it's including the West Indies team. Yeah, hopefully it will. And uh, I tell you what, uh, uh, I tell you something already, that uh, the Indian fans are pretty much expecting their team to play in the semi-final here in Trinidad. Some of the fans have already started to book hotel rooms in Trinidad in in anticipation of that semi-final. Turn continues again. But remember what happened in 2007. That's right. When all the hotel rooms were left empty because India were not in the final and Pakistan were knocked out when they... Bob Woolmer, the coach, died in Jamaica, the Jamaica Pegasus. Yeah, they lost uh, to Ireland that day. Uh, so that, uh, those things can happen. I remember doing commentary for CMC in the match right here at the Queen's Park Oval when India lost to Bangladesh. 
And um, a girl told me she and her husband, they just married, they came from India, they mortgaged their house. Some of them sold body parts, which is illegal in, Linda, in India, but you could, and live, everywhere else. You could <laughs> live with one kidney, so they sold the kidney to get the money to come and buy the ticket and come to the Caribbean. And I'm sorry for that couple. That's they dedication. lost their house. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, I remember that. I uh, attended all of those games. Uh, India losing to Sri Lanka. Well, the big loss was to Bangladesh. Uh, that was the one they weren't, nobody was expecting. I remember the, the, when they played the Bermudians. Nice shot. Back and slapped it square. Down to the boundary for four. So he's getting better and better all the time. He's gone, gone into the 20s. He's 21, Mahabir Singh, and it's 131 for seven. I remember when Sachin Tendulkar was caught by Liverock, a big oh, fat lift. Robin Utapa, Robin Upa, uh, Utapa was the one who got caught. Yeah, yeah, yeah Robin U Utapa at slip by Liverock. That was a tremendous catch, right at the Queen's Park over in your backyard. Yes, I was there. I was sitting right behind where Liverock was, and that was the most sensational catch in that World Cup. There were some really good bits of feeling, but that was the one everyone remembers. Trees blowing in the wind as... <laughs> Torn is not impressed with that square cut. Retaliates with a short lifting delivery. <laughs> and that's the fast bowler's mentality. Should have seen in the days of Colin Croft. Colin Croft should have a little word with him. Oh, I don't think Colin needed to say anything. Colin's stare alone would scare most people. <laughs> he really was a feisty character, even on commentary. And I really got to say that he was one of the most helpful persons yes. uh, towards me when I yeah, uh, was me also. first when coming I, When up. I made my test, they was a commentator at Boda against South Africa. He gave me a binoculars. He said, when you go to the bigger grounds, you'll need this. And he was so helpful to me. Yes, he gave you that. No, no, I, I, oh. what, it was the advice that was given, yeah, yes. It's yeah. very good advice in He also said, um, he also recommended me to be the BBC Caribbean cricket correspondent because yeah. he was doing it and he had something else to do or something and, and, and he, he allowed me to be the BBC yeah, correspondent. I, I do remember hearing your reports on the BBC as yeah. concise and action-filled at the same time. But in 2012, when they called me when Australia was here, that was the year I had to do my surgery and everything changed. But I'm happy to be back on the air. I, I didn't even think I would have been able to speak when I came out of surgery. And that's my little niece going there, the physio. Uh, physio for the CCC? Yeah, she travels all over with them. I think she's going to university, Kelly Kunja. There she is, uh, heading off the field at the moment. She's had to come on a couple times because Thorne and Smith have been letting go so, of some really fierce bounces today. Yes. Really bowling quick on a slow pot pitch. Not really no devil in the pitch, but they're working up a good head of speed. Yeah, it certainly is. And uh, it's not quite as hot as it was last week here today. So they're taking advantage of this little Goldilocks period, I call it, uh, in between here, where it's not too hot, not too cold, not too warm. Well, I'm sure those bowlers doesn't know that the physio is Guyanese <laughs> because they wouldn't want her to rush onto the field and off the field. She'll be more tired than them. <laughs> But the Guyanese physio, for the Ghana team, she's fit as a fiddle, Miss Holder. She's arguably fitted on some of the Ghana players. I know one, I wouldn't call his name though. <laughs> so the overs completed 131 for 7. Forty-four overs gone and uh, that's what it looks like above here. A lot of uh, cumulus clouds, uh, those big puffy white clouds, and uh, and a few stratified clouds called the stratus ones, stratus clouds, and you can see some dark lining to a couple of those. I would imagine those would be the nimbo stratus clouds. 
and those are the rain bearing ones so that's to the south of the ground you so that's not going to happen same class here. with Colin Croft? I believe so a geography yes we did we <laughs> both did geography and A levels I would imagine but that's heading down towards the south of Trinidad of South Trinidad central to South Trinidad so that's not going to affect the game here is there any cricket played anymore at Garkar Park well, sadly, that uh, ground, that wonderful facility, you've been there many times. Yeah, we actually played there. And did commentary, regional commentary there. Yes, uh, did do, uh, we did do a couple of games there together. And yeah. uh, tell you what, it's been uh, since uh, Petrotrin, the local oil company, was sold, it has been completely overgrown. Wow, that's very sad. This is a swipe. But lucky for him, it found the outside edge and hustled on to the third man boundary, picked up just inside by Pomal. Um, not Pomal, Karts Pomal is bowling. That's Moti. And they get two runs. But that's a fortuitous just shot, a, a swipe. Yeah, it certainly was. There was uh, a lot of agriculture in that. And I'd remind you that Yui actually started as... The School of Tropical Agriculture, by the way. Yeah, the School of Tropical Agriculture, and then it became the University of the West Indies. So perhaps those roots have something to do with it. I hope he's not attending St. Augustine, UWI. Well, certainly not agriculture classes. That's a lovely shot. That's gone. Six over the head of Nile Smith, backpedaling on the long off boundary. But even if he was the height of Jules Garner, that would have certainly been six. Yeah, pulled out a long handle that time. There is a fielder out there, but that was well over his head, and that's gone all the way. So contrasting boundaries, a fortuitous edge, and a lovely lofted six. So Garner's got to be careful. The CCC fans would be happy. Nice shots again by the big man, Goodrich. Looks like a light heavyweight boxer. Yeah, he certainly does. He's, uh, he's, he's pretty big, very tall in fact. And he gives it a good wallop when he swings that bat. But West Indians are known to be like that. Shepard, Russell. And that's another edge. Uh, just past the diving field that slip. Uh, he didn't get close to that. He passed him in a jiffy and they hustled back for two. So Mahabir Singh now has gone into attack mode, joining Goodrich. He's nine, 21 to Mahabir Singh and uh, 140 for seven. Well, the predictions were they might go down for less than 150. That could still happen, but it's 140 for seven. Less likely there. One of the Saman trees that... Uh, punctuate the campus here at uh, St. Augustine and uh, provides a lot of shade. Uh, you see those often in the plantations. I'm sure they are. You see it's also in Guyana. You have those? Yes, there was a lovely saman tree at Everest. That was a landmark, uh, but they've cut it down now with their improvement of the facility and the refurbishing of the, the venue and all of these things. Uh, but the, there's an ammunition bunker which was there for the Second World War that still remains as a um, landmark at Everest just by the seawall. There's uh, Sean's ride home there on your screen at the moment. He's heading back uh, in that plane later on today. I'm not going back today. <laughs> I'm talking about the, the South Trinidad. Oh, yes. Uh, no, I got a chartered flight. <laughs> no, I don't travel with commercial planes. Turn, looking for his second wicket. It's bowled very well so far in tandem with Smith. And of course, the Ghana spinners have uh, made the batters struggle. Well, they heard something there definitely, but it wasn't an edge according to the umpire. But there was definitely a noise. Maybe the, it couldn't be the bat hitting the pad because the, the bat was high in the air, nowhere near the pad. 
So what could it be? It was certainly not an edge, because that ball missed the butt by miles L from the replay. Good decision in the end by the umpire. When the umpire makes a bad decision, we the commentators jump down his throat. But when umpires make a good decision, we say it's expected of him. That's his job. But that was a very good decision there from Rifa. Because when we have the benefit of looking back on the replay, he has one time look. And there's no benefit of the replay in regional cricket. Well, I think the umpire has just given uh, a little bit of a gentle reminder to Isaiah Thorne uh, to, to run off the pitch. He's been showing him that he has been running a little bit too close to the danger area there. So we'll keep an eye on that. Down the leg side, looking to flick. Came off the pad. And the umpire will go up to signal the leg by. So... 143 for the loss of seven. What do you think of the, the IPL rules of allowing two bounces per over? And we don't have that in our first class cricket when we were known to dominate the world with fast bowling. It was an interesting uh, innovation to go back to that uh, the two bounces in the over. That would certainly encourage fast bowlers. So but I think that rule, that, that change, that change in the playing conditions was actually decided maybe before the playing conditions for this one were finalized. So I don't think that uh, that's why it wasn't introduced. But it might be something to think about for next year. Yeah, because it doesn't have to be the IPL. It could have been us doing it first and then IPL following suit. But I would like to see that in our first class cricket, to encourage the fast bowlers. We've got to get quicker pitches also to encourage our fast bowlers because in the golden days, the glory days, the fast bowling was our strength, 143 for seven. In other words, more innovation you'd like to see than simply uh, trump and follow suit as, yeah. as usually happens uh, here. I mean, in the CPL, we have seen the opposite though. We've seen like the CPL introduce the time clock uh, first of all, in uh, the CPL last year, and as you know, uh, Karen Pollard was not very happy with it. He made his views known all the way through the tournament about that. Now the time clock is part of international cricket. I, I don't agree necessarily with that. Of course, in T20 cricket, you've got to... Um, people don't have so much patience and time to stay so long at a match. And you've got to penalize somebody for the shorter the version, yeah. three hours. Um, but I, I don't really agree with that. that that's, that's taking away the real cricket from the cricket. Mm. It, it's making it into something else. Feels more like work, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Pomal, who is working hard for Guyana. And that's a sponge the way. Nice batsman shot again, came back and allowed the ball to come on to him and then punched it out towards long off. And he gets a single. So he is now gone to 10. Brings Mahabir Singh into strike. And Mahabir Singh drives. And the coaches tell you to drive as straight as possible. That almost lost his pardon in the process. If from all had gotten an edge and also denied him four runs. Yeah, it certainly did. Uh, now, Goodrich did. His credit had never moved from the no, from the uh, crease, so he was okay. For a little man, he hits the ball hard. And now beginning to... This is the first time I'm seeing him bat. And this one is caressed. Yeah, he's a good young player. And we've seen him for a couple of years. He's known more for his uh, spinning talents. But showing what he's made up with the bat here today. Maybe inspired by Sunil Narayan. Oh no. That's a atrocious shot. Just hit two lovely straight batted shots and went right across the line on his birthday. And it was Pomal who got the birthday gift. Pitched up and a big swing across the line and uh, plumb in front. So he's gone. 
it's 144 now for eight and Guyana still can dismiss the windwards before 150. Yeah, they still could do that here. So 144 for eight. And uh, that is the end of uh, uh, the innings by Mahabir Singh. And we were just praising him for his batting. And then he does that. Often it happens so uh, in cricket, uh, the curse of the commentator. And he's out for 23. So 144 for eight. Well, Sean, that's the end of my time with you, so I'll be back with you in about half an hour. Welcome back at the University of the West Indies ground. CC just lost their eight wicket at a total of 144 for eight. And as Sean was discussing before the luncheon interval, one under 150 could be on the cards. It's still on the cards. Good afternoon to you again, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> Pumal picking up his third wicket in his 14th over, 3 for 41. Goodrich on 10. Avinash Mahabir Singh, LBW. He's a decent little batsman. But played, a, I think, a, a wrong shot for the delivery. After playing two delightful straight parted shots. Well, he's young. He's on his 23rd birthday. This is his debut. He'll learn, hopefully. But you've got to excuse the inexperienced players, the young players. But you can't go on to come consistently excuse the big players, like Shamar Brooks and so on, for not getting big scores consistently going on when they get starts. I, I'm really disappointed with Shamar Brooks. 144 for 9 as the 47th over is completed. Shamar Brooks is one that I really liked as a young player. And, uh, and uh, he's regressed as he's gotten older and gotten a higher level. Yes, I'm a lot of talent from Shamar Brooks. Same thing like Davin Bravo. But... He went through a patch, then he came back, then he refused to go when he was picked, when he had a good season. And, and he, uh, to me, he is one of the better batters of spin in the entire West Indies right now. That's right. Watching Goodridge here, Goodridge, good, uh, good all rounder, had got five wickets against Trinidad in the first inning. Batted well in the first inning, second inning, he didn't make much, didn't get any much. But talented all round, young all rounder coming up. Ball with some pace last week also. 144 for 8. We're in the 48 over. CCC winning the toss and deciding to bat. This is hooked and hooked well. Out towards the boundary and over the boundary for 6. So he's going to take on the bowlers. Love it. Short delivery down the leg side and Goodry just helping it along for 6. Yeah, nice swivel as he helped the ball, as you said, more than hit it. Used the, the bowler space and got it over long on, arm long leg. Let more defensive field, one slip a gully, a deep cover point, cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket, and a fine leg. Do you agree with this field with eight deep, wickets now? Deep cover point, yeah. Uh, I think should have at least have two slip on a gully. Yes. Yeah. 1-6 and you go defensive and you're looking to bowl out a team that has no chance of winning the title, you have a chance. You've got to bowl out the team as early as possible. You, saving runs doesn't matter. And a long on. Yeah. I haven't seen Goodrich really hit any ball forward or point or backward or point in this inning so far. And he has facing 23 deliveries already. They've got a long leg, a deep, deep backward, backward square. square, a long on. A sweeper on the square cover boundary. One fifty for eight. That's a short lifting delivery. Where's the ball though? Too short. And the umpire signals to him that's one for the over. We were just discussing with Vinod 
Um, your thoughts on introducing the IPL rule of two bounces per over in our cricket. That was our strength uh, back in the days, in our glory of days. Of course, that will help West Indies cricket. It will at least give the fast bowlers some comfort. And it will, it, you will see the metal of batsmen. Because I think after they introduced those laws, West Indies had really defaulted after that. Yeah, because you're a batter and you know that once there's a one short ball, the other balls can be short. It could be short, but it will be illegal. But you know, it's funny when they did it to West Indies cricket. When the other playing nation like Australia and England got good fast bowlers, they wanted to reverse back to it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when West Indies were beaten 6-1 in Australia. 5-1. Yeah, 5-1. They fixed their series. And Lillian Thompson was in rampage. And then Clive Lloyd said never again would he bank on spin. His exact word is I'll be back. Yeah. He found the biggest, strongest, fastest bowlers from around the region, assembled them. And that was the demolition squad. Thompson, Lily, Gary Gilmore, Max Walker. Yeah, that was quite a series. Mm. Roy Federer's 169 input. Yeah, off of 63 balls. That's 100. But he told me that when the bowler bowled a short ball, he just ducked and hit. And when he felt the ball come off the bat, he opened his eyes and the ball was six. <laughs> He said I was space like fire. <laughs> I think Bernard Julian was in that. He said at uh, the time I was speaking to him, he said it was really, they were, he said Thompson was really, really quick. Yeah, Alvin Kalitran, I think, broke his nose. Lawrence Rowe. Richards, um, Greenwich batted with four, I think, three different openers. Richards Juli was one. Julian got his hand fractured. Derek yeah. Murray got his hand la uh, d damaged. 151 for eight. Smith 10 overs, 3 for 31, Isaiah 1 for 24, so good opening burst and good comeback spells from the fast I bowlers. I think this is what was with, with Thorne and Smith, when they came back for this after lunch with this spell, they are still generating some pace on this wicket. Yes, and this is not a fast wicket by no means. There's not no fast wickets, any fast wickets in the Caribbean these days. And, and that's another problem affecting not only the bowlers, the batters. Because if you don't get short balls, how would you learn to cut and hook? I would have liked to see Kevin St. Clair come back, come back and bowl a few after his first two overs. I haven't seen him back on the ball. Well, I wrote in my preview for the Ghana Chronicle today that he was a bit on the ball in this tournament. But his batting has overtaken his bowling now. He started as a bowling all-rounder and I would consider him now as a batting all-rounder. I think he has over 400 runs in the tournament so far. Yeah, the, the, the third highest run scorer. I think he was before Django, he was leading, had the highest score of 165. Yeah, and now um, Django got 212. 216. Braffitt, yeah, 216. Braffitt got 189. So he's the third with that 165. He's also the third leading run scorer behind uh, Milius Mikhail Louis and uh, Braffitt. As you talk about Louis. The Wadal is making a, a good comeback over the last score was 143 for four. Mm. So they are making a good comeback. The Leewards? Yeah. After losing three early wickets. That's a reverse sweep. You don't see these types of shots in four day cricket, but that's well played down to the boundary for four. So improvising on that occasion, doesn't matter, it's a boundary. Last week, uh, Amir Jango improvised and hit two six with a reverse six into the hockey court, uh, hockey ground. So that takes the score now to 156 for 8. 6 past my prediction. We're and in the 49th over. Yeah. Hoyt on 4 from 4. Goodridge on 18 from 28. Pomolin is 15th over, 3 for 46.
Oh my dear, that's a beautiful delivery. Bounced and turned. Remember you watch Pomol and completely bamboozled them. <laughs> Yannick Otley and Pomol. Perfect left arm orthodox action. Pomol with a slip forward short leg. Short cover, mid off, mid on. Cover, backward square. Brings it to the end of the over. 156 for 8 after 49 overs. Yeah, excellent over from Pomol, who's played 9 test matches and gotten 31 wickets in those 9 test matches. Should have played a bit more. That's not to a my bad, mind. That's not a bad um, uh, to have. I really thought he, he should have played some more test cricket, for international cricket for West Indies. And when you're a spinner, you want a long run. You, you don't want to play a match play another match three years after or two matches after. Mahindra Nagamutu played five test matches in five different continents. He's bowling. But it's a no ball. Oh my dear. Now the bug has been passed to turn. He's now been infected with the no ball bug. And he kicks the dirt, annoyed with himself. Look like a, a yorker coming off the pad onto the stump. Well, all he has to do is try and replicate that same ball. The next delivery balls. Hope the Boston play the same shot. Yes, or bowl a short ball and then bowl the yorker. Mm -hmm. So you push him back and then you bowl full. Oh dear, he tries it, but it's wide of the mark. A good take there by Savory down the leg side. Slip a gully, sh cover, short cover, cover point, mid off, deep mid on, and a deep backward square and a fine leg. With the score at 156 for 8. Yeah, too defensive. Savory has been keeping very well throughout this tournament. That deep cover point there would have bring him into second slip. And you don't need a long on. Especially if you bowl like that. How would the ball go to long on? Total remain on 156 for 8. After we in the 50th over. Turn 1 for 24 in his tent. Goodrich is on 18 from 31 and Hoyt on 4 from 6. CCC won the toss and update to bat. So as we look out for the T20 ICC World Cup from June 1 to 29, that's a lovely shot through extra cover and down to the boundary for four. Lovely shot from Goodridge, just coming on the front, now stroking through extra cover for four. So he's gone now into the 20s, he's 22 and the partnership is progressing, the score is now gone to 160. Hoyt is at the non-striker's end. He's on six. And this is a, 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 a mini recovery. We've seen some mini partnerships so far. The first one for the three between Brooks and Richards. I think... Oh, oh dear. Threw his wicket away. And Short yes, and wide. He's at the straight down to deep cover point and he's caught. Yeah. The only man there on the offside and look at what he did short and, and hit it straight to the fielder i was now going to say every time ccc looks to set a partnership they lose a wicket yeah and that has happened since shamara books wicket so it's 160 for nine that gives Tony his second wicket two for 28 after bowling him with a no ball two deliveries later has him caught Goodrich goes for 22 from 32 deliveries. And I think the last wicket is Blades coming in. Yeah, 
As the new batsman is Jair Blades, who will take up his position at the striker's end. 160 for 8. We're in the 50 at over. As Sean said it, Goodridge just picked out the only man outside of the circle and hit it straight to him. Turn 2 for 28 in his tent. And there we see a bird just flying away over there. A hawk over the CCC. Probably looking for a small meal. CCC won the toss and decided to bat. They are 160 for 9. Blaze is the last wicket to the crease, number 18. A strike rate of 3.22. And I think Guyana will be satisfied with their performance in, within an hour after lunch. We are, we are in the second hour after lunch. Nine wicket has fell. from the Sports and Physical Education Center. Two for 28. And Jediah Blaze plays this to mid-wicket. And they will pick up two runs. Blaze off the mark with his first delivery. 162 for 9. 162 for 9 after 50. Jaya, Blaze pulling this one forward a square for four. Short. Blaze getting on top of it and pulling it forward a square. The backward square had no chance running around. One sixty-six for nine. Blaze goes to six. Good race is on so, le, out on eighteen from twenty-nine. Hoyt is on four from six. to pick it up from the northern end. 163 for 9. After 50 overs, 167 for 9. Slight look weather pattern change. Breeze starting to blow. If you look up on the eastern side, they're pretty, not dark, but slightly. You see Smith from the northern end to Hoyt.
Again down the left side. Certainly um, giving K Savory a lot of work to do. As I said, he's kept very well throughout this tournament. Keeping only because of the captain Imlak had a finger injury. Imlak, the number two keeper when they went to Australia. But he's given up the gloves because of that injury. Every time he catches the ball, reverse cup, it hits its index fingers, right index finger, which is presently taped up. So he's not yet fully recovered from that. Smith bowling to the left hander. And Hoyt slashes it off the outer part of the bat down to the boundary for four. Smith so going over the wicket to the left hander, Hoyt. Going edging this one just in the correct speed between the slip and second slip and gully for four. Yeah, but the runs are coming. Gano the one to end this as soon as possible. Four to Hoyt. Six to Blades. 167. 171 now for nine. Just playing it down to short mid wicket. Total remain 171 for 9. We need 51st, 51st over. Yeah, he's got 3 for 3 5 so far. He's in his 11th over Nile Smith. But from all the stake in his wicket tally in this tournament now to 27. He started with 24. He's got 33. Five wicket hauls and ten. Seven wicket hauls for Sami Pomal. Loud appeal, more enthusiasm than anything else. One more heading down the leg side. All the players went up. One seventy one for nine. One delivery left in the fifty first over. Is Smith in his eleventh over three for thirty five. Hoyt eight. Blazes on six after two. So you will think this is a decent performance by Guyana to have them at one seventy one for nine? Yes, but they should have um been a bit more aggressive even when the eight wicket was down the put the men on the boundary but it's sure in the end that the the fielder on the boundary took the catch but that was more a bad shot than a good delivery from turn because there was one fielder there and he found the fielder 171 for nine i think that was the only ball went in the air to that fieldsman yeah so the, at the end of 51 overs the total is 171 for nine Blaze on 6 from 2, Hoyt from 8 from 12, Torn will pick it up from the Sports and Physical Education Center. Here. Blaze changed his bat, uh, apparently they, they, they just called for the runs bat. So what's that tree? It looks like it's in autumn. In, in North America. I think last week was four days of scorching heat here. Mm -hmm. It was really, really hot. Today, the first day of this game, the weather is a bit cooler. A lot of greenery around yeah. this campus. Lots of trees. That's the tree I was talking about. A lot of green leaves on the trees now turn and that's a you know special shot looking to jump and pull at the same time and maybe cut <laughs> so you expect that from a 
Number 11 batter. Blades on 6. Hoyt on 8. Isaiah Turn. 2 for 35 and it's 11 over. A duck and a pull. So he's, tri he's been hit on the helmet. And the CCC physio runs out again for the third time of this inning. So there is young Kelly Kunja making her way on the field again with a bag almost as big as her. <laughs> <laughs> and Blaze signaling for another helmet. Probably is cracked. Yes, he's got to go through the concussion process. What day it is. What's your mother's name? Your telephone number. <laughs> Who will bowl the ball? He'll, he'll answer that question immediately. Isaiah Torn. <laughs> 171 for 9. We're in the 52nd over of the day, end of the inning. Blaze on 6 from 4, Hoyt 8 from 12. So there's a stoppage as a physio. Make sure everything is right with blades. The helmet has been replaced. This is a good time to tell you that uh, Erlin made two, Makati made four, Henry made one, Shamar Brooks was looking good until he was bowled by Pomal for 20 and that was 53 for four after the first wicket fell at one, the second at two and the third at nine, he and Richards who was leg before to Moti for 43, the top scorer added 43 for the their partnership. Otley Otley was made one. Greaves was looking good. Otley made one. And Greaves made thirty six. Mahabir Singh twenty three. And Goodridge twenty two. So good starts, good contributions down the order, but not enough. Not a fifty. Not even a hundred. They've got to convert more if they want to make a meaningful impact against the opposition. This is what I was saying earlier. Every time the, the partnership looks to get set, CC lose a wicket. And they lose a batter who is dominating. Trinidad, uh, Trinidad is 144 for 4 at Sabina Park against Jamaica. And they've got an extra hour to go. Amir Jangu's on tit, unbeaten on Tete. Continue his good form. Yeah, on the back of a double century in the last mm. match. Turn as the sun back in all its glory. And that's a little uh, down the leg side. Nice shot in the end, which you would have liked to play. It looked good, but he missed the ball. That's yeah. the only bad thing about that shot. That was almost a Gordon Greenwich flick yeah. off the hip. Todd General is on pace here with this session after lunch still. Looking hostile. And this is what you want to see with your fast bowlers when they come back for a second spell or a third spell in the day. The, the speed is just about closer when they started with the new ball. So a young guy and a team, as I said, for more at 34. The oldest in the side, and he's maybe as a left arm spinner got another four, five years at this level. Played out into the offside, down to the sweeper position. And why would you have, why would you have that man there now? I don't believe he will play a shot like Goodrich played. Bring in the field, attack. Don't give away singles. And they are leaving him right there for, no, for I was not about to say they're leaving him for the left hander, but yes, they are leaving him there for the left hander, Hoyt. So 
So Guyana with nine wickets down. Don't seem to, to have the intensity as one would expect when you've got a team nine wickets down. You've got to hustle around the field. You've got to be on your toes. Good stop at forward short leg. Who would you say is the best forward short leg fielder in the West Indies? Yes, that's let Yeah, that's a good stop at forward short leg. Gus Logie, forward backers, Clayton Lambert. Those are names that come to mind. I think when I played for Trinidad, Clayton Lambert was forward short leg. He was exceptional. Forward backers? Uh, Lambert. No, I'm, I'm bringing in the next person. No, I didn't play against Bacchus. I didn't so much of him. Gus Logie, uh, Gus Logie was good at short leg. In those days, had no helmet and Lambert was right up on you. But Gus Logie have took some excellent catches for West Indies at forward short leg. I think just last week I was watching a game in Australia in his time. They were showing it back. Uh, Steve Wolf. Flick a ball and go through, catch, catch it at four short leg. Well, look, the wind has picked up again, evidenced by the leaves on that coconut tree. So it's been a day of high wind. Yes, especially off Lance Gibbs. Lance Gibbs get a, got a lot of his wickets. Bowl Gibbs caught Subers at backward short leg so we smith from the from the northern end picking up oh he's going over the wicket to height height on nine from 14 173 for nine looking smith three for 35 in his 12th over looking to finish off the innings with his fourth wicket keen another quick one outside the awesome quite plain and missing going through to the keeper gotten 18 wickets so far in this tournament young man from New Amsterdam plays for Tuckborg Park the club I played with in Borbies when it was Bormine that's the club that Lambert played for Clayton Lambert Kevin Darlington Nice shot again, just steered away, down towards backward point. And it will go close to the boundary, Torn pulls it back, sends the return. And the batsmen go through for two easy runs. Well, I see now for Smith, they have three slip on a gully, a cover point, short, ex short extra cover. Fo forward short leg, mid on, and a fine leg. Yeah, so it's a little more attacking. That's, uh, that's the attacking feel I was talking about. You got to out the, the last batter. You can't defend runs or restrict him from scoring runs. It's the last pair of the wicket. I've seen instances where the number 11 and number 10 is batting. And they give the number 10 a single to bowl at the number 11. That's nonsense. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I'm not joking, you know. That's, I see that. I saw that. <laughs> so last week in Trinidad, Trinidad CCC game, Amir Django on 164 on the center and I want Watchman to shield him. Well, that's maybe because they didn't want him to face too many balls at the end. The night watchman's job is to face all the balls. Yeah. If he's out, he's out. A stare again through the vacant space between the 
second and slip on the gully and down to the boundary for four. Yeah, let's look at the replay. An involuntary shot, almost as if the ball hit the bat there, as he looked to just push the bat at it, but it connected and they got four runs. Looked to leave alone and the ball came back, hit the outer half of the bat and went between the space where there was, now they're going to put Chandra Paul into that space. So they've got now three slips, almost three slips in a space and a fourth slip. That's not really a gully. And this is a nice shot off the back foot down towards the cover position and they put pressure on the arm of the field and come back for two. So it's now getting away from Gan in terms of the intensity. That should have been a single first of all and it, they came back for two. And uh, total going up now to 182 for nine. Both batters in, t in double figure scores, 13 to Blades, 12 to Hoyt. It'll be interesting to see what's the partnership between these, the last pair. I'm sure it's above 20. Oh dear, that's hit in the air and falling safely. And they look for a second, but they abort the idea as soon as it was conceptualized. And they get settled for one. So a productive over for CCC. It's 183 for nine. Yes, yeah, CCC make it. Putting up a battle with his last wicket here. Blaze on 14 from nine. Hoyt for 12 from 17. So 183 for nine. An another little part, another small partnership taking place here for the 10th wicket. The CCC, I mean, the strike rate has improved a bit to 3.45. Back in the days of West Indies dominance, when you get seven wickets down for whatever score, it's all out for the same score. West Indies fast bowlers. Roberts holding Croft Garn and then Marshall would blow the tail enders away. Sylvester Clark. Yes, all of those bowlers you called. Torn picking up from the Sports and Physical Education Centre in again. Well, of course, in those days, the tail enders were real rapids with the bat. Nowadays, the tail enders can bat a bit, but yeah. they shouldn't be able to put together meaningful partnerships, the last pair. Torn in his 12th over of, the, of this inning. Again, I would hope that they can dismiss the CCC before T. Oh, that's a good shot. Brilliant shot down the ground. And he pauses for the camera. Not realizing the ball was gone to the boundary. He had a thought that it was going to the boundary and then the fielder ran behind it and he started to run. I would not have run. I would stand up and pose for the camera. That's a great shot. But it runs into the boundary. Just coming in from front, hitting it mid-off. Lovely shot from Blades. 187 for nine. That's a sharp shot from Blades. 18 years now. 12 to Hoyt. Torn. And that's clipped off the pads. Nice shot. Down towards forward square. I think that's as soon as he changed his bat, Blades started to accelerate with his new bat. So that's the end of another over. Two spectators now in the stand. There was one all along where the Ghana flag is situated. I'm still wondering if those that man there with the umbrella brought his own flag to support Guyana or if that's the Guyana team flag. 
not too sure. I, I don't see any flags or I missed it. The, the, the CCC has a flag? No, no, no CCC flag around the ground. So probably it's a supporter who came to see cricket. Yeah. Back in the days when cricket was played anywhere. Oh, lovely shot. Almost like a Lara. Honest back foot pivoting and pulling it all along the ground. Looking like an opening batsman. Good shot by Hoy there. And the partnership growing all the time. 190 now for 9, 14 to Hoyt. Blades, as I said, looking very sharp. He's on 19. This player looking to take CC into the to 200 mark. Yeah. Oh dear, again, that's lovely paid. Oh, good stop there at cover. But good shot though. These two yeah. batters should be batting high in the order. The wicket flattened out a bit and is lovely for batting. Three slipper gully, cover point. It's going to be interesting. So Extra cover, yeah. fine leg, mid wicket. It's, it's going to be interesting to see the approach when Ghana starts the battle of Tej Narayan Chandrapur on this type of wicket, on this ground which is very fast. Top Easy coming on single the again. Coming on the front and playing it very easily to cover for a single. So the partnership now is started from 26 balls, more than a runner ball. Could well be, if not, if the, could be the second highest partnership in this match. Yeah, the Richards and Brooks put on 43. Then Graves and Mahabir Singh. Mahabir Singh. I did think in the forties. So hundred and ninety one now with Tartarons being put on for the last wicket. Hoyt on fifteen, blades on nineteen. Pomal will pick up the attack and reverse swept out towards the backward point position. They get a single. So 192. 19 is blades. Pomal, as I said, took 31 wickets in his nine test matches. And he's got 634 uh, in his first class career. Played a lot of first class cricket, 254. Remember when he made his debut? in 2007 when he replaced Magarel in the Guyana team and then Bishu replaced Nagamutu Nagamutu and Magarel bowled in tandem for a long time and then it was Bishu and Pomal and now it's still Pomal Blaze goes to 22 from 13 deliveries. 195 of 9 in the 54th over. So Pull out from the northern end. Flighted delivery and hit between the two fielders. Good stop there by the fielder. Looks like Perez. Perez is a live wire in the field. Mm. 
good partner for Pomol because he's usually a free flowing batter at the top of the order. Ghana needs to get quick runs because the cutoff for batting points is 110 overs. So even if you make a thousand after the 110 overs, you wouldn't get a point. And and in the in this tournament, it's the lower order Sinclair, Savory, Moti, Pomal who's been making the runs. And when the top order like Imlak, uh, um, Anderson, Chandra Paul make big scores, they take long to make it. So it's past the 110 overs if they make 100. And Ghana needs those points, need the Ghana, maximum if points. If you if get Ghana, five. If Ghana has to take a threat to this title, they need all the maximum points in this game. Yeah, you need five batting points. And you need to get that before 110 overs. I think you start from 200, 250, 300, 350. I think Guyana will have to be targeting if not 400, 450 in this game. Yeah. The dismiss CCC before TO anyway now. They will have a lot of batting to do. A lot of time to bat. We are still on the opening day. The, so the three games that played here, each team scored 100, three over 300 on the, on the opening day. So this is a, a a good score in in relative terms for the CCC, and that's gone for four more. So the partnership now continue to grow. Maybe uh, that close brings to up the two hundred. Yeah, brings up the two hundred. And the run rate has gone up now to 3.16. 3.61. Yeah, healthy scoring rate now yeah, from, from it before it lunch. Yeah, it was just about two. And this is the last wicket for CCC. And again, batters getting into the 20s. We've seen Brooks. We've seen... Mabir Singh, we've seen Goodrich, all getting into 20s, of course, Richards made 43 and Greaves made 36. Oh my dear, a wild swipe on a miss and he's bowled. So it's all over for the CCC, but they've gotten exactly 100, so Guyana will need now 201 to clear off this total and then put runs on the board. Um, Ghana would be the more disappointed of the two, even though the total 200 is a small total because the time they took to make those runs and the amount of runs, and that's T. So a T on the third day. So Ghana's of, as eventually achieve their objective of dismissing the harp eagles before tea and this is at tea so they trail now by 200 runs they've got to make 200 runs just to make the ccc bat again and they have to think of the time with the weather and everything and they have to do that fast and they have to get maximum five batting points and hope that the other matches end in draw so that this is t on the third day the ccc bowled out for 200 runs at t i'm sean devers on behalf of the entire commentary team saying bye for now
Welcome back to the Suprank Warrell Memorial Cricket Field here in uh, UE, Trinidad and Tobago. I'm Vidya Ramphal alongside Dear Narayan Dial. And uh, the news is that uh, the Guyana Half Eagles are back in to bat. Uh, they are faced with a total of 200. The CCC getting to 200 or 55.5 overs. Uh, three wickets for Smith, three for Pomol. And while Guyana fans may be happy with this performance, I suspect, Dear Narayan, that many fans will not be happy with the fact that they've allowed the CCC in many ways uh, to get in a few partnerships that should have been snuffed out early. Yeah, I think, um, but even though when they, when they got going, you know, they, they lose a wicket, they, within very, um, any partnership looked good. CCC did well to reach 200, I think, from three wickets for nine runs. And I think it left for Guyana now to see how quickly they can score. Sean rightly said it, they, after 110 overs, you have no button points. So they are to require they will require to score get all their button points when they within the 110 overs. And the two opening batters are for Ghana, Tejarain Chandapal. Many have been familiar with him over the years, the son of uh, the West Indies legend Shiv Narayan Chandapal, and Raymond Perez, newcomer to Ghana team. Uh, Jediah Blades is going to be opening the bowling here for the CCC. And uh, that's going to be the three men who will be in focus here as uh, Guyana trying to get maximum five batting points. And as Dana Ryan just have alluded to, they have to get batting points for scoring 200, 250, 300, 300, and 350. But the restriction is they must get it before that 110 over mark. Here's the first ball. It's Blades on his way. Too far down the leg side uh, to, uh, for Chandapal. Chandapal needs some runs, doesn't he? 269 runs coming into this match. I think they will, what they'll need from him to sc the score quickly. Because Guyana hope of winning the cycle and hoping that um, game draw. Barbados has been dismissed on around 55 by the West Indies Academy. So that's good news for Guyana. So I think they will need Chandapal to get to be striking quickly. Yeah, they certainly will. Here's Blades again. Yeah, and that's been a problem for Chanderpaul in this particular series. Now, throughout his career, his strike rate is not going to excite a lot of people. But uh, in this uh, particular tournament, he's batted 10 times in the six games before. He only has 269 runs, averaging just a shade under 30. Now, he's faced a lot of deliveries, 200, 832 deliveries, and his strike rate is just under 32. So that does not tell you that he's going to raise a lot of pulses, but he's very effective. He blunts the attack well. And, yeah, and yes, and uh, one of those innings, he got 101. So in the other nine innings, he's gotten 168 runs. So that tells you how much he struggled here. The coach and the captain should have, must have a few words with him before he came out of bat. So let him know that, you know, this is what we need by the end of the day's play. Setting targets, that is. Yeah. And that's uh, the situation with Chanderpaul. As for his batting partner, the former cyclist uh, Perez, who is out there, Raymond Perez, he has also struggled for runs, just 81 runs, averaging 13.5. His strike rate is not an exciting one also, 34.03, even though I understand from Sean's been telling us that he plays a lot of shots. So he has to get going. So that's the problem for Guyana here. If that is his strike rate and his amount of runs, I want to ask Sean if he's playing all the shots in the dressing room. <laughs> Chandapal getting well behind the line of it. And the footwork in already, you can see that initial movement uh, towards the off stump, getting nicely in behind the line. And it looks like he already has the, the reading of things out there, Tate Chandapal. Blaze with three slip on a gully. Cover point, cover, mid off, mid wicket, and a fine leg. And he has started on target. Making Chandra Paul play three deliveries already out of this four deliveries, five deliveries. 
Gets in nicely behind that one again. Everything coming off the middle of the bat in that first day over from uh, Blades to Chanderpaul. And now we'll see for the first time Raymond Perez uh, bat here at uh, UE Spec. And uh, what's he going to produce here for us today? Well, just to look back at that CCC innings, uh, Dave Narine, uh, 200 all out, dominated by 43 by Richards. Richards getting 43, 36 from Graves. But a lot of unfulfilled uh, starts for the CCC. As I said, you know, the, 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 after the fall of the third wicket, they got some small partnership, and every time they look set, they lose a wicket. And this, they didn't carry on. The, the wicket had no devil in it. Um, I think it's a perfect batting strip. It's still right now. Uh, in fact, you had a walk out there just now, and you were mentioning to us that it's not a mark on the pitch at all. Yeah. Still looking like a first day play, first hour play. And just to update you on some of the scores around, the Jamaica Scorpions and TNT, uh, the Red Force, 179 for 5 versus the Scorpions. Barbados Pride, surprisingly, bowled out for 153. The pressure perhaps getting to Barbados, West Indies Academy, 14 for 1. Leeward Islands have recovered to 215, 217 for 5. And that's uh, Goodridge at the other uh, other end. Uh, five wicket haul for him in the last match. Leeward Islands, 217 for five. And of course here, uh, Guyana Harpy Eagles yet to get off the mark. Combined campuses and the colleges, 200 of 55.5 overs. Goodridge had a good spell against Renan Tobago in the first inning. Picked up five wickets. Got two, the two early break through. And then the first ball after lunch he had Yannick Otley caught. Keon Hotley caught mid-wicket. First ball after lunch. Solidly in behind again. And that was a match unique in, in many respects because you had brothers playing on opposite teams. Uh, the Otley brothers. And they're, they're unique brothers in, in many ways because Keon uh, is left-handed, but he bowls off-spin. And medium then his piece, brother... Medium pace. Uh, medium pace. He does bowl a little spin every now mm. and again, but he's right-armed. His brother uh, bats right-handed, and he bowls left arm orthodox. So they're very unusual. They complement each other in so many ways. Since under 15, following these boys, you know, together from under 15, 17, and 19, Yannick Otley has been captain in Central from under 15, and I believe under 13 too, if I remember me serves me well. So there's been a long while together playing at the Central Zone cricket together. Yeah, I believe their father actually built a, a cricket pitch in the backyard for them to improve on their cricket. Well, one of the Otleys is here. That's Yannick Otley. Uh, he didn't do much uh, in this game. Good delivery to start off there. I know his father was the, 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 the trainer for Central on a 19 team when, when, they, when they were playing. Uh, the boys have done well. Uh, Yannick, uh, at one time, was the captain of Trinidad and Tobago. Now uh, more focused on his studies. Of course, he's playing for the CCC and has been a good addition. Missed out on 100 a couple weeks ago. Uh, named after the famous tennis player, Yannick Noah. I'm sure you remember that yeah. name. Uh, the former French Open champion of the 1980s. He and Otley representing West Indies in the 50 overs. Flicks that away. That could go to the boundary. It does. First boundary of the innings and the first runs of the innings just flicked away by Perez. And he picks up one. There was a fine leg in place, but he wasn't fine enough to pick that up. There's how it happened. Yeah, just turn, flicking it off the path. Fine. The fine leg. Couldn't run around and pick it up. A run ball runs into the boundary. That takes Perez off to his mark. He's on four. And the, the Guyana total four without loss. The inning uh, gets running. Well, if you only look at the reactions of the fielders there, you would feel that Perez played the worst shot in the world. But that was a pretty good shot. He played it away for four. But then again, fielding signs have been known to exaggerate slightly. Of course. I think even though he had missed it, because it was pitch more lined up le leg stump. Oh, etched it and short of second slip. And we talked about... Uh, the Otley's, that one was just short of second slip. And Otley is left wringing his fingers. That would not have, that didn't carry at all. Just short, but well stopped by Otley. Yes, dropping in front of him. 
With a new ball, it's always difficult when the ball drops in front of you. Got body behind it and stopped it. That brings the end of the second over of the day of the Guyana inning. It's four without loss after two overs. Chandra Paul yet to get off his mark after six deliveries. And Perez, four from six. I think Guyana will definitely have to be, will be targeting at least 100 runs this evening, if not 115. Yeah, they still have 30-plus uh, overs still to go here. So they still have 30-plus overs to go, so that's going to be a task for them. CCC scored at just over three and over all the way through their innings, so it, it is possible to get that 100 in before the overs are completed. And also, because Pumal and uh, his spin twin, Moti, bowled so quickly and bowled so many overs, we could possibly get in the, 50, the 90 overs before the, the 5 o'clock mark reaches. Yeah. Well, I think this, they, they need 33 overs to be bowled before 5 o'clock. Yeah, that could definitely happen. Too far across to interest Chanderpaul. And they see that the keeper actually took that in front of first slip. But a huge grunt there from Jediah Blades as he pitched that in, almost like an Otis Gibson who was known to utter a few grunts. Uh, many fans before the invention of the stump mic were not aware that players actually grunted a lot. But with the improvement in, in mic, uh, mic microphone technology, the miniaturization of it, we hear more and more of what goes on on the field. Yeah. A lot of other, uh, other languages picked up too. Good delivery. Chanderpaul playing inside the line and uh, some untowards and sometimes industrial language does come across. That's why they have the, the dump button as it's called uh, to kind of drop whatever is recorded. And uh, producers have been known also that when a, a decision goes against a fielding team, they turn it off. They turn it off, off the stump mic for a couple of overs until the team settled down. Blaze had a good spell against Trinidad and Tobago last week. He and Goodrich had a good opening spell. They had Trinidad on their back foot for the first hour. Yeah, and uh, his uh, grunt is audible all over the ground. He started well in that game, and as did Goodrich. TNT. Uh, we, when you look at the end to what Trinidad and Tobago produced, 590 plus, and you looked at how the game started for the CCC, you would have never thought that would have happened. But that 264 run partnership for the fourth wicket uh, between Mohammed and uh, Jangu, that changed the complexion of and that it, match. It was scored very quickly too, eh? Yeah, yeah I, think it, um, I was a bit surprised a bit, um, a bit Brooks, you know, he, at no time he looked to defend when runs were scoring. He just remain kept the same feel. That's something I'm sure he will look at. Chanderpaul gets off the mark, pushes one into the mid-wicket area, and picks up one. So and no ball. Here's a no ball, so another run to the score. Help uh, two runs to the Guyana cause. And I'm sure that Brooks will reflect on that in this game because he's in a similar situation here with... Uh, a team that wants to get after his uh, bowlers and uh, rattle up a big score. Well, Guyana will, de he, he, Guyana will definitely be going for over 400 runs in this game. And they, are, they, they must score it, score it within the 110 overs. So, it's not really about time again with this bonus point. It's just about the, the limit of number of overs. You know, we, we've talked a bit about why the CCC are at the bottom of the table. And we talked about... Uh, unconverted starts, uh, many batsmen, six of them facing over 500 balls at least for the tournament, but only 100 to show for it. That's one of the reasons why they haven't progressed well. Not a good delivery. Now, when you look at the bowling side to it, there's another reason why they haven't uh, done a huge amount. Their top bowler has been Romario Graves, 17 wickets, but his average is 42.64. After that, you have Goodridge with seven wickets, and he took five in the last game. After that, you have Edmund with three, uh, Hackett with two. And that's one of the reasons why the backup bowlers haven't done a huge amount for no, them. And the Lex Miller, Motara. Motara is the one, and uh, that's the one I'm missing at the moment. Yeah, he got seven earlier. Yeah. 
Place that down into the pad. They won't get a run here. Apparently, so. that, I think CCC like they, have, they didn't play him in this game. Yeah, a couple of changes here for this one. And the over comes to an end. Uh, five without loss after three overs. So at some point here, Perez and Chanderpaul will get a bit more comfortable with the bowling, with the surface, with the bowlers who are coming at them. Might see a flurry of runs come. At least that's what the Ghana who supporters are hoping for. Well, they must. They, the Ghana will, will know what they have to, what is required with them. And this is the coaches will, will um, let them know what you know what is required for this game for this inning. And uh, they're moving the side screen just uh, in front of us uh, right now. It's uh, young Apinash Mahapir Singh, the birthday boy, is just in front of us. And uh, got a nice looking 23 earlier today. A fairly little decent batsman, good off spinner. A good chance for him to get a foot in into the foot. Just as uh, Tejarai Chanderpaul is. Chanderpaul getting nicely in line again. And a Shiv, just like his son Tej, they both wear five. Mahabir Singh also wearing five here today. On debut. Sure you remember your debut, don't you? Yeah. David Ryan? I think April, you, you April, shared a couple of stories. What, what, what year was that? April 1987. It was again Guyana. Got 63 in the first inning and 27 in the second inning. Very good start indeed. That Roger Harper, Clyde Boss, Carl Hooper. That was a very young Carl Hooper, wasn't it? Mm. Solomon, Garfield Solomon, open the bowling with Charles. Garfield Charles. Yeah. Roger Harper made a hundred in that game against us. Remember um, Carl Hooper and Boss came in from New Zealand, the New Zealand tour, straight to Trinidad. Straight to the fielder, there's a uh, new run. Ah, Dinarine Dial, born on November 19th. That's a interesting birthday you have if you're from Trinidad and Tobago, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sure you're reminded every year. That was the day that of uh, that's well remembered here in Trinidad. That's the day Trinidad and Tobago lost to the USA 1-0. The USA went to the 1990 World Cup in, it in Italy. TNT uh, did not qualify, needing only a draw to get through to the World Cup. It flicks off the pad and runs away for four. Just a touch off the right pad of Tejarine Chanderpaul and flies away where Mahabir Singh is the one to pick it up. Total goes to 11 without loss and we're in the fourth over. Chanderpaul one from 15. Perez four from eight. See already Chanderpaul 15 deliveries for one. Chanderpaul, just a single that he got in the last over, still trying to play himself in. And remember, this is a gentleman who has a test double hundred uh, to his credit already, a double hundred in March 2023 against uh, uh, Zimbabwe. Since then, though, his average has uh, plummeted. He only averages uh, in the teens uh, for the West Indies. That's been the problem for him uh, since then. Well, surprisingly in Australia, they were dis dismissing him the, the, the same way over and over. You know, he, he didn't he didn't change or anything to try to counter attack it. Played into the gap, and he will get a couple of runs here. So three, he will move on to. Well, they might go for the third. They do. That's good running, and uh, they got the third run quite comfortably because the fielder had to chase that all the way. And that, I think, is the longest part of the boundary anywhere in this field. So a good chase to, to save one run for the team. So Chanderpaul up to four now. Perez is four. 14 without loss at the end of the over. 
Oh, yes, it's just one ball. Correction, they are changing over. There's so much activity, it confused everyone. Goodrich done for it in the second over of the day, of the evening. Four slip on a gully. Three, four slip on a gully. Cover point. Fine leg. Mid off. Mid on. That's good there from Goodridge, and that, that ends off the over. So 14 without loss. And those four slip, the fourth slip was brought in. We saw several deliveries, several edges go through uh, the, the, that gap between slip and gully earlier today for Guyana. So the CCC aren't, uh, they're, they're, gonna, they're not taking any chances. They're going to put those four slips in. Please pick it up from the northern end. So, so far, so good for, for Guyana on the opening day of this round seven match here in the West Indies Championship. This is the round that's going to decide which team is going to go on to win this one. Winwood Islands uh, would be the team that many would feel would go on to win it, but they're facing a real battle against the Leeward Islands at the moment. Barbados, their challenge is faltering a little bit. And here we have Guyana. Uh, they could have been in a better position, you would say that. And uh, here they are. They're still battling for the title. So... Nothing has been decided yet. Three days after this one. It's going to be a very interesting next three days, David Ryan. Yes, we're Windward Island and Leeward Island, the top two teams, first and third, sorry, battling at the Queen's Park Oval. Leeward Island making a good comeback. And, um, this, that, will, that game will hang in the balance how, if, how, Guyana, how well Guyana does here. Shandapal gets another single down to fine leg. And... So that uh, the left-hander coming across him every now and again, he might just push one down the leg side, allow Chanderpaul uh, the luxury of flicking it away. If we know the Islands went all right, yeah, I think that's that spells the all right for we know the Islands. Yeah, they would take the title yes. there. They would take the title, but it's uh, still going to be a very interesting last round here. And the Windward Islands have never won. Uh, the title before, the four, first class title, that is. It will be a huge moment, a huge fillip for Windward Islands cricket. That's a good bouncer. That was an effort delivery. A huge grunt uh, from the bowler there, Blades. Uh, that one flew past the head of the batsman. I must say, you know, over the, the, the last couple of seasons, Leeward Island and Windward Island cricket have elevated, and they are always right up in the four-day games and the 50 over tournament. Leeward Island played the final last year in the 50 over at Brian Lara. Which is very great to see because it, it for the if you take the overall picture of, of the for the good of West Indies cricket, you want to see six competitive, at least six competitive teams. Uh, the island franchises do well. Driven nicely. That's beaten the fielder and that is going to run away for four. Mahabir Singh is just chasing to collect it now. That is beautifully struck there by Perez. And the former Guyana junior cyclist has hit a wonderful shot there for four. Well timed. Just coming on the front foot and pushing it all the time in the world. Midoff had no chance. Mahabir Singh, Avinash, and it, all he did, he just escorted to the boundary. That was nicely struck there. And uh, Perez, who I'm um, told by Sean. Sean has seen him a lot. He says he plays a few shots. Well, he certainly played that one well. It wasn't a full delivery by any means. Hit that on the up and hit it very well. Nice you know, the Islands had Jeremy Susano in their lineup for this season. Another good bouncer there. Had him ducking underneath that one. And uh, certainly the Windward Islands have done very well. Uh, the Leeward Islands have improved significantly. I believe the last time the Windward Islands were in a position to win uh, the title... Uh, it was at the Queen's Park Oval, actually, and they were closing in on victory against Trinidad and Tobago. Now, the TNT team stalled significantly. I'm sure you would have remembered that game. They stalled, and the game ended in a draw. Now, it's, it's a quite a famous hit game here in Trinidad and Tobago. If you know of the oral storyteller, Paul Keynes Douglas, he was inspired by that game. Oh, that's another peach of a delivery here by Goodridge. Perez was left wondering if he should duck or get out of the way. That one flashed past, past the outside of the bat. Good ball indeed. Good ball by Blaze here. A little a bit of movement leaving him. And Blaze is working up some pace here. The, the previous ball was a good short ball. 
And just to go back to that story, that game, uh, Paul Keynes Douglas, I believe, was at that uh, particular game, and he wrote a skit about a character called Tanty Merle, and that became very popular here in Trinidad. It was inspired by that game uh, at the Queen's Park Oval, where the Winwoods just missed out on the title. But I, th I think at that time there was Combined Islands. Combined Islands, that is. Yeah. And that would have been a huge, huge thing for their, their cricket at the time. At the end of the over, five overs gone. Ghana Hop Eagles are 19 without loss. It just shows how much cricket has affected the, 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 the impact it has on the wider society. And even this modern days here, the, the, the game have been, has become so scientific. You know, it is, you have to, you have, to have knowledge of the game now to play it. We need to be a leader of a team. I remember in 1990. 1991, Trinidad was playing Warwickshire at Gilbert Park. Bob Woolman was the coach of Warwickshire. Right. And he was mentioning to me that cricket in, in, the, in the years to come will be scientific. You will know where to bowl a man and out him. And he said to me, when West Indies tour South Africa, they used that technique to out Brian Lara at backward point and at point. With John G. Rose taking seven catches in that po to out him. Yeah, he certainly was a very innovative coach, Bob Wilmer. He was well ahead of his time. And certainly some of the innovations that you would have seen from him are now uh, widely used in cricket these days. Of course. You know, so because it, it, we have the technology. You have coaches, assistant coaches around, so they can tell you, you know, look at it, replay to you, and in the evening they could analyze it and let you know what you did wrong. And it, it, it will only improve the game of cricket. Yeah, it certainly will. Nicely played here by Chandapol again. With CCC and the emerging West Indies players, you know, the, the West Indies is using them as to mold them into test players or, or to, to be the benefit of West Indies cricket. And this augurs well for these young fellas on them. Yeah, they're getting a huge chance here, a great opportunity to play. And uh, that's, that's what it has done with uh, the reintroduction of the CCC and the introduction of the West Indies Academy team into the competition. It was done last year in a limited way, uh, but uh, they, here they are in full glory. Well, that's a good bouncer indeed. Chandapol, his initial movement is always towards the off stump, so he just kept moving, yes. and he got out of the way of that one. That was a snorter there from uh, Goodridge. Played very easy. And, and the thing about it, uh, just the way Chandapol played it, his eyes firmly on the ball. Now, the ball may have passed a couple of inches away from his head, but he looked at it all the way through, and that's the way you play a short delivery. Of course. We have Mahabri Singh on the fine leg boundary here, young man from South Trinidad. That one flicks off the pad and is uh, taken well by the keeper, but I think everyone knew that that was not the sound of that onto ball. That one clearly clipping the pad, but well taken by the keeper, uh, Richards. Score remain on 19 for none. We're in the sixth over. Chandapal 5 on 22. Perez 8 from 14. Good region is third over, none for 8. Two slipper gully, cover point, mid off, mid on, backward square, mid wicket and a fine leg. No, no one in the covers. Another one that flicks something on its way through to Richards. And uh, the CCC thinking that they're in with a half a chance of getting rid of Tejarine Chandapal here. I think CCC um, needs to pick a wicket if they need to put Guyan on the back foot on this 200 runs. On this docile batting track here, is, it will be difficult to hold Guyana for under 200 runs here. So they will, they will be looking forward to that. There's some more cricket news coming here. I'll get share with that with you about the women's CPL shortly. Driven straight to the field and no run. Well, the dates have been announced for the women's CPL. It's the 21st to the 29th of August. And the tournament, the tournament will be played here in Trinidad and Tobago. That's the news coming out of the CPL at the moment. So women's CPL in Trinidad 
and it's going to be running from the 21st to the 29th of August. That's the news coming out. Yes. The men's CPL will run, I think, from August to October. It's yeah. a, very, a very long one this year. It's a bit longer, and uh, also a, bit, a few more spaces in between the, the legs. It's really divided into six, five or six different legs yeah. of play. I was watching, I think in some countries, I just have some, play, some team I just have one game. Yeah, so it's returning to a couple of countries. I think uh, Barbados. Five regions this year they're using. Five regions, yeah, five uh, countries in TNT. Oh, that struck him on the pad there. It's a no, no ball. ball. Now, was that going to hit the stumps? It, it's not going to matter anyway. But uh, the bowler would be interested to know if that would have hit the stumps and would he have been out. I think that looked low enough to have hit the stumps. But would that have gone on to be a possible LBW decision had it not been a no ball? Score remains on 20 for none. We end the seventh over. Blades in his fourth, done for eight. Nine and a half Eagles trailed by 180 runs. Neither of these batters have had any very difficult moments so far. But that was the most difficult one. And yes. again, now he's, he's getting a better line in here to the right-handed blades. Uh, that uh, just the way he's approaching those deliveries homing in on that off stump. He doesn't look altogether comfortable with those. I think Blades just on around that off stump and with some movement. Perez not coming on his front foot, just... Remaining there and playing it. Yeah, he's just hanging back on the crease almost there. So not getting forward to meet the line of the delivery. But so that's where they're going to you're gonna see a few more here from Blades. Hoping to get a catch to one of those slippers behind them. Two slipper gully, a leg gully, a forward short leg, a fine leg. Cover and a mid off and a mid on. That's the kind of delivery. But uh, this time... No, showing that he knew exactly where his off stump was, Perez. And, uh, you know, we talk about it with opening batsmen, about knowing where your off stump is. There have been so many bits of advice. I'm sure you've opened the batting, I'm sure, at some point. What's the best advice you ever got as an opening batsman? <laughs> play, play the least amount of balls in the first, first half an hour. Yeah, good advice. <laughs> play as least as you can. Yeah. And... Uh, some of the more successful openers in world cricket have talked about their different techniques. That's going to be turned away. Not going to get a run, though. Yeah, it's good advice. Uh, play, get, just get your eyes accustomed to the pace of the ball and how the ball's coming uh, off the wicket. That's good advice. Well, Jeff Boycott said it rightly. You know, when you're the opening batsman, the ball is the newest, it's the hardest, it has the most shine, it will do the most. So the less you play, it's better for you. Each ball that's bowled, it gets better and better. But you have to stay out there to take advantage of it, though. Because the great uh, Sunil Gavaska talked about uh, shadow batting with his head against a wall. So he knew that his head would never move outside of there, to, to, uh, outside of the off stump. That's a tip that he passed on to the New Zealand great uh, Martin Crow, uh, who is sadly no longer with us. Uh, passed away as a result of cancer, cancer. some years ago. I think Martin Crow had double century against West Indies in New Zealand. Uh, yeah, he's, he was a superb player. Uh, the 1992 World Cup, the only thing New Zealand didn't do was win that World Cup. Martin Crow was the best player in that World Cup. He was superb. But however, it was Imran Khan's Pakistan that went on to win that one. They played England in that final. That's right. In the finals and uh, beating them comprehensively. Nicely played. And, uh, of course, uh, the moment that stands out in that World Cup final, of course, would be those two deliveries by Wazim Akram that just flew and defied. It seemed to defy the laws of physics, the way they fizzed in and bowled. Uh, was it Alan Lamb and uh, Chris, Lewis. Uh, Chris Lewis in consecutive deliveries? But then it was Vasily Makram. <laughs> he could have. He was an absolute wizard with the ball, wasn't he? I remember Chris Lewis st stood at the crease and like he was bamboozled. He didn't know what happened. 
I think that would have bamboozled every anybody out there at the moment. The way Akram was bowling on, in that final, he was pumped up. Pushed away. They will get a couple of runs here. And Perez is back for a second. Uh, that's just going to be two. Of course, uh, just to finish off that story with that uh, Pakistan team, Imran Khan came out and he told his team, "We, I want you to fight like cornered tigers. And that resonated with the Pakistan team. He certainly didn't know his psychology, Imran Khan. David Mianar had a good World Cup in that, uh, that, that, that year. Yeah, so many uh, great players from the past that uh, were involved in that World Cup. That was the first one with colored clothing, if I remember correctly. First time we'd seen the colored clothing. And uh, there's a picture of all the captains that uh, I've seen many times. And they all look very relaxed, like, oh, what are these? I can't remember the guy, but the guy who opened for New Zealand that World Cup, he was the man who transformed one day cricket. He started to hit his ball all over the place. Mark Greatbatch. Mark Greatbatch. That's the man. Outstanding left-hander. Ah, yeah. oh, right-hander. I remember he hit a... He hit a six off Malcolm Marshall that went over extra cover, and most people were bemused by that. They didn't know you could hit a six over extra cover. He did it. Even Marshall looked a bit surprised. Well, no hits over extra cover here today, uh, at least not right now. Chanderpaul getting in behind uh, these deliveries quite well. He's ultra-conservative in the way he approaches his batting, Chander Paul. It's only if it's a wretched delivery he's going to go after it and put it away. It's 5 on 24. As Sean was mentioning earlier, you know, the, the latter half of Guyana Bassman scores, a scores very quickly. Yeah, of the uh, most successful batters for the Guyana team, Sinclair, who all you were talking about earlier, he's the most successful at 471 runs. Imlak has 380. Pomal actually has the fourth, uh, make that the fifth amount uh, most runs. So that really does point to exactly what you're saying, with the batsman coming later in the inning, scoring the runs. And Savory also has 284, averaging just over 40 and a half runs per innings. That takes the edge and goes past second slip. And that'll go away for four runs. Reaching for that one, Tajan Ryan Chanderpaul. And picks up a boundary. Streaky boundary, but he'll take it all the same. Yes, going all along the ground, though. Yannick Otley couldn't stop it. And they race into the third man boundary for four. So who will get these runs for Guyana? Sinclair, the top scorer. Imlac, the second top scorer. Uh, we also have uh, Anderson has had 297. Not a bad return for Anderson, but uh, batsman of his quality, many would have expected a bit more from him for the season. He's batted 10 times. He and Chanderpaul are the only ones to have batted 10 times in their innings for Guyana in the season. Goes for the pull shot. Oh, he saw the short ball, and uh, that one thudded into something off the body there. But uh, like all good sportsmen, you never let the see the opposition see you bleed. Trying to pull it backward square inside edge onto the body, probably on his inner thigh. Slightly little discomfort, but he's ready for the next delivery. It's going to leave a bruise, I'll tell you. That, uh, even though it came off the edge onto the inner thigh, it's not protected. Uh, that's going to leave a little bit of a mark later on. That's what he wanted to do, but maybe didn't quite get all of that. Enough to get a couple of runs here. They might think about a third run. They are going for the third run, and they'll get it quite comfortably. Good running again uh, between uh, Chanderpaul and Perez, two young fit men out there. And they convert what could have been two runs into three. So we're now just, starting this. Just getting up on it and pulling it for a square. Not timing it really what he wanted, but he's still picking up three runs. Takes it to the 29 for none. We're in the eight over. A strike rate of 3.7. A healthy strike rate so far. 
Perez 10 from 21, Chanderpaul 12 from 29. That's, that was interesting from Chanderpaul. He's uh, been ducking inside the line of a lot of these short deliveries. But in that over, twice deciding he's going to get on with it a little bit, playing some shots. My nice shot again, and uh, we'll pick up a couple more runs. They might go for three this time. In fact, they should go for three runs, and they cross for three. So three... Uh, triple twice in the over, and that brings us to the end of the eighth over. Raymond Perez is uh, still out there with Tejarain Chanderpaul, and they are on Tejarain Chanderpaul on 12, Perez on 13. And uh, the opening partnership so far, 32, and a welcome back to Sean Devers. Uh, Devers, uh, how are you, Sean? I'm good. I see you enjoying your lunch uh, earlier. Yes, I do. you enjoy the hospitality here in Trinidad? Yes, I always do. Trinidadians are very hospitable people. And I've got a lot of good friends here. Uh, we, we always enjoy having you here and uh, with your uh, invaluable experience and knowledge, especially about Guyana cricket here. Well, let's see how Guyana will play for the rest of the day. They, they're showing some signs of positivity with Chandra Paul looking to play a couple of pulls in that over. As an uh, inquiry of uh, how much do you prefer the food in Trinidad to that of Guyana? Well, I always prefer Guyana's food, but I don't really like food. Oh, okay. Yeah, but since I got my um, surgery and I'm using medication, you got to eat. Yeah. Well, I, I realize that the egg ball, which is a popular dish in Guyana, is really catching on here. A lot of the... Guyanese uh, people who have immigrated, who have come to Trinidad, uh, it's selling a lot more. So I think people are getting used to it now, and the I've egg ball. And I've seen a lot of people um, putting up stalls selling doubles in Guyana. That's uh, sharing the culture around. Blades, balls to Perez. Perez as a, said, a former youth cyclist. And also, he played in the West Indies on the 19 team in the 2018 World Cup, but he came back because of his mother's death. Mm. Yeah, he was mentioning earlier that I was asking him about his career. He gave up cycling about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. so he's just focused uh, squarely on cricket now. It's for DCC, the Marar Cricket Club in Not a no ball here. Tongue. Well, it seems to be a bit of an epidemic up on this side, uh, Sean. Yes. Most of the no balls have been bowled from this side. It, it's a more difficult here. Some of the they, students they from UE. You're running up the hill. Uh, some of the students from the University of the West Indies, they've been watching it, coming to the gym, and uh, now they're heading back and uh, taking in a little bit of the cricket while they're here. Yeah. There's a, a gentle incline from the pitch to the boundary. So on this end, you have to run up, it's like running up a hill. Yeah, that's right. That, that's a point I was gonna ask you, but if you, your thoughts on it. No ball again, consecutive oh. no balls. And if that was white ball cricket, that would have been two free hits. Two free hits, yeah. <laughs> that's not the case here. But uh, definitely, I think, I have seen a couple of bowlers really struggle from this end. Uh, because it, it's a lot steeper, the incline that you're running up on this, the northern side where Blades is bowling right now, than the southern side, which tends to be, which is a bit flatter. It's not like the slope at Lords, though, but it's still a bit of a slope. Even the pitch at Lords, if that wasn't Lords, they would have resurfaced that pitch <laughs> ever since. That's the only pitch in the world that's allowed to be slanted. Uh, that's played, uh, that's come off the edge, peels off the edge and flies down to the vacant third man position for another boundary for Perez. And he moves on by four. He's hit a couple of boundaries, a couple of streaky shots. This was another one. And uh, look at that, the bottom hand, I think it, the bottom hand coming off the bat there as he played that shot. You got to bat three. You got to play, enjoy his batting. Just bat positively. 
Don't be reckless, but but positive. Positive don't mean that you're being reckless. Positive is a mindset. You look for singles, you push the ball into gaps, you look to convert one into twos. That's a positive mindset. Got on top of that one. Thought they was going to bounce and jump up at him. It didn't. And, uh, yeah, it's a fine line between positivity and recklessness. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. It's, uh, you have to really know which side of the line you're on. In a game like this where you have to make up your mind in an, in an instant, really, the ball comes to you at a fraction of a second, um, those decisions have to be honed in. You have to know exactly what to do. And that comes from training and uh, training and facing hundreds and thousands of deliveries. Yes, the mental aspect is very, very important in anything you do in life. Because in life, most of your work is done above the, the shoulders. So you've got to think. The mindset is always important. Changing the fields here. Yeah, they've positioned the man at short extra cover catching. And uh, Perez playing that through the vacant uh, offside field, and that might run away for four runs here. That's a beautifully timed shot. Uh, maybe not the best of footwork there, but the bat came through, and uh, it was a beautifully timed. Look at this, and into the gap for four. Yeah, the best shot he's played, though, was that caress, pass, mid-off for four. It's for us, boundary. Yeah, there's... Uh, and the field has been brought in into that short and uh, that catching position on the onside. So. Oh, my dear. Rides that one down Handle towards the gully well. region. That's well played. That's well stopped there. And that's well played, too, because he got up and it bounced. It got big on him and he managed to keep it down. So this is going to be a testing period for the young man. He's just 24. Chandra Paul is 27. Just the other day, Chandra Paul was under 15. Yep. Actually interviewed him when he came here as under 15. Good slow delivery. Hanging the bat out again, and that one goes straight to the fielder. They will get a single, though. And uh, the new man in, Jarian Hoyt, in for his first over. And uh, 10 runs. 11 runs, uh, in fact, coming off that one. A boundary uh, off the bat of Perez, who's hit four boundaries so far. Just one for Chanderpaul. And Perez's strike rate, 73.33. So that, that's a point you were making to us earlier. He likes to play a couple shots. Yes, but he, he needs to free up himself don't put himself under pressure because he's playing at this level you gotta believe that he's back home playing for DCC of course the bowling here would be of a higher standard but the mindset is what is important uh, the poinciana tree being featured here by our producer and uh, that, you sh that tree usually has some wonderful red flowers on it and uh, it uh, certainly is a great addition here. It's, it's, it's often seen on a lot of grounds around the country. I don't know if you have this particular tree in Guyana, Poinciana well, tree? Well, I'm not a tree connoisseur, so <laughs> I, I wouldn't know, but I believe we have those kinds of trees Well, that's in played Guyana. through the gap. There's a fielder out there, and he's only going to get one run. Uh, so... Uh, Goodridge continuing here. He's in his fifth over now. And uh, not bad from him. 19 runs conceded. Uh, the problem has been for the CCC. Not a huge amount of success for their bowlers outside of Motara, as you mentioned. Bowling averages are quite exp uh, ex uh, expensive. I remember the first time Tage and his father played. It might have been in Trinidad. In Trinidad, yes, yeah. at the Oval. Yeah. So they and the first time they made the first time ever a West Indian father son made fifties in the same match was in Jamaica when he made a fifty and his father made a fifty. 
Yeah, that is absolutely a situation you may never see in your life again, a father and son. It just tells you about how the longevity of Chandapal, the, the hard work that he put into his training all the way through his career, uh, certainly did help him uh, at the end of his career. I, I, and, I, and I really feel that he went maybe a, a couple of tours too early. There was another, only two father and son pairs played together in first class cricket in West Indies first class cricket. Who is the other pair? Oh, that's a good question. I'll give you a clue. They came from Trinidad. Playing inside uh, the line of that one. Hmm, that's, that's going to be an interesting one. We'll have to think about that one. Yes, well, that's a question also for those of you watching. You can type in and, and tell me who. And Sean will give you the answer at the end of the over. So you just have Not a few minutes. the end of the over, the end of the next over. The end of the next the over. You'll give them some time. time. Yeah. <laughs> and this happened in 1938. That's another clue. 1938. Ah, I think I know one of them. But I'll let the uh, listeners go with that one. I'll give you my w one guess there. He's taken the edge, has he? There's a big appeal. He's and gone. Chandapal is sent on his way. Chandapal did not look certain. There was definitely a noise, and it was caught by the keeper, Richards, and Chandapal has to go. He's out, caught for 12. And he took 31 balls. Look at this dismissal. The ball left him, caught behind. The same way he was getting consistently dismissed in Australia. He went to Australia for the first tour. He got a 50, batted really well. Then he got his first 100 as a double century. And when he went back to Australia again, he was being dismissed similar fashion all the time. And since then, he's come back. Well, before that, he didn't make any runs in the last year's regional tournament. He failed in Australia. And now he's gone again for a low score. 31 balls he's faced. So he's gone. And it certainly has come in a game that uh, Guyana would have been hoping that he would have gotten some runs here for them. But it hasn't happened for Chanderpaul. So that's a, a technical flaw that I'm sure that they'll be working on uh, to get him to play uh, a little bit better at that. But uh, is it a question of if, is that trigger movement towards the offside contributing to that particular technical flaw? I, I, I think so. I, I, his head leans over. When he goes to wide stance, what it does had the two wide stance, but when the ball was delivered, he was played it in correct technical fashion. So that's the difference. His father adopted the two wide stance because when he stand up normally side on, he was falling over. Mm -hmm. So that is why he started doing the two wide stance. Well, the, the well, the batsman is not out uh, yet. What's going on here? There's a timeout rule also. Yeah, there is a timeout rule, and we haven't seen any of the batters come out here for the Guyana team, so somebody could be in trouble here. Here he is coming on now. Well, let's see. The umpires are looking very closely at he him. He probably was in the washroom. Uh, I think so. Or he, or he knew Chandra Paul would have batted all day. And... Anderson, who hasn't had the best of, and uh, Anderson is the man coming out, and uh, I think somebody just shouted, uh, Home Alone style, Kevin, you got to get out there. Yeah, so let's see what the umpires will say. I think they 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 were uh, they did have a close look at it though. Many of the young players don't understand the laws of cricket, and the the, the coaches also at at, at certain levels. Don't force them to go to umpiring classes. There's umpiring classes in Guyana that's free. They invite all the captains, the players, whoever. It's only if you want to write the exams, then you pay a fee. And they don't go. And then they curse the umpires, behave in a bad way when decisions are made. And the first ball is flicked away. He's going to get a couple of runs here. So in spite of getting a bit uh, to the belatedly to the crease here, uh, Anderson has uh, gotten that out. According to the law, after the fall of a wicket or the retirement of a batter, the incoming batsman must, unless time has been called, be ready to receive the ball 
on for the other batter to be ready to or for the other batter to receive the ball within three minutes of the dismissal or retirement. If this requirement is not met, the incoming batter will be timed out. So I think it was within the three minutes. So he got away there. Maybe a couple more seconds he could have been in trouble. Yeah, he was very, very close to three minutes there, though. I mean, he's a very good batsman. Another batsman from the Rose Hall Youth and Sports Club in Barbies. They've produced um, most of the recent national cricketers. Yeah, Barbies, uh, certainly, when you hear uh, cricket, uh, cricketers coming out of Ghana, uh, you're hearing that uh, that region has uh, been producing so many. Over the years, we were here in Guyana Cricket Club. That would be where most of the cricketers... George Stone Cricket Club. George Crown yeah. Cricket Club, uh, that correction. Yeah. That would be where they would be coming out. But now we're hearing more and more boobies. Now, uh, just uh, in case you're wondering about timed out, I'll give you some ideas about that. Uh, there have been only six men who have been timed out in the history of cricket. Two of them have been West Indians. Isn't that surprising? Who are the two? And uh, Vasper Drakes was given out, <laughs> timed out, back in 2002 when he was playing in South Africa. The other is Ryan Austin, who you were talking about earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan was out during the 2013-2014 season. Now, the last time there was a timed out in cricket was a gentleman called Carl, uh, Charles Kunji. That happened in 2017. So for the last seven years, we haven't had a time, uh, timed out. So they've been fairly good in terms of that. Yeah, that's a, a lovely basketball net, backboard, and that's a dorm. That's uh, one of the that's one of the dorms, yes. And Angelo Matthews, of course, so would be the other one to to add to that. Uh, controversially given out, uh, timed out in the World Cup. And Leon Johnson, on his intercounty debut as a 16-year-old, was out handled the ball. But the laws change now. It's incorporated in obstruction of the field. Yes, so that's there's right. No handle the ball. Shimran Hetmeyer fell afoul of that rule a couple of seasons ago. At uh, last season, in fact, was it uh, two seasons ago at the Queen's Park Oval? He slapped the first ball he faced. He had played it down. It almost was bouncing into his stumps, and he hit it a slap, and he immediately walked off because he knew the decision was coming. Oddly, the left arm spinner. From Trinidad, balls to Perez and Perez drives again. This is going to be at least two. And uh, comes back for the second. So Perez goes now to 25. In the old days, there would be a polite applause for 25, a quarter century, a quarter especially century. in England. And, uh, just to finish off on that story about the timed out, one of the gentlemen, Andrew Jordan, who was timed out in an, in an innings, he was unable to resume his innings overnight because his street was flooded and couldn't get to the ground. <laughs> well, he shouldn't have been timed out. He should have been He was flooded to out, retire. in fact. <laughs> <laughs> Could have called, but wh which year was that? Uh, no year was given, well, but well, that, that, that would happen a, 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 a long way back. Ago, yeah, so a long way back. wouldn't have had a cell phone to call and say my street is flooded. If he had had a cell phone, they might have burned him at the stake for witch, uh, witchcraft. Yeah. <laughs> Good delivery from Otley. Good start from the left arm spinner. Otley, one of the senior players in this CCC side. Bowling to the 24 year old Perez. And Perez is back and punches away. Glorious shot out towards the backward point position and down to the boundary for four. So a lovely shot there, giving himself room. Yeah, that's uh, certainly a great shot, and that's the most, uh, that's the highest score for the season for him. Previously, it was 23, so he's gone on to 29. So he is uh, in uh, unwritten territory for himself here, in, in his uh, first season, I believe. Uh, yes, yeah. first season, made his debut uh, in that ill-fated Trinidad and Tobago game when the rain fell in St. Kitts and washed out the three last days, only one day. And according to the rumor, it rained until the cows came home. Yes, well, the cows literally came home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That was at the Connery ground. So good delivery, quick ball. And uh, Perez is annoyed with himself because he know he misjudged the pace of that ball. Anyway, the over has come to an end. Guyana chasing 200 made by CCC. They're 53 for one. All that uh, talk about uh, cows at the ground, uh, Sean, uh, might have people uh, saying that you're speaking BS, bovine scatology. <laughs> I also remember the Connery Ground also. That's where, when I went to the 2008 on the 19th series, where Stephen Jacobs was leading Guyana, and there was almost... Well, I thought it was a hurricane, but the people there said that's just a, a high, high storm or a storm. But it felt like a hurricane to me. You heard the, the breeze going woo woo. Yeah. And well, I was, I was, I, I was, as I was telling you earlier, I, I have gone through a hurricane, and that sound is not an exaggeration. That is exactly how it sounds. All the bales blew off, the stumps were out of the gong. We had to rush into the dressing room. Yeah, there have been a couple of uh, strange bits of weather at uh, cricket matches. There was that incident uh, that happened in Jamaica yeah, some with years Mervyn ago. Yeah, Dillon, Mervyn when he Dillon, got yeah. shocked with a, um, a lightning. Yeah. <laughs> and they said lightning known strike twice <laughs> in well, the same place. Didn't. <laughs> So now any fielder can go in that same position and they know that they wouldn't get touched with lightning because it wouldn't strike twice. Well, it was actually Mervyn Dillon and Phoenix Thomas, the w former Winwood Islands player. He also got injured and uh, I actually I asked him about it once and he told me that he has a scar on his back wow. from where the lightning. He said what he, he saw basically was something hit the ground and then he saw something coming towards him. Mm -hmm. And when he turned his back... That's where he got uh, the lightning strike on his back. Jaron Hoyt, balls to Anderson. Anderson is forward, plays no shot. Well, I'll tell the the answer now. I'll give the answer. Yes. Y y you I, I think uh, one would have to be the Constantines. Yes. Li li uh, Liberan and uh, the father. And uh, so Larry. Larry. Larry yeah, so Larry played with his father. His father was 48 at that time. Right. So those are the only two batters, the Chandra Pauls and the Constantines, that played together in a first-class match in the West Indies, West Indians. And, ooh, that was close. <laughs> Almost hit the helmet. That would have been five free runs. Yeah, it's, uh, not everything's going the way of Guyana at the moment. Yeah, that wasn't far away from the helmets there. And uh, that's another thing that you don't see a huge... Uh, amount in cricket. Well, one of the helmet heads has moved away. There was a, a time there was, it wasn't, uh, when helmets first came in, it was a bit nebulous in how that rule was treated. Uh, Mike Braley, the former England captain, was known to put the helmets on the outfield to try to tempt batsmen to hit the ball towards the helmet. And then the law came in, well, the, the guidance came in to put the helmets at the back of the stumps. I remember Graham Yallop um, used a motorcycle helmet. He was the first person, I think, that batted with a helmet. It was a motorcycle helmet when he was playing against the West Indies. Yes. That was paced like fire. Yes, that's right. And uh, the problem was with those helmets is that you couldn't hear anything. So when your partner's screaming at you to come through for <laughs> yeah. a run, you had no idea what he was saying. So funny m moments in cricket. Uh, we were, you were talking about the Otley brothers. There's lots of brothers who played for Guyana. The Harpers uh, we would be yeah. one to start with. Yeah, Mark and, and Roger. The Alvin and Derek Ali Charan. That's right. Vishal and Mahindra Nagamutu. Azimul and Zahir Hanif. Tyrone Etwaru, the man that was failing and uh, caused Roy Fredericks to come out of retirement and make a double century. He was, the, as I said, the only sitting parliamentarian, the only minister in the world that made a first class century, double century. They have, they have their, um, Tyrone, Reggie, and Romaine Etwaro, all three played first class cricket. Krishna Arjun and Vishal Arjun, I think 
Krishna Arjun and Vishal played a lot of cricket here yes, in did. Trinidad. Yeah, I know Krishna in particular. And back in the days, the Wrights brothers, of course, uh, wouldn't leave out the Trinidadians. I'm doing comedy in their country, the Stallmeyers. The Stallmeyers, that's right. Yeah. Um, Both of them would have played in that very last test match before the outbreak of the war Yeah. in uh, 1945, uh, was it? 1948, I think. 1946. Yeah. Sometime around that time. Around that time, yeah. And the West Indies team had to escape on ships and they had to get past German U-boats, yeah. uh, the submarines, to get back home safely. That was that was not a very interesting ride. Anyway, then, it's a drinks break here. After the war, then um, Sir George Headley came back. He was older. And then in 1948, he was the first black West Indian captain. People don't remember that. They talk about Frank Warren. But he captained one match against England because the captain was injured or something so he was technically the first black West Indian captain Sir George Headley and it, it was so unfortunate at that time that he had to receive that honor by default of course Sir Frank Worrell would have received that honor he was appointed captain and uh, I guess that's the difference well anyway that's the there's a, the water break is on. We'll resume in a couple minutes here as Guyana, 53 for one uh, after 12 overs. And uh, they are looking at a target of 200 scored by the CCC. Yeah, well, back here at the University of the West Indies campus here, St. Augustine in Trinidad. If you've just joined us, we know the CCC were bowled out for 200. And again, in reply, they've lost the wicket of Chandra Paul for 12. And it's now 53 for 1. So it's Perez facing Otley. And at the non-striker's end, there is Kelvin Anderson. I was talking to Vinod, uh, not Vinod, um, Vidya, about the brothers who played for Guyana. We went through them, and I, I'm, as I'm in Trinidad, I have to talk about the brothers in Trinidad with the Stall Myers playing after the Second World War, or the last match before the Second World War, and then Darren and Sheldon Ganga. Many people don't remember Sheldon Ganga. And uh, Dwayne and Darren Bravo, and Larry and Sheldon Gomes. They would have been some of the brothers that played for Trinidad, first class cricket, anymore, that you can think of? No, well, I know I can't remember anyone right now. I think you're covered here. This is re resuming at after the water break. They are 53 for one. Yannick Otley in the second over. Perez is on 29 from 41 deliveries. And Anderson is on two from nine. 
Yes, they've got to bat as long as possible, build a big partnership and do that quickly. They've got to score quick runs. Yeah, yeah 53 for one and this is the complete, the, this completes the 13 to over of the inning. And with the time, we are think we should just be about half an hour again for the five o'clock. Might be able to might be able to pick up six or seven runs. Oh, over, sorry. So that's sugar cane. So uh, that that's inside the university campus too. Yeah. So that's why the it was initiated as a agricultural campus. They planted that sugar cane since then. So Hoyt starts a new over, and that's a sweet shot, sweet as the sugar cane. And it's down towards the deep mid-wicket position, and that should have been more than the runs there that they run, that they run there. So that, that is a total of 53 for one. I think Guyana needs to press the accelerator a bit. I know it's not close, very close of, cl close of play. They yeah. would have liked to, to be at least almost close to 100 by close of play. That's good intentional running. Nice soft hands, just put it into the gap. And uh, the fielders had to come forward. In the meantime, they hustled through for a single. That's intelligent batting there from Anderson. And he's one of the better batters in the team. Nice stylish batter. Plays in a correct way. They are striking at four over 4.20. If they continue with this at 100 over, they will go over the 400 mark. But they will have to continue with the strike rate uh, over four runs. Well, they, they've got batters now capable of doing that. Chandra Paul took 31 balls for his 12. And he is the only casualty up to now. Perez on 29 from 44 balls. Anderson is just coming. He's on 5 from 11. And the good thing is that the sun is back. So there's no problem or issue with bad light stopping play. Two slips and a gully. Height. That's a nice shot. Down towards the sweeper position. Square the wicket. And Perez gets his 30th run. So this is his highest run in first class cricket at no ball also. So the Ghana score goes up by one. Perez goes up by two. Perez goes up by one. 56 for one. Ghana. Yes, we see Perez looking better and better as the, as the inning goes on. Getting to the pitch of delivery and playing it all um, from the middle of his bat. Good delivery going right past the, the batter and it came off the knee of the keeper and went all the way down towards the backward point position. They ran a bye, but that would have been a hard knock there. That's always been tough for a keeper when it bounced in front of him. Taking it just over the rule of the pads. In the old days, when Rod Marsh and Alan Knott were keeping, they had big pads. Nowadays, the keepers got the fancy pads. Mm. Everything is fancy now, but most things now are not as high quality as before. Even the cars, they just look fancy. But when you get into an accident, they match up. Mm. Fifty-nine for one. We're in the fourteenth over. Perez on Tete from forty-six. Anderson on five from twelve. As the shadows length gets over the ground here. Two slip a gully. 
cover, middle of, widest middle of, a deep cover, middle wicket, and a fine leg. That goes past the outside edge again. Good lateral movement away from the right hander. As P Reds flirts with danger. Luckily for him, no edge funked. And the over is completed. 59 for 114 overs gone. Yannick Otley will pick it up from the northern end. None for six of after two overs. CCC 50. Guyana 59 for one after 14 overs. CCC bowled out for 200 with uh, the wicket keeper Richards, who just experienced a blow just above his knee roll. Where he top scored with 43 before he was leg before to Moti. The next best scorer was Romeo Greaves. And he was bowled by Smith for 36. And then there were a couple of 20s, 23 from Brooks, 23 from Mahabir Singh, 22 from Goodridge, 21 from Hoyt, and uh, I think 20 not out from Blades. So they all got into the 20s, but they couldn't go on, built little partnerships. But that was not enough. Uh, it eventually got them to the 200 mark, which would be something of a psychological impact for the Guyanese batters, knowing that they were expecting the CCC to fall away when they were 9 for 3. That's a short ball from Otley and slapped away by Anderson out towards backward point he gets a single I think what I'm going to see today after every time they, they string a partnership together they lose a wicket and they, when the wicket they lose is, is the guy who, the batsman who was scoring yeah. runs and 200 runs on this wicket for a first inning it is uh, not a good score no not a good score at all but it, it should have been less because of the way Guyana the last wicket partnership put around in 37. Yeah. So it should have been a way less if Gann had kept up the pressure. But that's a good score for in uh, in, in Guyana's favour. Back away and slapped it away towards the man on the cover boundary. As out he just pulled a little too short. Allowing the batter to go back onto the Think back foot. Just pulling down a little too much. Yeah. So his over is completed. They now trail by 139 runs. 61 for 1. Perez on 31. And Anderson on 6. So uh, a lot of aircrafts coming in to the Piarco International Airport coming from all over the place and it's not even carnival <laughs> that's a and then the Piarco International Airport yeah that's a pretty large plane so Hoyt balls and that played into the offside and there's no run Do you ever wonder how a plane can fly? <laughs> could could you could you uh, uh, ask me an easier question, please? <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy in Guyana uh, has a program called "Have You Ever Wondered," and he brings up all sorts of things. That's a, a loose bit of work there from the man at Deep Gully. And a good bit of work from the man coming in from the cover boundary. And the batsman cross for one. Steered away there by Perez, who is looking better and better. This is his highest first class score, of course. I was telling Vidya when he went to the 2018 on the 19th World Cup with the West Indies on the 19th team. He had to come back because his mother had died. 
so he missed most of the matches and by the time he'd come back and his mother got buried the World Cup was over so he missed out on that he's also was also a junior cyclist gave up the sport a couple of years back maybe less than a decade or so to concentrate on cricket his father who was a cyclist also remember him going wrong and wrong the park with his son Perez when he was little now he's 24 and he gets a ball that's uh, looking at Anderson from the non strikers end Anderson plays and misses I think Perez he's just starting to look better and better because I think yeah. in the last 10 runs he's starting to come a little more on his front foot yeah. and stroke the deliveries instead of staying on the crease this is when your your eyes, your eyes, your hand and eye coordination is moving. Your feet is moving. Well, just before the COVID, Anderson had a good season in domestic cricket. He had some runs in the intercounty, and um, he would have made his first class debut. But the season was aborted with a, two runs, I think, left to be played mm. when Barbados was ahead and they were given the title when the COVID in 2020. So that's how Barbados won the 2020 title. See another big jet flying into Piaco International Airport. It's a busy day. I think the Heathrow Airport in England is the busiest airport. When you go there, you see about 12 planes lined up. They said Chicago Airport too. Yeah. Well, I've never been to Chicago Airport. When I go to the States, I go to John F. Kennedy Airport or Miami International Airport. Sixty-four for one. We're in the sixteenth over. No, I I I, I pay commercial flights. Hygiene is fourth over, done for nineteen. I only use chartered flights from. Final to port of Spain and so on. So seriously though, Ghana need a lot of work to do if they're to win this title. And even if they win this match with full points, they've got to hope for the other results to go their way. The over is completed. At the end of it, Ghana chasing 200 all out made by CCC. They're 64 for one. Sean, you know, this, this last rounds, it has ended up in a, it is in a good position. Yeah. No runaway title no. holders. It, it depends on three games. And I think C CWI would have, would have, will be happy how it, it, it ended up with this last rounds. I think CWI would be happy with the entire tournament because the fourth round, to me, was the most competitive. The last round had the most centuries. So it's getting better in terms of competitiveness. Batsmen making big runs. That's a long time we've not seen 300s being scored in a single game with McCaskey, Braffitt, and, and Chase doing it for Barbados. That swept away. I seen with there. one in a double by a, a double century and a single. In yeah. one match here last weekend. Yeah. So that should have been three centuries. So Lowry should have had three more centuries this third to fourth. Mm. How come a, a double century is considered a century? That's unfair. <laughs> then Bra then the, the great Donald Bradman would have been ha have more. Yeah. Twelve double centuries. And I think three triple. Yeah. Kumar Sangakara is in that bracket too. Oh yes, there's the another flight. They're coming in so fast and quick. Lovely shot there from Perez. On the front foot, driving through the offside. And that's four runs off of Otley. Yes, Otley, as soon as Otley give the ball a layer. He's down the track. So and a lovely shot by Perez. Just coming on his yeah. front foot and hitting the pass. Short cover. The mid-off had no chance. 
Otley to bowl to Perez. He's on his way and Perez is forward. And there is no run. 69 for one. We're in the 17th over. A Perez lot. moves on to 36. Lots of traffic coming into the Piarco International Airport from the air. I think they said the last one that we saw going in is Sean one. No, I, I, I don't own planes, only in Trinidad. <laughs> so 200 and one Ghana needs to pass the CCC and they are 69 for one. See the Grogman taking a message on his phone there. <laughs> yeah. The producer said he's now receiving the schedule to move the side screen. Or, or he's hoping that the day is finished quick. <laughs> Anderson's on eight already from, t from 21 deliveries. Yannick Otley, none for 13 from four overs. So, Hoyt to continue in a long spell and he's getting good lateral movement. He's bowled reasonably well for the CCC. Some has some height, he's uh, coming from a high action. This wicket has been flattened out and it's uh, playing and easier uh, and easier. And looking at where they are now, with this team, it doesn't suggest that they should have been last without a win. They, they're be a better team than, than what they, they start showing. Well, Good delivery again. That kept low. All also. the points they have accumulated is, is bonus points, so that means they, ha they have d done well with bonus. I, I, if my memory serves me right, the last four innings, four innings, CC has gone over 300 runs. Inside the 110 overs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. And that's the problem with Guyana. Even though Guyana had big scores, most of the batters were like Sinclair. Well, he is the top batter for Guyana in terms of runs. He's the third in the aggregate and the third in the highest score. The the t the, the score three and against um, TNT Red Force here last last game. But only one person got to Jonathan Carter. He's the only one that got a hundred. That is why they're they're in this position because they've not converted into hundreds. The fifties and the eighties and the sixty twos they made. Yes. And in this game, they've not even converted into 50s. Yeah. Anderson is forward again. But as we said, the CCC and the West Indies Academy is really for the mooling and grooming yeah. for West Indies cricket to give them the, in, the, the inside of how first class cricket is, being play, is played. Yes, and, and I believe, I don't know, but I believe that this match, seeing that CCC can no longer win the tournament. They're rotating some of the players. They're giving players a chance to play. And that is why the guy Mortaza, the guy who got the seven wickets against Jamaica, I think. Motara. Motara, who got the seven wickets against Jamaica. Is he, has not he has a five wicket hole too. Yeah. Did um do you know if Mikel Mikel Louis got a hundred in this game? I, I think he had eight to five. He um in Lewards? Yeah. He was ninety six the last time I saw. So ninety six. Mm -hmm. All right, the overs been completed. Eighteen overs gone, sixty nine for one. Lovely places there. 
video would have known all these places where they are and what they do. There were some girls inside the, the auditorium doing um, calisthenics. When I went in the last time, 69 for one, Guyana. And looking for two. What will abort the ID? This must be a busy time of the day with fights coming into Piarco because I've seen about four come in in the last five minutes. Forward comes. Anderson Yannick Otley left arm spinner hails from the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago and Mikel Louis wow got another hundred he got two yeah today and he got he one of the eleventh eleven batters to get hundreds in both innings in regional first class cricket. It's a lovely shot there from the bat of Jeremiah um and Kelvin Anderson. Lovely shot. When that's a excellent sub slog sweep. Reminded me of um Courtney Brown. He loved to play he was the first batsman I ever saw playing slug sweeps. So he's gone now to eight with that shot. Anderson with him is Pires well set on 37. Mikel Louis having a tremendous season, caught and a miss, goes past the outside edge, he overcomes the end. 76 for one after 19 overs, Diana 76 for one. Yeah, Mikel Louis having a tremendous season, remains at the top of the list, well, well going out close to 600 runs, I think he's going to pass 600 runs, because he started with 540 something. Seeing all the tr love, the green trees in the background, and all the fancy equipment that, yeah, and the mower, the roller, and there's a, even a dustbin, <laughs> and there's a small roller there. So all the equipment at the UE campus. Hoy picking up from the southern end. And that's nicely played, but straight to mid off by Pires. From the Sports and Physical Education Center in. He's in his sixth over. He's 76 for one, and we're in the 20th over. And there are still two fans in the stands there with the Ghana flag. If these games would have started maybe Thursday and gone to Sunday you would have probably seen more people but I understand the CWI had to do this schedule because of the flights and the, the cost of flights so right. everything is cost now um, funding which has become so important you've got to get money to do anything Yes, from <laughs> Port of Spain to Sando. <laughs> <laughs> no, no charter from one country to another. <laughs> See, got guy now, run just dropping under four now. 76 for one. Seal trail by 124 runs. 
looking to play across the ball hit the pad and no ball again so a lot of no balls so Smith bowler a lot from this northern end Jeremy, um, Blaze bowler as a few from this northern end too now we are seeing Hoyt from the southern end Hoyt holds the Pires, Pires covers up, plays it out towards short extra cover, and there is no run. A while ago, the umpires could have collected everything, now they don't keep anything. If you got your helmet, you put it at the back of the keeper. Good. If you're a fielder, do. And if you've got your helmet as a, that's a lovely that, shot. Yeah, that's a glorious shot again. So Perez goes into the forties. He's four to one, and this is the Perez that I have seen batting in Guyana. You know these umpires carry a lot of things now. Walkie talkie. A, a, a scissors, scissors a, 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 a ball measure up, yeah, so a ball a, a, a over counter <laughs> bales well, that was a lovely shot by Perez he just came on the front foot and hit it through extra cover all along the ground for four yeah that's the Perez I know and that's the Perez I love to see if Guyana could close to 100 for one 105 for one it will they'll be in a very very strong position there's only 19.4 of us going and Pires drives again four more down to the boundary for four the fielder can chase for all his work but he just do that to retrieve the ball from the boundary consecutive boundaries for Pires wonderful shot he's gone out to four to five good shot just coming on the front run and lifting it over mid off. One, two bunks into the fence. Perez looking better and better. He's coming, he's coming on his front foot now. And this tells you when a batsman has is set and is comfortable. Back to back boundaries from the DCC player. Talking about DCC, there's a youngster in Guyana made four hundred runs. I saw it. In a second division game. And they, there was uh, hundreds also from Two other batters in that same match, Brandon Jaikaran made a two, 400 not out, and uh, Indajit Nanan had a 100, and a 12-year-old, Lumar Sicharan, also scored a 100. DCC scoring um, 666. That's the club that Perez plays for, but he plays in the fourth division team. That's a second division game? Yeah. All right. 400 is a lot of runs and that's very good for a young batsman coming up. Yeah. Yannick Otley from the northern end. Is that a bushfire or just somebody burning rubbish? Yeah. Yeah.
I've gotten a 50 though, 7 short and uh, doing a good job behind the stumps Richards Ninety three for one, we're in the twenty second over. Plays none for ten in his fifth over down the leg side again. Bad delivery, wayward ball. Good take again to his left by Blaze down the leg side. There's a man at the forward square leg. Maybe he's in a catching position. Deep forward square leg? Yeah. No short forward square leg. And then there's a mid on, and there's the long leg. The three men on the on side. On the off side, there's two slips, a gully, sweeper, cover, a mid off. Ball jumping a little bit on Perez. He handled it well, though, showing good technique. Played it with nice soft hands, made the adjustment at the last minute, and got a single. Goes closer and closer to his maiden first class 50. 21 is Anderson. 47 is Perez. Ghana going closer and closer to their 100 mark. 94 for 1. 106 required to level with the CCC total. But they'll want to score a lot more than that. And bowl out the... CCC maybe on Friday good short lifting delivery but Anderson equal to the task going under it easily kept his eye on the ball that's the important thing quick short one from Blaze here going Anderson just ducking and letting it go total remain on 94 for one So I think CCC by it being 200 runs on this track is pretty poor. Still the strong breeze continues to prevail. Windy conditions here at in Augustine, St. Augustine. Nice pack over length delivery. Anderson was one of the batters to have scored a hundred. Imlak has scored two. Chandra Paul has scored one. Savory has scored a hundred. Sinclair has scored a hundred. But the standout will be Mikel Louis, who has scored his third hundred in two matches. Scored hundreds in both innings against Guyana when they lost their only match. Uh, and that's the Guyana dressing room looking quite relaxed him like the captain with his pads on he might show soon take off his pads and let the night watchman comes in come in I remember Garfield Charles at Garakar Park was a, a night watchman and he scored a hundred as Romario Greaves comes into the attack Good afternoon to you in New Zealand, Garfield Charles, if you're looking at the feed. Yes, I said that already. Romario Greaves. Bowling off spin. A lot of chatter among the fielders, especially the ones under the bat. 
There's a short mid on. Catching. Not exactly a silly mid on. That's turned away nicely into the onside. They'll get one, they'll get two. And they could even come for three. Yes, good running. Excellent running by the guy in his pair. They come back for three. And that's the 50 for P Res. It's first 50 in first class cricket. So Perez gets a round of applause from the Ghana team and the two Guyanese spectators in the stand. So his 50 coming up of 72 balls. So Greaves bowling gentle off spin. Bowling now to Anderson. Anderson is playing it into the offside. Goes back. And Anderson has this way. Goes back and plays with an element of danger. But in the end, he hits it off the middle of the bat. Almost cutting the ball off of his stumps. And that's dangerous to do. Especially against the off spinner. Trinidad 2 and run 10 for 5 against Jamaica in Jamaica. The partnership here, 54 now from 81 balls, so good fifth partnership between these two. Good, it's good partnership, good batting by the both of them. Greece had a long spell against Trinidad and booting in. Ninety-nine for one. This is Guyana. They win the twenty-third over. Big scores in this round. In 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 this tournament, in fact, lots of big scores as this over comes to an end. Can Guyana go on to a big score here? Ninety-nine for one, Guyana. Yeah, strike rate at four point three four. Healthy strike rate. Yeah. See some basketball has been playing in the compound of the University of the West Indies. The students playing some basketball. Yeah, that's the dorm I was told. That's one of the dorms. Smith 3 wicket for 45, Pomal 3 for 51. So those are the students that live there. Ninety-nine for one after twenty-three overs. Good afternoon to my good friend Visham, one of the many Vishams. Visham, he's working at the Ministry of Education here in Port Spain. The blaze continuing from the southern end. The sports and physical education center in. He's in his sixth over for the uh, in this inning. Good delivery again. Testing the batter. And there are two young ladies looking as fit as ever. Four. Four of them. The ca if you look at the camera, you just see two, but there are two more at the back. <laughs> yes, that's the, the two at the back and, off me, off me. and the two at the front. So they're coming for their afternoon stroll or exercise. So the activity here in the campus area picks up. After classes, not a short lifting delivery. And uh, Perez goes under it, would be relieved getting his first half century. This is his fifth first class match. Made his debut against Trinidad and Tobago. Didn't get the chance to bat.
think we may get in about 25 overs, if 26 for this this evening. And Gan would want to reduce that target to double figures. It's now 101 required. Not to win, but to get runs for the CCC to bat in their second innings. That's that short lifting delivery. Again, testing the batsman umpire. Tucket, Tucket says that's one for the over. Score remain on 99 for one. We need 24 to over. As the shadows started lengthening over the wicket, the, 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 the ground. Turned off the hip, down towards the backward square position. So it's getting easier and easier for Ramon Pirates. It's first, first class season, the 24 year old. That brings up the guy in 100. 100 for one in the 24 to over. So exactly a hundred more required to pass the 200 made by CCC. Good performance from the opening fast bowlers. Turn picked up one wicket but bowled with real pace. Smith had three. From all continued from where he left off in Jamaica. Picking up three more wickets. Taking his tally now to 17 in the tournament. And Moti picking up one. So a good performance overall from the Guyanese bowlers. Even though they would like to dismiss the CCC team a bit earlier and for less runs. So the seven run last week in partnership, denying them that. Ms. Anderson just coming on his front foot, very comfortable and playing it down to mid off, mid on, no run. Total remaining 100 for one at the end of the 24th over. Amari Goodrich, the wicket taker, dismissing Chandra Paul. Rees picking it up from the northern end. He has already bowled one over for five runs. No wicket. Guy not trailed by exactly 100 runs. I think the coaching staff of CCC will very, be very disappointed in this total 200 alone on a very docile batting track. And Ghana's almost cut it in half well cut it in half exactly that's a good shot there from Perez off the back foot two extra cover for four so the boundary is beginning to flow now in the dying stages of day one of this final rung West Indies Championships four day first class cricket encounter this match here at the UWI Sint Augustian facility in Trinidad. There are other games being played around the region. Trinidad playing Jamaica in Jamaica. That's an hour behind the, the, the rest of the Eastern Caribbean and, and in Guyana in South America. Guyana has the unique distinction of being part of the English speaking Caribbean. Also, there South American country bordered by Suriname, Brazil and uh, of course Venezuela and if you go on Mount Roraima that's the highest mountain in Guyana on the Pacaraima mountain range you could see Venezuela you could see Brazil and you could see Guyana alright 
and Suriname is on the the eastern border if you go on the sea walls in Skeldon you could see Naikeri that's one of the tongues in Suriname it's a maritime border good shot good piece of field in there too yeah good effort 106 for one 57 to Pires, 23 to Anderson. Good partnership. Yeah. Yes, the video was just telling me or reminding me that Guyana plays football in CONCACAF and not in the South American leagues. <laughs> but CONCACAF includes Mexico and the US. So two strong teams. Only two English speaking Caribbean countries have qualified for the World Cup football. Jamaica and then Trinidad a little later on. That completes it number 25. 25 overs, 107 for one. Perez on 58 from 81, and Anderson on 23 from 45. This has been a wonderful partnership. As we look out, we see another tree. So that's a mango tree? No, that's not. That's not a mango tree. seeing a West Indies emblem at the top of the stand there, somebody who supports West Indies cricket, must be a student there, or a, West, a cricket fan. Please to pick it up from the southern end, the sports and physical education center end. Both physios have been made to work hard today. Miss Holder, the Ghana physio, and Miss Kelly Kunja the physio for the CCC. Well, it's just playing outside the also my Milstein. Takes a walk to compose himself. a huge building outside of the ground to the south of the ground might be a hotel so blades continues to work 107 for one we need 20 second over 26 over sorry that's Makati there That's the street outside the ground. Minibuses, well, they call them maxis in Trinidad. In Ghana, they call them minibuses. All right. And in Barbados, they call them ZRs. Same thing, but different names in different parts of the Caribbean. We're so diverse, but we're so similar. ZRs. Yeah. <laughs> Seen two slipper gully at deep cover point, short extra cover. Midweek four short leg, mid on. But I just turning it to midweek and picking up an easy single. Backward square and a fine leg. Of course, the World Cup T20 comes to the Caribbean and of course America. I see the 
putting the finishing touches in the stadium at Long Island. That's in New York. I believe that stadium can hold 38,000 people. And Trinidad will have a semi-final. Mm -hmm. Guyana will have a semi-final. And, and the final will be in Barbados. At the Brian Lara Stadium. Two slips. Gully. And that's outside the line of the leg stump. Trinidad, um, West Indies leave for Nepal for a 5-20 game. Yeah. Team should be announced anytime today or tomorrow. Yeah, we're waiting on that. Official release from the CWI. The office is in Antigua. Right at the Coolidge ground. That used to be the old Stanford ground. Where Narsing Dino Ryan hit Samuel Badri that for six with one ball to spare in the final. Ghana versus Trinidad to win million dollars. That brings to the end of the over. 26 overs gone, 108 for one. Guyana Eagles trailed by 92 runs. The Harpy Eagles. Harpy Eagles. <laughs> Anderson 23 from 47. Perez, 59 from 85. And we are seeing the birthday boy, um, a Debu boy, Avinash Mahabir Singh, picking up from the northern end. This is going to be interesting, having a bowl just before the close. Maybe because he batted for us, the nerves would not be as much as if he bowled for us. So... Mahabir Singh is 23 years old today. Right arm off spinner. And he'll be bowling to Therese. Replacing Greece from the northern end. One off spinner replacing another off spinner. Avinash Mahabir Singh plays for Victoria Sports Club. Champ they campaign in the National One Division in Trinidad and Tobago. How many divisions play in Trinidad? The two divisions? They have the National One. First delivery in first class cricket. Brings yes. They have the, North, the zone, uh, North Zone and South Zone. Well, actually, it's like a Division Two. Mm -hmm. But the North Zone and South Zone. And then we have the Zonal Cricket in Trinidad. North, East, South, Central, South East, South West. A lot of Guyanese uh, campaign here, ply their trade in Trinidad. I think the, fir the, the, the first team in Trinidad started to bring down Guyanese was Clark Road. Uh, Rabindranath Siram was the first man came down here. And that's the club that Mukesh Prasad yeah. played for, way down in Pinal. Then Paul Prasad, Andrew Gonzalez played for them. Damuda Dasrat. Former Guyana captain, that's right, mm -hmm. made his inter-county debut when I played my last match at the senior inter-county level. Narsing Dinarain also played in the one day, made his one day debut when I played my last one day match in senior inter-county. Narsing Dinarain also his trade here. Paul Passard, Fazal Satar played for Clark Road. I think Pas um, Satar was, was passed on. Yeah, sadly, died of, got a stroke. In fact, he got two strokes mm -hmm. and he recovered from the first stroke. I saw him came back from the States. He was at Albion and looked quite well. And then when he went back, I heard he got another stroke and that was fatal. So another group of Walkers coming by. The two fans still in the stand. So good force of uh, Avinash Mahabir Singh, one run. Good force of a young man making his debut for CCC. I 
I'm sure you will get the opportunity if Ghana makes a big score to bowl a lot more tomorrow. Talented young man played for Trinidad on 19, played for the West Indies on the 19. Then he came back and played for Clark Road. He presently is at Victoria Sports Club. Did got a got a lot of wickets for them this year. Sun back with us as the shadows of the light poles begin to lengthen across the ground, and back goes. Pires forces into the offside, sprints off the boundary. There is Makarski. And uh, there's the fans again. Well, this time it's one female and two males. This could be the last over. Might be. Again, 110 for one. Good position for them to be in. They would have liked to score a little bit more and bowled out the CCC for a little bit less. But they'll take this. They'll be the happier of the two teams as this one is crashed away out towards extra cover for four. So another boundary there, this time from Anderson as he goes now to 27 and the total going up to 114 for one. As you said, if Ghana gets up to 120 at the end of the day, they'd be very happy and they're in, on course to do that. Six more runs needed. That's 120 will be a good day's work for them. Yeah, especially since they dismiss CCC for 200. Striking at 4.17, a healthy strike rate. Oh, a lovely shot again, but this time straight to the fielder. So his left or his right? That would have Three been another four. boundary. He's striking the ball purposely now. Final over of the day. Still good conditions in terms of the sunlight. Forecast for rain over the weekend. Forward he comes again. Nice shot. Good drive, but straight to the field again, and there's no run. So Anderson is on 27 from 54 balls. Perez is on 61 from 89 balls. Chandrapal, the only batter dismissed. He went off the bowling of Goodrich for 12 from 31 balls. deliberately plays inside the line as Chandra Paul would often do and the ball goes harmlessly by to the keeper this could well be the last delivery for the day's play with 114 for one umpire Carl Tuckett at point and umpire Reefer at the bowler's end So umpire Carl Tucker deciding to go at point because if he goes at square leg the sun will be setting in his eyes. So the over is completed and that stumps. That stumps on day one of this four day cricket encounter at the University of the West Indies ground here in St. Augustus, Trinidad. And at the end of the day, Guyana replying to the two by the CCC, who opted to bat after winning the toss. They are 114 for one, needing 86 more runs to go past the, the score made by CCC with at the crease, Perez on 61, Anderson on 27. Until we come back tomorrow for what should be more exciting action. I'm Sean Devers on behalf of Viv Vidya and uh, Darrell.
and the crew. Um, we should.